What is up, you guys and ladies? This is Rebel of the New, Mr. Logic, the Fofo Kage, the Carnosaur of Logic, Barbara Lynx, uh, the oh, I said the Fofo Kage. Okay, I'm about to fuck up. Hot as fuck right now, but I at least remember my name, Lance. The humidity is really what it is. It's not dry heat at all. No idea why I'm doing this, to be completely honest. I sound like a liar because I said that I was done talking about this game, Tales of Berseria. But here I am again, about to talk about Tales of Berseria. Though it's not all too bad because the guy I'm talking with actually said some shit that had substance. I don't know how much sense it makes because I haven't looked at it, but it had substance. It wasn't, I don't want to look at your post. You know I'm not going to look at your post. No one wants to look at your post. You know no one's going to watch your video. He actually typed some shit out. And because of the state of my hands, I wasn't able to address it physically. And plus, I just hate typing on Reddit. So I said, let's go ahead and do a Discord if you're all right doing it with that. He said, sure. So now we're on a live call. You want to introduce yourself, man? Yeah, I am uh, going to be referred to as Darkness in this one. My uh, Discord username. And yeah, I'll see how this goes. goes. All right, Darkness. Well, I am in the passenger seat. Not literally. I had to get here somehow. But figuratively speaking, I, I'm in the passenger seat. And your complaints... Oh, it's fucking Phobos and Deimos. Shut the fuck up. Gosh, man. If I roll this window up, I'm going to roast. Not you, but it, like I'm going to be burning up. What was I saying? I didn't see your stuff. And I don't mean any offense by that. I normally come into these debates clean. Hopefully it's not even a debate. Well, I did see one thing and it was something I could contend. But hopefully we, we come to a quick and clean conclusion. And so I can, I got my power source here, but I don't want the laptop to overheat and for me to overheat and have to pee and shit like that. So let's see if we can get through this clean. You got your stuff up, I assume. I got your stuff up. And whatever you want to go ahead and take me through, take me on the trip down memory lane. Do, 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 do. Coming out of Queensbridge. What you got for me? I couldn't quite hear what you said at the end. <laughs> it's, a, it's a fucking, uh, unless you mean what you got for me, it's a Nas reference, a rapper, Illmatic. But, but let me tell you something first, right before I start. First, I want to tell you, and you probably already figured this out by now because you got a brain like most of these guys, that when I make comments on fiction, I, two things actually. The first, unless I think of more in the midst of this, the first thing is that I am completely objective. Or I'm not going to say completely, but I am near completely objective. Whenever I'm not being objective, I will tell you. Objective meaning I don't look at anything with a biased, a biased lens at all. Unless again, I'm telling you. I'm just straight up saying how it is in the game. I can say how I feel about it, sure, but I'm still looking at it objectively when I do that because I'm talking about the layers of death, when I'm talking about why a character sucks. I didn't just say that Velvet sucks because I assume since on Reddit, you're, can I say your Reddit name? Uh, sure, I mean, it's Velvet anyway. Okay, Th thank you, by the way. I got kicked out the fucking, uh, I don't know if you've seen that shitty-ass cartoon Ruby, Ruby V. I have seen it at some point I stopped because I both had to wait for new episodes and it was getting a bit boring. Yeah, a bit a bit boring, a bit shitty. And I posted my uh, analysis on Neo that I got paid to do. And I said, the show sucks, but Neo doesn't. And in the thing I said, Neo is making the show better. It's starting to get a bit better. Okay, I got flamed and all that crap. Then I posted a response to some uh, people talking about you think that Neo is stronger than Cinder? Why do you think Neo is stronger than Cinder? So me and another dude addressed those responses and how dumb they were. Though he was sort of defending them for a large part until he realized that they were dumbasses too. Reddit mind's like, you can't post info from Reddit posts. That's privacy. I'm banning you. Like, what the fuck? That's not a Reddit rule and that's not in your sub form. It's just some dude who was on my nuts. What Literally one mod because he realized that I was smarter than him. Okay, let me stop talking shit. Your name is Velvet Crow. So just I don't the two six zero at the end, but I'm not sure how well it's visible. Velvet underscore crow two sixty. There it is. Visible this on uh, 
Batman yeah. itself. No, I see it. That's more of I mean, yeah, your name is literally not Velvet Crow, but it's it's Velvet on the line. line is, it's Velvet underscore Crow two sixty. Yes, your name's not actually Velvet Crow. It's darkness, which it's is also not darkness. Not, it's not also darkness. It's my Discord's name. Okay. I like my on the What's your real name? Nah, I'm just I kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oh, trust me, they're going to attack me anyway, just for putting this up there, before they even look at it. And second of all, Darkness is less edgy a name than Velvet Crow. But anyhow, what I was getting at is that Velvet... Oh my gosh, these fucking crows. No pun intended. I think I'm going to have to roll the windows up. What I was saying is that, you know what, no, no, no. Let that be the ambience for talking about this bitch. Have the crows in the background. They're the spectators. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kill her. Get her. <laughs> I'm not being biased against her subjectively when I say that she sucks. Unless you think a bitch is a bitch. is like something else than a bitch. Like when I say a bitch, I mean an asshole. She is an asshole. Unless you view an asshole as something else than what like the dictionary views it. And she sucks because she has no development. But I look at that objectively. Which means... Empirically, which means quantitatively, you can prove it concretely. I looked at I look at something called layers of development, slash layers of death. What that refers to is how many aspects of a character you can report to yourself or to somebody else that aren't derived from that same aspect. They are like independent aspects. So, for example. Anything that has to do with Lafayette, set, which is basically all that bitch's character, one layer. If she changes, if she develops at all, to any extent, I don't give a fuck how, how much, because you can't really measure that really at all, <laughs> in most cases. But if she does, I'll count it as another layer, as long as it doesn't have to do with Lafayette. set. Even if you oh, prove to- Getting a fight notorious. Huh? Wait, which levels are you talking about again? Because there are two in the game and I just got confused. The, uh, and isn't that a fucking shame? She's so... Uh, four or... That incestuous bitch got such a crush on her brother. Gonna confuse the players, name the party member the exact same shit as her brother. I'm talking about her actual brother. She's everything... Okay, yeah, everything about this bitch revolves around the bro. That answer about 70% through the game. I'm about 70% through the game. Or, or yes. a little over that, she a little. Everything she's doing is for herself and not for Lafset. Okay, so we can get we can get that squared away, I suppose. But if you give me only one extra layer, she's still gonna have less than Eleanor. She might have less than Nico. I forgot what I said in that video. And she's that's that's just generic in terms of fiction. Most fiction overall, they only have two layers of death max. Once you get in a three, that's when you start addressing my interests and you don't start really peaking it like peak it like a mountain peak till you get to fours and fives and shit like that all right then tell me all the four and five of so you have for eleanor i don't <laughs> eleanor is not a four or five <laughs> okay it's three then sure tell me layers uh let me think i'm not even sure if eleanor is a three i thought i thought i said she was a 2.5 or something she might be a three let me see uh eleanor is but you don't want me to talk about your post i mean we can just do that a bit later i need to understand what's your layers of depth what you'd see that as so i know what i have God, to deal with I need some fucking juice or something like an example helps me understand how you measure stuff does that make sense yeah, but I thought we already went over that with Velvet, but sure. Uh, with Eleanor, she's um, she got the whole thing with demons and how she viewed uh, demons as so and so because of what happened to her mom and her. Uh, so basically all her views with demons revolve around that. She's also got her interactions with Lapiset and how she views Malakim and stuff. That's completely different. That's already two. If I tried, I could probably think of something else. I'm sure there'd be more if I finished the damn game. Because I'm sure she doesn't just end on a ravery note and not really sure what she wants to do in life. But that's already two. 
because it, she, it's not just two things that she's dealing with in her life. It's two things that change her as a person. They change her personality. Like, yeah, Velvet does shit because of herself, but she does shit because of herself because she wants revenge on this motherfucker Artorius because of Laffy set. Unless there's anything else she got to say about that. But, like, it's... it's, And then Inomi not, well, kill her because of... Yeah, he's doing this and that, but also because of Laffy set. It's, it's Laffy set. How dare you betray me? She said the shit in the fucking, uh... The Earth Post... But inside of Nomi Not, no, it wasn't inside of Nomi Not. It was like the Earth Post, whatever the fuck. The, no, no, it wasn't inside Nomi Not. It was inside that guy, inside that asshole's stomach, with the fucking uh. What'd you say? She said that shit. She said it inside when. Was controlled by a Nomi Not. Huh? The Earth Post they went through was under the control of a Nomi Not. Okay. Which is why he could show them specific memories. Okay, sure. Yeah. It's okay. From the Earth and Historia. Yeah, so she went, she went, yeah, the Radiant Historia, or the Earth Historia, whatever. Earth and Historia, that's what they call it. Okay, the Earth and Historia, yeah, and so our, everything she said was back to that guy. But I mean, like, so you see where I stand, hopefully. Otherwise, I can use some characters who have more death, and I could give you, like, more examples, characters of more death. But they wouldn't be from this series. I tell you that, they'd be from series of better writing in terms of characters. I think I kind of understand it, but... Have you played Danganronpa? Okay, okay, so you want to just move on? I have not played Danganronpa. Okay, well, I mean, I could tell you... Anyway. Seen any of it. Have you seen Evangelion? I'm just thinking of things I... Okay, have you seen... I have heard the dirty opening, though. I don't... That's one thing I don't remember. Have you seen Madoka or know about Madoka? I've heard of it. I have not seen or read it. Okay, we'll just, we'll, just, we'll get to this as we get through the live then, because I'm not, okay. Uh, one more. How about another? I'm not really stretching out of my another the anime. Nope. No Final Fantasy four, six, seven are the only ones I care about. Any of those? I have not played those. Okay, let's just move on before we raise people's stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna stop like trying to grill you because you left this stuff to me. I'm gonna see what you gotta say about anything that I put on that video. Do you wanna read it or anything you wanna pick out or you want me to just read down the line and address it as I read? I bet if you just read down the line and you can comment on things. Okay, I own. Yeah, no problem. I right. skipped the first part and you to the first little block at the top. You just some general information about the post. Okay, so for Velvet, being only on the receptive side in her relationship with Nico is something I highly doubt. Because, are you, okay, doubt, okay, again, when we were talking about... This is not factual, but how else you become someone's friend without being only receptive? I don't think you can become someone's friend by being only receptive. First of all, with friend, that's a subjective term. What does friend mean, concretely? Did they ever state that they were that close to each other? Velvet made some stupid ass quip about, oh, I'd be in love, in response to Nico already saying that at the start of the conversation earlier. She just repeated what Nico said. <laughs> well, besides that, we don't actually see Velvet trying to interact with Nico. Like, 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 one time she calls out to Nico at the market, and it's like, hey, and then that's it. Other than that, it's just Nico talking to Velvet. And Velvet, like, oh, I gotta get back to Lafayette. said. So where's the friendship? I mean, what would that even mean? What, how would you qualify that? Let alone quantify it. I'm not sure if you, how you would qualify friends that well, well, honestly. But if you look at the official Wikipedia for the game, that's what is stated. That's Wikipedia. So I disagree with what the Wikipedia says. That's Wikipedia sure. made by nerds like those assholes who downvoted me for saying that she's uh, like the number seven best character in the party. Or whatever. That's that's those guys who edit Wikipedia. Maybe not all of them, but how can I tell I what, who's it? But how could I distinct? Just about Brasilia. So. Yeah, that was a bit what I my post was about Brasilia. What I'm saying is, how can you get some objective facts on your side? 
because I'm talking about her being on the receptive side of her relationship, and we can verify that because we see the relationship. The friendship shit not so much, especially when you're talking about childhood friends, because we don't see their childhood. Zuh. Surprised if we did see the childhood, but sure, you can go to the next part, not from the entire post. But... Okay, because you get what I'm saying. As soon as you say stuff like doubt, and you already caught it, because I could tell about how you answer. When you're saying stuff like doubt, that's immediately going into opinion territory. If you don't know for sure, then... That is just something that would make sense to me. Put it all right. Go oh, ahead. Okay, good. So you admitted it. I'm not going to belabor it. So although we don't see it, she will have asked things... Do you want me to... It still goes on for a little bit. Uh, let's see. I can try counting for by sentence I do something else. Two, three, four, five... No, let me read... Let me, you know what? Let me read it all because I'm, sure. I'm man enough to admit if you make a point. So let me see. And I believe in inductive reasoning, which is... Basically reasoning through probability based on inferences, which are educated guesses based on stuff that we already know. Although we don't see it, she will have asked things of Nico, putting Nico on a receptive side before shit went down, aka the opening. So I guess when when demons are, when you're saying you know which one the opening is? Are you talking about the one in the intro? Yeah, okay. Like the intro where uh what's her name? Celica, the Toyota got killed? And, and the asshole just... Yes, that okay. is the opening. That's the event I'm referring to. Okay, that's the one? Okay, I didn't know if you meant that or if you meant whatever's happening in the start of the game. It's the event in the game. is called the opening, so that's what I'm referring to. The... Okay, you were talking about the one where Nico gets killed. No, the one where Selica gets killed. Okay, the one where Selica gets killed. That so... one is called the opening. Okay. The one where Nico gets killed is called the advent. Okay, I get what you're saying. So we're talking about the one before the advent. Okay, so we don't see she will fast things of Nico putting Nico on the receptor side before shit went down. Okay, so, uh, yeah. I still, I can't see, literally, what she's asking of Nico or not before the advent, because we don't see that. Well, we do see her before the advent, but we don't see Nico. So, after the opening, Velvet had a lot less free time, be and she wasn't referenced. Had a lot less free time because she had to take care of her family, because we only see her do any cooking and presumably house cleaning. She, um... It's, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at Velvet. All we see is that she's killed. She killed like five. I'm like I was exaggerating, like 50 pigs and whatever. She way more than she has to for a guy who's honestly that's not gonna really help him. And it doesn't address his issue, and plus he doesn't really want it. So she's wasting her own time, slaughtering innocent creatures. And besides that, Nico was out, you know, doing shit. Uh, the pigs were slaughtered for money to buy the medicine for Lafayette. So. Oh, I thought they were eating the pigs. Okay. It was for herself for eating. It was just to sell to the store so they okay. could get money to buy the medicine for Luffy said so they live. Okay, sure. So she's doing... Okay. But, but you, you still see my point, right? The game time skips so that anything that could have been shown between her and Nico, it's just shown slaughtering those pigs. And then it's evening time. Now, I'm going to do some gameplay story segregation here and say okay sure it didn't actually take all evening to slaughter those pigs but in that case all we can do besides say plot hole is to say she was dicking around in that absent time that we don't see because how the fuck is it nighttime otherwise why did she only leave in evening and what the fuck was she doing before that all day and even then why doesn't she go up nico after that let's see when did it switch to night but you see what I'm saying? Like no at night, she could have been with Nico. Know when she left. Why she left? When she left. When she left? It does. She could it have left right before evening. We don't know at what time she left or came back. So. Yeah, but my point was we don't that. Know how much time was spent? Yeah, but my point was that it's a double-edged sword because if she spent all day hunting them, she spent all day hunting them, and if she spent only that evening hunting them or like just left at the evening, then everything from before that still wasn't shown. She still wasn't interacting with Nico before that or after. Like that she doesn't like stay at like that dude has a bad time, right? He's fucking sick and she keeps him in bed all day. You don't got any other time to be with anybody else besides him then? No, you got a crush on him. And I can get into incest and all that shit. That's subjective morality. But literally, you're, ta you're tangled with that guy. You have nothing else going on. You're fucking Pixar. 
and she's choosing to do that. Whether or not you want to say she feels so obligated, sure, you can cape for her, but at the end of the day, that still limits her development because she's not interacting with anybody else. That's all I'm saying. That's why she didn't go with Nico when Nico was trying. That entire beginning section is just establish how Velvet was before the advent. So you know what happens prior to she her becoming uh, how she wanted to date, yeah. That's just how I see it. Okay, but so, that's still her group. Two points to that. First of all, that's still a character. It's just a bad character. You can say she changes, but then you gotta show me she changes. Two, um, bad in terms of we layers of death. Very not loud. Sorry? You are suddenly very not loud, so uh, could you repeat that? Okay, I said two points to that. The first is that that's just showing her character, and in an objective sense, talking about layers of development, bad, because she doesn't have much. She's just loppy set. Two, Nico is shown in that same amount of time doing more than her, and even doing shit with her. And let's do a three while we're at it. Three in that same intro that you're talking about where she's established, Nico's talking about how Velvet was promising to do shit with her. Basically begging her for it. <laughs> and Velvet basically just put it off. That a bit later. That's why that didn't happen. Okay, but I'm just letting you know that this is the part of the game that you're saying this, this was established. So this is established. It's, how she, it's established how she was before her big change. Okay, so all I'm saying is that that lady, I'm not even going to say bitch, because she doesn't have the right to be called a bitch, because she's not a bitch that I've seen. And even though I normally just say bitch just because, I call dudes bitches too. But that bitch, Nico. <laughs> that, and with the Supreme Court fucking shit up, I probably shouldn't be saying that word as much anymore. But fuck it, you think I cape for the Supreme Court? That bitch, Nico, in the same amount of time, Minor ass character had so much more development than her. It's so much more going for her in terms of things that we saw her. I could even talk about like like the, the minor shit, like the factoids. She has more factoids than Velvet. <laughs> I'm not sure what a factoid is. A factoid is just a little bit of trivia to her character. Oh, do you know this? The character likes this. This character thinks this about this. It doesn't change them. Nico has more shit going, like, she is more rounded out in general than Velvet is. Tell me that Nico doesn't have more going for her in the intro than Velvet in the intro. You can't ride that past me. Velvet literally does nothing but hunt for Loppy Set, and then when she doesn't get the medicine she wanted, she goes back inside to Loppy Set. Then she goes back out to find Loppy Set. Then she goes to sleep. Loffy sets run out. Then she goes back out to find Loffy set. And then she gets mad that Loffy set chose to sacrifice himself. Though, of course, he's too stupid to realize that he chose to sacrifice himself. Even though I realized that the first time playing the damn game. All I have to say is one other yeah, thing that so Nico. Sure. Oh, no. By all means, tell me what else I'm missing. To get flowers for Celica's anniversary of death. Yeah, she forgot about that. Sure. So yeah, she went to get flowers for her for Celica. But that how is that an aspect about Velvet though? That's getting something for her sister. Sure, she loves her sister. Sure. I mean sure, okay, Nico loves her parents until she's arguing with them and wants to punch her dad. Like I can, anything you want to name for Velvet, I can name for Nico four times over. Name something for Velvet. In the intro, of course. And what would you specifically want for that? Because I'm still in fully understand what you mean with your layers of death stuff. I'm not talking about layers of death. I'm talking about factoids. Okay, with... Honestly, for Nico, that's both. With Laffy Set, sure, you could say that's one layer of death for Velvet because of everything she's doing is because of Laffy Set. Sure, she's got a starting layer of death. If she can grow from that or not grow from that, I'm not going to judge her on that because how much she grows, I can't really mark out those points of demarcation to you the same way you might relay them to me the same way someone else might relay them to you and all that stuff you can't really tell exactly it's a little floozy where one starts and one ends unless it's just extremely obvious but the number of different things she has going for her 
that relate to her development. That's what I care about. And with Nico, what I already said is that she loved her parents and then that shit going on with the guy that she's into gets her to the point to where she, she gets into an argument with her dad and she's trying to stay away from the house. <laughs> Lingering outside the house and I have to go back, which means she's got something against both her parents, apparently, right? Wants to punch her dad and says she can't believe that she feels that way. And she doesn't understand why she's so mad. You don't see how this is so much more than Velvet already? Like, I don't want to hate the main fucking character. I have to play as the bitch. Even when I switch her out, like I'm running around as Eleanor or something, she's still gonna be the, the main face of most of the cutscenes. I would prefer she have Nico's, I would prefer she have more than that. It's kind of sad that she doesn't though. But so yeah, anything you want to name, literally anything, any interesting bit of trivia or whatever you want to name for Nico, I could name for, I mean, for Velvet, I could name for Nico and put more on top of it. I already raced at one of my cards right now. Or do you want to move on? I'm trying to figure out, still trying out what you mean. I said literally name any I'm trivia. Sure what you want specifically. Name any bit of trivia from Velvet in the intro. Because you challenged me to this. You said, sure, go ahead. So now I'm telling you. Now, as I said, name any bit of trivia about Velvet. And I will give you equal trivia and then three extra things about Nico. Okay, that might be a little bit hyperbolic, but you're probably not going to name that much about Velvet to begin with. Unless you're looking at like an art book or some shit. There's nothing to do with the damn game itself. What can you name me? Oh, I still fully understand what you want me, what kind of things you're looking for, which sure, um, okay. at the beginning of the game, you, she does establish that, for starters, she can cook, that's an obvious one, uh, she, how our combat uh, fighting style goes. Wait, she, she you said she's a good cook? She can cook, yes. Okay, so, okay, let's stop there. Okay, so she can cook. Okay, uh, Nico is trying to cook, she's trying to learn. But for an actual reason. It's just not, it's not like, oh, I can cook. She's actually working towards something. Impressing a guy. Plus, she wants to take Velvet's cooking and learn to cook. Because she has to take care of her family somehow without serving them raw ingredients. No, yeah. she she cooks because because Celica just taught her and she was, hey, yeah, yeah, I learned from Celica. Like, she uses it later on. Yeah, that's a separate point, though. For, but that's still back to that life he said shit. Come on, she's not cooking to, to take Artorias can survive. You're not slicking that, bruh. But back to Nico. I don't understand what point of trivia I'm looking for. No, you named your point. I don't understand what you're looking for. It doesn't matter. You named one, and I'm going to name four other ones for Nico. All right, then. Three more. Go ahead. Okay, she's got that, except she actually is working for something. She's got that for us. Uh, one of those points or isn't fat, a valid point but sure go ahead no I said it is but I'm saying that okay let's look at it this way she always cared about Loppy sick cause that motherfucker always been sick Nico was not always into this guy she changed because of this guy Bobit always liked that inward so you're looking for a point of trivia that caused you no, no, I just said give me a point of trivia. I just added on some ha-ha shit at the end. Like, okay, you gave me something, but it still ties back to Lafayette. set. This right here is something else for Nico, and it shows her development without even trying. And it's still the exact same thing for Velvet, the cooking, except for Nico, it shows Nico developing. <laughs> and I'm still on the first one. All right, then. Three more points to go. Good luck. Okay, okay. Can you first not give me my my ethos because you I just said that Nico has developed in the exact same front that Velvet has not developed you want ethos and what is that oh ethos is verifying my credibility on this subject because all those nerds who talk shit and you're smart enough to get on a conversation with me and hear me out and so you're hopefully learning something if not changing your point of view you're learning more about Nico and why I feel the way about Nico and why I'm not just bullshitting you. Those other jackasses, they don't know shit and they never will. Because they think with their dicks for that furry demon bitch. And so they're stuck in a dumbass rut 
that's got this country diminishing Roe v. Raid. Or anywhere else in the world where conservatism is taken over is basically the entire fucking rest. So can you give me my credibility? Because I just made a good point, I assume, about the layers of death. Nico changed on that front. Velvet did not. And I used the exact same trivia that you use for Velvet for Nico. So basically, it's. Um, I was on the season enough. It slipped my mind. Where did it go? Um, I forgot. I have no idea where it went. Oh, okay, so, okay, so, while you think of it, I'll name the other three. I'll, I'll go ahead and name one again with the same thing. I'll just go ahead and name the same thing when you go. The cooking and stuff, she wants to cook so she can take Velvet out to see the fucking world, and they can run a caravan together. That's two things, <laughs> off the same basis. Trying to develop with Velvet. Velvet's, uh, I'm gonna stay in town with, in the ball with Lafayette and with Artorius. Oh, really, bitch? Who would have thunk it? Should I go on or are you convinced yet? You can go on. Okay. Am, am I persuading you? At all? About Velvet being bad? Uh, no. No, about Nico having more to... I don't care about bad. That means so much to every other person. I was talking to you before this about how Sailor Moon was bad in terms of writing. That, that bitch, uh, and you won't know this unless you just happen to look shit up about Sailor Moon, that, that bitch, Sailor Lethe, talking about, oh, our homeworld was so doomed, oh, doom and gloom, so much war going on, but then Sailor Galaxia came to destroy everything and end the fucking world for us and to destroy our planets and then now we, we're okay now and we just gotta follow along with her and we'll follow her as she brings silence upon every world and that's the only way for eternal peace what the fuck bitch and second there's no there's gonna be no rebellion against that even if everybody's underneath that bitch sailor galaxia sex fucking denominations of the bit gangs are start off as like typically one gang and then they break off into other shit but unless we talk about the real Negro gangs, they typically got some sort of belief system at their core that derived from the very start. You saying that shit's not gonna happen again? And then Lethe's torturing Sailor Moon and shit. Oh, all things deserve to die. All things will die eventually. Die, Sailor Moon. What the fuck? Terrible ass writing. But I still love the damn show. This, this motherfucking show that I'm talking about here, dude. I'm talking about the writing of the show. Whether it makes sense or not, contradictory, contradictorily, excuse me. And whether there's death, that can be quantified in terms of layers. When I just talked about Sailor Moon, I didn't say I don't like Sailor Lethe because she's, uh, her outfit doesn't match as well. It's per blue. You should be pink like her sister. I said that her saying shit is, first of all, it's shallow. And second of all, there's contradictions. The same shit with Velvet. She doesn't have many layers. I put her at seven because she has less development than everybody else in the party. That's why she was number seven. She has less development than Nico. I'm gonna cheat. The shit that I said with her dad and all that, I'm gonna use that. That's number three. Fuck, that's that's number three. I can go on, but that's number three. Like so all together, right? That's four. Maybe maybe I already used that. It, and counting that is something else. Okay, sure. I'll, count, I'll say one more. The, the so thing. Three, so. Okay, we, four is. I don't know. Am I supposed to go to four? I don't even know. Let's just pull him out my ass. The what's go? The one going on with um. And second of all, before I even get to that, there is no verification as to whether or not Nico, in the, the, the illusion whatever is the real Nico or not. All things actually it point. Is the real Nico. Huh? Never is. Never was. It's an illusion based on the image of what Velvet has in the memory of Nico. What is your, what is your, first of all, then why are there things that are incorrect? That's because memory. It's based off of a memory. 
So of course things are gonna be incorrect. You can misremember stuff. What? No, 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 no. This dude is pulling illusions about Nico. Is what you're, what you're raging here. And Velvet is, okay, yeah, this is how Nico is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how is shit incorrect? And second of all, if shit is incorrect, how would she not know that? You just said it's, it mismatched with, that Nico was contradictory, right? In the illusion and in her boss self. That's what you said, right? I don't even believe, I don't know what I said, honestly. I don't believe that because on the premise it's wrong. If you're saying like, are you saying absolutely incorrect? Or are you saying incorrect according to her slant because you got to register whether or not she would rate or understand that or not from her point of view if the dude is just pulling memories about nico then i would assume the memories to be correct because velvet is mem remembering nico are you saying he's pulling incorrect memories i only made that assumption because of what you said or i thought you said that nico was not the same in illusion as she was in the past yeah but that's not the intro. yeah but i'm not making assumptions okay every all i'll tell you my stance also and so i don't the nerves don't say oh you left out the fourth point the shit with the dogs she got the dogs and she was trying to get the dogs because she's you know trying to go places and and you know pedal rares and you know be a fucking woman and she needed some protection and you can use the memories things for that and how she's being attacked by the monster and all that and Velvet's dumbass is just imagining that the dogs, the dogs have no protection at all but you see my point she got the dogs for protection she's that's a factoid she got the dogs for protection they are useless and she's protecting them and she still wants to keep them because she still cares for them despite being annoyed with them that's already more that it has, it's changed her because she's trying to put, she's a guardian now for two fucking dogs. <laughs> it's not huge, but hey, that's the, that's the layers of death. Just another aspect. You don't really got to do much with it. Or you can, it doesn't really matter. We go by the numbers here, not the degree. But yeah, so that's the fourth one. And then with Velvet and all that stuff, I'm predicating this on my belief being that everything points to, well, honestly, we don't know for sure either way, but it points to it being the actual Nico. It points to it being the actual person. First of all, that the dude, or the, that Nico, the, it, the, illusion or is it switch it, the, the illusion, it points to that being the actual Nico. So that was what we're talking about, okay. Yeah, was... So I just completely misheard you at some point. Got it. Oh, okay. Well then, yeah. All I was saying is that I'm not going to even bring her up because that would be unfair because counting that version of Nico would mean even more stuff for Nico <laughs> compared to Velvet, who by that point in the game still hasn't really changed. But you know the sad part? The sad part... The change didn't happen in prison, but sure. But she I mean, still wants to. Different change here, but all right. I mean, she gets more factoids, but in terms of layers, how does she change? She was already an evil bitch. Was she not? She wants to kill Artorias. That's maybe the girl Luffy said may have been the cause of that. But even after she knows. It doesn't that matter. Luffy said agreed to it. She still wants to do it. I. Okay, I want to let you finish because I don't want to be the guy to cut you off too many times, but it doesn't matter. And by my system, it doesn't matter. Because it still yeah, relates... Still to... your system, so... No, you already said it. You know what it is. It relates back to Lafayette set. So she's still just one thing. If she wants to kill Artorias because... If... 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 Ar... Sure. If... Huh? I'm giving you the, the exception as to when you could use that argument. Because I'm not just going to say no and make my system esoteric, I want you to understand it because unless you have another system that can be concretely defined and so we don't go into this woozy territory, all I know is my system and my system has never lost me a debate. Down votes don't count. Do you know of any other system that is completely free of bias and that can be empirically measured? in terms of character no development. Depth. Yep. No, development, not not death, development. Death is 
It can include development too, but that also includes shit like factoids and, and what you notice that's, oh, that's interesting, quirky. Development. Her changing. And provably so. Do you have any other system? So a system for change, am I gonna write? A system for character development. Mm-hmm. A system for change or a system for character development? That's what development develop development so is the same thing. Yes. Okay. I don't care whether it's positive or negative change. Positive or negative development. As long as the bitch ain't on the same front. You want to just move on? Uh, sure. Oh, wait. Uh, you said I could mention things of trivia in the opening, right? And you would then mention four more for Nico. I mean, dude, I could oh, name. You don't want to do that anymore. I, I could name. The point is to say I could name trivia ad infinitum for Nico. Oh, Nico wears these braids in her hair. Oh, Nico wears the village clothes while she oh, goes out go to hunt. That's small as well. But the, we can go infinitely, like I said, ad infinitum, so there's no point. All that matters that's not subjective is talking about the actual change. That's what I said. Plus, you're talking about a scene where Velvet is there and Nico's not there. If you're talking about the, the cinematic. I mean, sure, you could do that, but it's just not really fair. I would expect Velvet to have more because she has so much more screen time. But should I keep reading? Sure. Okay. Well, I mean, this is gonna be way too long. I mean, yeah, it's up to you. If you want to keep going, you can. Thirty. Okay. Oh, well, well, then, then let's let's keep going. Just on my side. What the fuck is going? What am I hitting with this car? Velvet and Nico might have even had a thing for each other. Uh oh, the headache's getting in because of that yeah, heat. That's Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm talking uh, the humidity. I'm starting to get a headache. I know that was a weird way to say that. Um, you don't know if they really had a thing for do If you have to say yes, might, but when you have to say might, that means you don't know it as a fact. I might have sweetest ancestry. You can't tell me I don't, but... Th huh? What? What did you say? I'm sorry. You can check that. But the point is, we don't know it yet. You could ask the developers if, if they had it. Know it for sure. Huh? The next sentence is the more, it's more the important parts that I can actually prove. Okay, if I was a boy, I'd be in love with you. Okay. Also, Velvet not being able to teach Nico the recipe, if I recall correctly, happened because of the advent, a.k.a. Nico is dead, and you cannot teach something to a dead person. First of all, is that what you meant? That is what you meant. That's the sentence? Yes. The things after that are related to that. And why Velvet didn't kill Nico intentionally. Okay, I'm going to... the video you made, you said it sounded like you were implying that Velvet killed Nico intentionally. Which is not the case. Okay, I wasn't. But... What does it matter? How does that... Are you defending Velvet's lack of development? I mean, I mainly made it because you said some things wrong and I wanted to correct that, so sure. Oh, no, I mean... Here's the thing, okay? When I... I remember exactly what you were talking about, so I'm not even going to give a generalization. I said that Velvet... Nico gave all this shit to Velvet in terms of character development that Velvet didn't take because she didn't, and you could give whatever reason you want. Oh, you could say... She was because of Lafayette said, or she was because Nico died. At the end of the day, Velvet didn't develop, <laughs> despite the chances offered. So that's that. Second of all, do you want to disagree with that first? Do you want to disagree with what I just said, or do you acknowledge that Velvet, despite whatever excuse you want to give her, did not develop? Because if you want to be really re- Want to be really anal about this? 
I could have said, well, you know, if Velvet were so much nicer to Nico and gave Nico the time of day and actually went places with her, they could have got the fuck out of a ball and then Nico wouldn't have died. Or Nico's heart could have been less malicious because she could have been happier and then Nico wouldn't have died. And then Velvet could have got more development. I could play the nitpicky asshole game, but is it really worth it when at the end of the day, Velvet didn't develop and Nico had more development than her? No, not really, right? See, I come fully loaded. I don't come bullshitting around. That's why I said true pain takes time, my friend. And those other dumbass reaps, they're less honorable than you, but they know when to pussy out. So you're brave, but you're going to get the sword. Unless you just hit me with some, some real swift parry shit I wasn't expecting. But right now, I got you on the back foot. But I'm asking you over and over again, do you disagree with what I'm saying? And you're not really disagreeing with what I'm saying, so I'm assuming that I got you on the back foot. You're still silent. Are you there? I'm thinking. Okay, I'm sorry. Just making sure. I appreciate that, dude, but you know what I'm saying makes sense. It doesn't matter what happened to Nico. What matters is that, first of all, all this shit that was going on happened at some indeterminate amount of time beforehand to where Nico had to remind Velvet to interact with Velvet. Okay, oh, please don't forget about the quiche. Remember, you didn't forget, did you? Oh, I thought you weren't, I thought you weren't serious. She said, I thought you weren't serious about that. She had brushed Nico off. So you can't really use the death as an excuse, can you? It shows that she wasn't trying to interact with Nico in the first place. Then, like I said before, with Lafayette set and with Artoria, she was prioritizing that over going off with Nico and actually, you know, being interesting. <laughs> Forming a troop with her and that guy and the dogs. Traveling celebrities, entertainers and shit. No. She's gonna sit here and grow old with Lafayette set and Artorias. If that is what someone wants, what's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that, subjectively speaking, but it doesn't offer her as much development because it doesn't offer her any development from what she's already been doing, which is that exact same thing. Do you get my point, man? I knew you were gonna say that, that I am not the subjective guy. I'm not. Because when you go into what's wrong, what do you like, and how to talk forever. I don't talk about what I like, unless I'm letting you know I'm talking about what I like. I said in that Velvet Sucks video that I would fuck Nico, and I would enjoy it, and I would enjoy watching Nico piss all over Velvet because Velvet would be on the bottom. That's what I like, but what are you getting out of that? I never even heard that part of the video, so oh, I'm yeah. going from a lot. Yeah, well that's what happens when you talk into subjectivity. You talk about shit that's disgusting and that you probably miss on purpose. <laughs> you don't learn anything about that. Most of these guys don't want to learn anyway, though, and that's why they tune me out. It's really YouTube, but... You... I'm, I'm still rating. Are you done thinking, or are you still thinking? Because we're still in the first paragraph here. Just because that I'm, I'm that guy, there is a hole in one thing I said, but I'm not going to say what it is. There is one hole in one thing I said. <laughs> I just want to run the debate. I don't even care about the, the truth at this point. Let me just run the debate. I'll tell you after the call, unless you hit on it. I don't think I'll be hitting on that. There, there is a counter to it, but I'm not... Okay, so do you want to move on then? Sure. Okay. You said Nico is dead. You cannot teach something to a dead person. As for what happened, and by the way, she could have. <laughs> if she stayed in that village with the illusion, what do you think would have been happening? She would have been teaching something to a dead person. Whether it's a, an illusion it's of it, whether it's possible. an illusion of a dead spirit, whether it's her dead spirit itself, whether it's a soulless corpse. Dude, it's about Velvet's development. 
Even if she's just thinking about memories of Nico and that changes her, she's developing. Even if she's going psycho and, and teaching Nico in her own mind, <laughs> that's something else to her. You know what we get instead? She drops like one line about Nico until they actually go back to the illusion. And you expect me to believe she cares and she's so dumb struck and, and all. Come on. She didn't fucking care. She, the she bitch was. A lot. She hardly mentioned Nico at all until that very moment of the illusion. So any pathos you expect me to feel regarding her and Nico's relationship does not exist because she did not remember that bitch despite having killed her, which means that did not mean a damn thing to her, which means she did not develop from that, and besides that, she said she'd fucking kill her again without knowing whether or not for sure herself that were an illusion. At that point, it was pretty class with notion, but sure. Don't say but sure, give your evidence. All right then, Velvet tasted something. Something here is no longer real. And second of all, the entire environment was suddenly filled. Velvet had... Okay, I'm sorry, keep going. The entire environment was suddenly filled with malevolence. Something that would not have been... Huh? So much, there was so much malevolence all of a sudden. That people would have been turned into demons, the same amount you see at Haria that turned people. Which was not an illusion, right? That that second place was not an illusion, so I don't get what you're saying. No, it was certainly real again. What? There, before, there was no malevolence, and it was real. Afterwards, there was malevolence, and it was real. <laughs> I don't get what you're saying. In the illusion, there was no malevolence. Before in the other place, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about that beach place. Before, okay, I'll give you the exact one on one analogy. Before in whatever the fuck that beach place you just named, there was no malevolence. Before in the ball, in the illusion that you're proclaiming is an illusion, there is no malevolence. I mean, obviously the city was an illusion, but the people, that's the question, right? That's the characters. But in both of those cases, there was. After the Therian was removed in the real beach, there was malevolence. After the Therian was, or whatever the fuck, they found a Therian, the dogs, in the a ball, illusion. There was malevolence. <laughs> There's no difference. There's malevolence in every creature, whether it's human or demon or Moloch. They turn to the dragons and shit. Much, but it was enough to overflow. They said, well, that's what it looks like. Dude. Sure. You're saying sure as though I'm not making any points, and you're countering with sure with not, there's no evidence on your side. I'm addressing your points directly and inviting you to give me some concrete evidence. Where's your concrete evidence? That tasting shit? She had COVID. How about that? Yeah, no. How about the, it's not stated either way how she got the taste. She just assumes it. It's because of an illusion. Melchior's illusion messes with your brain. That's circle it's logic. Quite early on, Velvet has no taste left whatsoever except for blood. That's circular and all of a logic. She, and it's a flicking something across his face and she says it needs it was too sweet. How would she know that if that, this was real? I don't for, wait, that's a that's a loaded question surrounded by circular reasoning. You're assuming that be so. I'll tell you because you're assuming that because she's in and first of all you're assuming it's an illusion. Second of all, <laughs> that's your premise. What else could you're, it be? You're What? It could be real. Velvet can't taste food. That's established quite early on. So your premise is that it's an illusion, which is fine. Your evidence for that premise is that this happens because it's an illusion. It can't happen in any other way. If it can, give an example. I just gave you one. She could have COVID. <laughs> she it doesn't return your taste senses all of a sudden. How do you, people have recovered their tastes? What do, what do you what do you mean? Velvet lost her sense of taste. She can't taste food at all. It's just people have. She, People have recovered. Their, I'm not trying to make light of COVID, but you realize people have recovered their taste and then lost their senses again, and then their senses are just out. It's not the same for every person. But sure, I can go with another one. 
she could have like because of she has a freaking therian body you did i like dissect her and figure out how all that shit works did i do her dna strands it's because she has a ther it became a therian that she can no longer taste Yes, and everything else that happens with the fucking Therian body. I don't know what the fuck is up with that. She could have just been so emotional that she lost taste for a bit. And then suddenly she's just... Oh, the shock of seeing Lafayette set brought her taste back. Briefly. We don't know. I don't even think that's possible, but sure. How do you not think it's... Po okay, so you cannot think it's possible, but where's the proof? Where's the proof that... You proof that it is possible. That's due to seeing someone alive, you can suddenly regain your sense of taste. But we don't know either way. I'm saying it could be anything. The the shit could have been just that fucking strong, to where it it activated her taste buds. Yeah. And there's normally. Sounds highly doubt. Uh, because you can't prove it either way anyway. It may have been too sweet, but you think she didn't eat anything sweet before that? No, and we we don't see her eating she anything sweet. Before. We don't see her eating anything <laughs> sweet before that. She doesn't even try to. And, and you act like what I said is biologically impossible. You can numb somebody and then hit them so hard they still feel it. Like, dude, you're running with that illusion thing, which I'm not saying is wrong. But I'm not saying it's an absolute, as though we know for sure. And the issue was that Velvet assumes it's an absolute, and then she ditches that Laffy set, and then she did no development from that. Okay, how much more proof do you need that's an illusion then? I don't know. If you had seen my video, if you had seen Melchior, Melchior the Duke. It himself. Who did what? Yes, I already said that the village is an illusion, but the people are different. He didn't specify what it was, and that encounter with Melchior left us with more questions than before we met him, when he got the, the uh, Alfred or whatever, the, the pirate exactly captain. This. It's an illusion based off of what the person wants most. You just stated... In this case, the person is velvet. You just stated again the same thing you said before, but you didn't give any actual evidence. And how did I not? Because you said it's an illusion based on what the person wanted most. Because Belkir said it's an illusion based on what the person wanted most. Yes, if he says that it's that, how is it not that? First of all, he's a bad guy. Why the fuck would I care what he says? Unless he gives himself some ethos. Second of all, I don't think he's that nice. Uh, you need a lie detector as well. Dude, you know what I, you know what you're doing right now. You know what you're Darkness, you know what you're doing. Darkness, I I, for one, don't care whether or not it's an illusion because Nico already has more development than Velvet in that intro. I really don't give a shit. Because you know what happens in that illusion? She wants to kill the Artorius because of Lafayette. set. That's all that happens. And she doesn't give a fuck about Nico. Like what already happened. So yes, if you look at my other video, in particular the Velvet Sucks one, I do detail out exactly why it's in the second of all, Melchior is not that, nice, not that nice. There's no way he can do that shit and go all into... Second of all, Melchior is not that nice. You're not... There is no way he can do that shit when he fucked up with manipulating Aizen. With Ifrit. Couldn't even get that dude right. And that dude's just, motion's just all just there for everybody to see. And he fucked that up. But you expect me to believe he did the whole fucking village to burn velvet? No. But even if so, it doesn't matter. You could go back to that video where I explained, and I will admit, I don't know exactly how. But I don't give a fuck because velvet still is a shallow ass bitch. Regardless of anything that you want to say about whether the illusion is real or not. I could tell you what else could have happened with Nico instead of it just being an ethereal... Con, like contraption of ma mana but who the fuck would care do you, are you do you think so little of velvet's character that you don't think she gave a shit she should have given a shit about nico enough to say you know even if this person is fake why don't i try and work with her 
for old time's sake, which by the way didn't exist. Why don't I try to get to know her better, even if to backstab her later? Or how about just, you know, just to rekindle the feelings that I've lost that I had before? Or I just feel so, so attached to, she felt that way with Lothi set. Oh, it's, it's an illusion, but, but, I, but is this real? Oh, Lothi set, oh, Lothi set. <laughs> Trying to talk herself out of it, but but no. But but with Nico, it's, it's just fuck. Who cares, right? Right, it's because she tasted some. Okay, you're saying that I, I don't know because she tasted some cake. She's not going to try and get close to that corporeal form of mana that identifies as Nico. I did that shit with the fucking your turn to die. That that rip off of. Okay, I'm not gonna call it rip off that. That version of Dongan Rampa, where they got two characters that are looking the same. One of them is real, one of them isn't. But they both are acting basically like the real character, and they're both sapient. What's sapient? They can think for themselves, and they're aware of their own existence in the world, and everybody around them. Huh? I'm sorry. Sentient, sapient. Sentient is the ability to feel sensations. Sapience is the, sentience is the ability to feel sensations. Back in the days when people didn't give a shit about animals, but they, most of them still don't. They still knew that animals were sentient. And that's why they still try to kill them humanely sometimes. But humans were the sapient ones. Oh, we can think of so, all that shit. But all I'm getting at is that this girl, Velvet, if she cared so much, and if you want her to have a better character... Why not have her try and get close to the fake Nico? Even if she knows it's the fake Nico. Because she can't bring herself to kill the real Nico. Because it, or the fake Nico. Because it reminds her of the real Nico. And she's got her own personality too. Even if it's just a clone or whatever. That was made by the magician dude. So. Seriously. Why does it matter? Like I will skirt this entire illusion shit just to talk some more shit about Velvet because she deserves it and because I'm still on topic. Tell me why it matters. The illusion part. For the change or... Why doesn't she still want to get close to Nico? Just because it's an illusion? One, if you got that close to Nico, she could help you against Melchior. Presumably, or somebody. No? No? Okay. Sure, why not? It no. doesn't matter, no or not. Is The point is why not? The point is why not try? She got there. You know what happened when she got there? I'll tell you what happened when she got there. About to go off on, on Nico and everybody else until like one of the dudes, or Nico, I forgot who it was, said, oh, Lafayette said it's still there. <laughs> you let Lafayette said die? Why did you let Lafayette said die? Goes in there to hug on Lafayette said. As Nico and, and cast, like Magi Lu and Eleanor or whatever. Rochus. Let's go out and hunt for Lafayette. set. Oh, same shit at the start of the fucking game. Very fucking start. Repeating. Copy and paste it. Repeating. The exact same enemies too. Gameplay story integration. To say that she has a shitty character with no death. You're not the real Lafayette. set. I'll, you can die. Or I'll let you die. And then I'm going to kill you, Nico. Did any in any of that? Did she care about Nico before the illusion? Tell me, before she realized that she cared about Nico. You're cutting out. So can you repeat the last sentence? Okay, sure. Only because it's the last sentence. That anywhere before she realized that that was the illusion, did she try to get close to Nico? So that she cared about Nico? So any form of development whatsoever with Nico? No, I'll give you that. No, okay, so the illusion shit doesn't make a damn difference. She's still a shallow bitch. Depends. It's determination. Proof of determination of change. I think so, does it? I have no idea what that means. All I know is that she is still on Lafayette's dick. The brother. The entire time. Still. The entire time. 
So I don't know what determination of change means. There wasn't any change to determine. If Nico's real, then she changed. But you don't want to say she's real, so sure. Want me to move on? I do want to get to the rest of your post. I don't want to leave it hanging. All right. I already said that I agree that there was no interaction with Jovelle with Nico, so you can move on. Okay, good. That's 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 for the, the idiots who are ready to thumb down my video. I had to explain it for them then. You also said, as for what happened there, Nico, along with everyone in the village, was turned into demons, and Velvet became a Therian. Velvet killed all of the demons that attacked her, and only after she killed them did they turn back into who they were. As is mentioned in the game, a Therian... Fuck, it's so hot. As is mentioned in the game, a Therian... Shit, let me just... No, I can't. I'm... I'm... This is what happens when it gets too hot. I'm starting to blank out. I can't even see where I am. I shouldn't be complaining. They got... You in Europe, y'all got it worse than me. I shouldn't be complaining, if so. Uh... Where the fuck am I? Mentioned in the game, a, Therian, a, a demon cannot become a human while alive until Fia awakens his silver flame ability. Okay. I didn't get that far. I don't know about the silver flame and the seraphs and all that shit. It sounded corny. I didn't even want to... You have seen that. If you did indeed reach Mount Kilaros, you have seen the silver flame. Okay, maybe I saw it and forgot. So Velvet <laughs> accidentally killed Nico. <laughs> That is because a Therian cannot tell who a demon is or was when they are fully transformed. This is because you, of course, of something you said that you apparently misspoke. With that velvet intentionally killed Nico. I said, all I said is that she killed Nico. What did Velvet do for Nico? She killed Nico. That's what she did. Whether she knew it or not, that's what she did. Like, what the hell, dude? You already know. You already know. You've killed her. I'll let you go on. What are you going to say? Because I cut you off. If she knew it, would have known it was Nico, would she have killed her? I don't know or give a fuck. Because she wasn't interacting with her either way. I'm cussing, but I'm not mad. But I will tell you this. She knew those guys were former villagers, and she slaughtered them all in rage over a loppy set. So, did she care? No. If there's like, you, you draw a marble, and Nico's name might be in the box. And there's like a 1 in 200 chance that she kill Nico. But who fucking cares? I get a prize for Lafayette said if I draw the marble. I draw the marble. Did she really care about Nico? No, right? <laughs> like, come on, dude. You know this shit. Y y your name is Velvet Crow. But you can admit that she cares about that dude more than she cares about Nico. I can indeed admit that. You can. And you can admit that she cares about that dude more than she cares about anybody else. Right? So you can admit that she will prioritize that dude over Nico's life, even if she's not thinking about it. She doesn't consider Nico. Nico isn't worth regarding. Do you want to address that, or do you want me to move on? Or do, 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 you, do you want to? Yeah, okay. So that is because a Therian cannot tell who are... Okay, yeah, yeah. Rokuro is only partially transformed. Yep, yeah, I'll go on. As for the second time, Velvet didn't want to kill her, but she didn't have much choice in the matter. mentioned this so you got this the delusion part. Section. Well, you said she didn't have much choice in the matter. She said she would fucking murder her. She had choice of Lafayette set, let that dude die. She could have talked to him and, and stayed in the illusion. That's a choice. Whether you view it as good or bad, that is a choice. She made shit worse for everybody by continuing on her crest. For everyone. The only yeah, thing... Yeah, the, you know the end result, right? The only thing uh, you can... The, the only... I don't know but about... If, the, damn, dude. You I'm, know the enemy's plan, right? I know that, that the dude in Omenot was making people kill themselves because they were impure and whatever, they had sin. But that, that she didn't know that at that part. She didn't know that. That had not come yet. She wanted to kill Artorias. That's what she's about. You can't jump to the end of the game. Still. You said she made things worse for everyone. Yes, but along the way. succeed with their plan, nobody would even know who they were. Okay, two wrongs don't make a right, dude. She's, I know it's an accidental byproduct, but still. She wants to kill Artorius, first of all. The other shit is tertiary. And and, and, and she wants to kill Anominat because it's Lafayette said. The, the good and evil, that's tertiary. That's what she said. Now, with regard she to... She wants to kill him and Artorius 
because she wants to kill out Darius. She said she, she never kills Inominat. I didn't say she kills. I said she wants to kill them both. That's what she says. She says they both betrayed her. She's screaming that while she's laughing crazily in the Earth Post Point, the Earth in her story or whatever. That's what she's screaming. And that's when she was at the point of greatest despair. Afterwards, she had to accept reality. She says that afterwards, that she still wants to kill them both for betraying her after Lafayette does his oh, little man. come back to reality and slaps her or whatever, or yeah. You're so selfish. Uh, hug me, selfish older sister. Whatever he does, he holds her on her with his one remaining hand. She got them both chopped off. She comes to her senses, so to speak. She's always been a dumbass, crazy broad, but she still wants to kill them both. Whether she does it or not, doesn't matter. Damn, I got what I was going to say. She didn't have much choice in the matter. She did have choice in the matter. She could have stayed. And all along before she knows what they know me not really doing, she's making shit worse. Like you mentioned, uh, the... Uh, hella rays, ruining the city, burning all the ports and shit, ruining that halal or whatever that name is, halawi, the beach, getting everybody turning the demons and slaughtering them. Still going on after that, and this is before he know me not does his thing. Are you trying to absolve her of this? You, you can't excuse this. Okay, so yes, so she's in. She did terrible things. Yes. Yes, and she could have stayed in the illusion and not done terrible things. You would have thought it was a bad choice. Using your hindsight bias of knowing what Inominat was going to do and she didn't. But first of all, she wasn't thinking about that because she didn't know. Second of all, she did that shit because, oh, you trying to stop me from getting your Darius. Because of said. <laughs> and third of all, it's a choice regardless. You said she didn't have a choice. She did. True. Okay, thank you. So she did have a choice. And she did want to kill her because she said, uh, out of my way or I'll devour you next. Believe it was again, but You you could say when she says out of my way or I'll devour you next that she's going to let uh Nico go. Sure. You could say or that means she's Nico, yes. Yeah, sure. Or you just could... get her out of the way. Okay, yeah, sure. Get or her out of the the end point of the Therian. Okay, I understand that. But are you gonna <laughs> Are you gonna brush past the fact that she doesn't give a shit about Nico? Because she doesn't care and she says out of my way or I'll devour you next. That doesn't sound like someone who, who, if I was a boy, I would be in love with you. You're using this part as a callback to the first part, trying to excuse the first part. When in this part, she gives even less of a fuck about Nico's life because she knows that Nico would... If she didn't care about Nico at all, like thought Nico was just a straight up fucking demon and didn't care, why would she warn Nico? Out of my way, I'll devour you next. No idea. No idea? No idea why she would say that uh, then, if what you say is true. Yeah, what I say is true. If she does not care, why would she still give the warning? Yeah. Which she means she does care, at least on some level. What? No, I said... Oh, gosh. I don't even remember what I said. If I was a boy, I'd be in love with you. you she said... Then. Huh? Is the heat getting to you too much then? Yes, and I have a hat on. I don't know how I'm still going on. I should be hydrating myself. I got a juicy juice right here. 100% juice. I'm not drinking it. Felber didn't want to kill her, but she didn't have much choice in the matter. She did have a choice because she said she was going to kill Nico. Yes, yeah, she did. She warned Nico and all that stuff, but she assumed that Nico was a demon in the first place. Why was she warning Nico? The truth revealed at last. If you view yourself as in the illusion, that means you're assuming that Nico is the demon. I don't even remember. This is my point. But then why are you warning Nico? But then you assume it's Nico. But then that means you're threatening Nico to kill her if she doesn't move for some stupid ass reason so I can kill these Therians or, or ca whatever, capture these Therians so I could get back my quest to avenge Lafayette. And if you don't move out my way, bitch, I will kill you. Right? As you ruminate on that, I'm going to open up my juicy juice. So if I get this correctly, what you're saying is that I contradicted myself. I don't, I don't know what the fuck happened. I know that Velvet is a contradictory character, so if you try to cape for her, you're going to be wrong. <laughs> That's all I know. So probably yes. Now, if you say right now that this post...
is void and I love Nico, then I'll admit you're right. You want to do that? If I want to say what? That the rest of this post that I've done, they're void and the argument is moot. And I love Lika, Nico now. She's the best character ever and Velvet is garbage. Then I'll admit you're right. Yeah, I'm not doing that last part. <laughs> Okay, I don't gotta admit you're right, but sure. So you admit that Nico's the best and that Velvet is garbage and the post isn't worth nothing no more? Let's see, I'll go over this and see. Uh, it's not all about the characters, of course. Dude, I can, I can address but everything. You are a change thing. Change thing? No, 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 let's keep going then. I, I'm, I'm joking with you, but what I'm telling you is that when I made that video, First of all, I had just played the game. And I played the game last a couple months ago. Okay, but I like just played it hours, like with within like a day of making that video. That driving in the car video. Not the Velvet Sucks one, but the driving in the car one. I had played it like the night before. And I knew Velvet sucked in terms of character because she did. And I had save states, not save save data. I guess it's both, whatever from a ball that I was analyzing through. I was going back into a ball and looking at everybody's dialogue, talking to every motherfucker in that village, noting that Nico wasn't there even though you can search every inch of that village, meaning she must have been doing shit because when she came back, she was there the whole time. And noting that there was like no mention of Velvet and Nico in terms of Velvet progressing from that. I was trying to find something for Velvet progressing. I was fucking Jimmy Kudo in that bitch. I was Detective Conan. And I lost. What does that say? I'm objective. I'm not gonna just like straight up lie. And you said that Nico is a figment of her imagination and not real. I mean... Sure, you can say that. Sure, sure go. Yeah, she had to accept the fact that Nico was dead. She killed her because it wasn't really hard for her to accept. She didn't think about Nico. At all. Nico's death wasn't even an instrument to move the plot on a shallow level. Nico literally was not mentioned again, like hours of playtime later. Which means months later in the game. And that's just like a, a one-off line. She killed her because Nico was standing in front of her. Oh, killed her because the Nico standing in front of her is a figment of her imagination and not real. But we already went over that, it, it doesn't matter. Yeah, we already went over that. Okay, so... so which is where you could skip that part. Sure, so when the... Illusion, said that too. Understand. Uh, the illusion over Nico was lifted, and the demon posing as her was revealed. She had a much easier time killing it as it no longer looked like Nico. But you know, that still goes into the last sentence, that she was going to kill Nico either way if Nico stood in her right. She was gonna kill Nico if she stood in her yes. Okay, so that's so like what you just said about the demon posing as her made it easier to kill the demon, that doesn't matter, right? Even if I yeah. not okay, because even if I acknowledge it, it doesn't matter. It's it's another character, it's a, some demon. So let's let's go to the next one. Unless you wanted to say something about that. Next paragraph? No. Okay. The point about people flocking to Velvet because of a common goal is not a bad thing in my opinion. Because even though Velvet does not care slash interact with them and sees them as a means to help her get re her revenge at first, them going on the same path with the same goal means it is in her and their best interest to interact and form tactics against the common enemy. Okay, sure. When they interact and overcome perils together, they will bond more naturally. Okay. As for Okay, but what you said is conceptual. Does that actually happen though is the question. What do you mean, does it happen? You said it's in their best interest to get along. It's in the student's yeah, best interest. Goals. Yeah, but do you... Just to make that's something that makes sense. Okay. If you are trying to do something alone, it's obviously going to be hard. And if you have multiple people uh, doing me... that together, in this case, fighting an enemy force, which the more people, the easier it becomes. And here is an analogy. Right. It makes sense, but again, it's conceptual. Here's an analogy from a former teacher. A teacher and a... Here's an analogy from a former teacher, because what you said is conceptual. Conceptually speaking, a teacher and a student have the exact same goal, 
to make it to the end of the school year with as minimal bullshit as possible. They try to achieve that goal together because they're forced to by the narrative, aka the curriculum. And the student's just fucking dicking around and being an asshole and just not trying to hear what the teacher has to say and is just avoiding the teacher and just on their phone all the time. So just because that is the best interest for them both doesn't mean that's how it's going to work out. The student is ignoring the teacher and not getting close to the teacher. Velvet is ignoring her teammates for all intents and purposes and not getting close to them. Despite the theory. I'm interested in what she... I'm sorry. Could you repeat the last sentence? The teacher is trying to get close to the... From besides... Oh, besides the theory. Besides what is theoretically in their best interest. Not hypothetically. Theoretically. I agree with you. That is in their best interest. But you know what she doesn't do? She do As I said in that video, she doesn't ask Eleanor what the fucking dude says uh, in the end of the shit. Rokuro, in the end of the battle. Oh, you're very good with that spirit. How did you get so good with it? I've learned, I've trained with the spirit for many years. We're going to see Velvet say that shit. Eisen's like, I wish I had power like that. Yeah, shut the fuck up, motherfucker. <laughs> like, you know what she says. She's like, come on, man. It's like, she doesn't try on any level to get close to these guys. I wouldn't risk for it if I were you. I'd shut the fuck up if I were you. <laughs> she doesn't get... If you give me some actual evidence from the story about her trying to do what you're saying is theoretically in her best interest, then sure. And her growing from that. But I don't see anything. Because at this point in the paragraph, you've moved on to another point. You're saying, as for Velvet not having the stand-up comedy... The answer to that is simple. So that's something else completely. Did you want to address what I just called out? The part of not following tactics or in, uh, purposeful interaction from Velvet. Both. You can have one from the other, or the other from one. All right, then using the book of Venema to learn his secrets and how to best defeat him, or stop him from becoming even more powerful. Using the the this what? To... I'm sorry, yeah. what? Using, using what? the book of Enominat. Okay, using the book of Enominat to fight Artorius. She always wanted to fight Artorius. No, to learn Enominat's secrets and how he works, and how they could either stop him potentially or um, make uh, prevent him from getting less powerful. Using the book of Enominat to fight Enominat. She always wanted to fight Enominat from the minute she saw him. I mean, it, it might not have looked like I said that she grows from it. Of course, she uses tactics. If it needed to be a tactic, I would really ask again. It was a tactic or interaction. Okay, then I just missed. I asked a wrong question. Well, in the text, you said. In okay, no problem, because you said interact and form tactics, which means the both of them. But, I mean, if you're going by tactics, Nico has tactics. Like she, tactics to get close to Velvet. Tactics to get close to the guy she likes. Tactics to get food from the forest. Tactics to go to Taliesin and earn a living. <laughs> tactics to try and argue with her parents. Now to the forest, did she? W where else was she at if she wasn't in... Okay, where was she... If you're not trying to go meta and say that she wasn't spawned, where was she at in the village? I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna go like just talk about like physically. Inside one of the houses, you can't enter any of them anyway. How can you prove that she isn't in one of the houses? Because we see her already outside buying stuff. You don't buy with the stuff you earn from inside the house. I mean, I guess you, you can, but she was like buying stuff from outside of the house. Are we now talking about Nico at the illusion or in the, uh, in the previous spot? Because you mentioned spot. I'm. T I'm. So I'm talking about the the real Nico. First of all, um, they say they do say in the illusion that she had gone out, and Velvet doesn't question that. I mean that that Nico had gone out to tell yes, and then Velvet doesn't question that. Yeah, I don't remember it. Okay, well I, this is a good time to get to it because that's the one thing I was talking about that had the hole, but that had the uh, counter. You could say. Maybe Nico had gone to Tally. She's in Tally S and Velvet and talking to one guy 
who's talking about Nico and saying Nico has been stopping lately to pedal her bears. She got the dog oh, yeah, super. Do, do, okay, yeah, but she. Okay, but you can still have a counter to that, and I'll counter the counter. One, you could say that she Velvet's not shocked about that and like saying how is that possible? I never saw her going to tally or anything like that because she did that after the the advent. And so, of course, Velvet wouldn't know. And then Velvet's thinking that, okay, sure, it's not strange to Velvet. She doesn't call attention to that before or after the illusion. Second of all, she gets the dogs to protect her while she's going out. The Morgana Woods are mentioned multiple times. She talks about going to the neighboring village when she's talking to Velvet and peddling rares there. You're not going to need protection in a ball with guard dogs. The doctor that she likes, the, the, uh... She did go out. Yeah, she, she ran out. It's, it's all but obvious. The doctor that she likes, that guy is not in the village. The veterinarian guy? She goes out. That's why Nico sees her in the... Yeah, to, to Talies in the nearest village. That's why Nico sees her in the dream, because it's based on Nico's memories. You don't misremember that. Oh, I thought, I, did I see Nico outside being attacked by a monster one day? No, it's just like maybe the monster thing is an added bonus, sure. <laughs> but it's based on seeing Nico outside or knowing that Nico went outside before. I mean, besides, we see other people outside. We see those kids outside in the Morgana Woods. We see the little girls outside in the Morgana Woods. Guys talking about, uh, men talking it, about... Can, um, right next to the gate, right? Yeah, right next to the gate. Like, if people don't... If I they... they on one side, though. The point is, they leave, and he's like, uh, hey, 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 I know you normally go out, but you can't go out this time, because, you know, it's like, uh, the sky is all getting red and stuff. It's the advent coming on, Velvet. Let's wait till this blows over before we go out like usual. Like, you get, if everybody was insular, dude, the village would fucking die. Okay, it wouldn't die, but it's known for trading. That's factually in the lore. It's it's known for trading. People leave the village. Now, from a velvet slant, you would not assume that to be the case, because that motherfucker stays in bed all day, practically. But no, other people in this village got lives. Ego was trying to get velvet in on that, and you didn't know. Luffy said. Where's Luffy said? Best time to wear a striped sweater is all the time. Should I move on? <laughs> you're, you're thinking? I'm not being, I'm not trying to mock you. I'm asking because I understand that. But if you don't, I'm asking, are you thinking? Okay, the reason I'm asking, are you thinking is because if you're not thinking, and you're waiting for me to move on, then we have dead space. But if you are thinking and I can verify it, then I can wait for your response. All right, uh, you can move on. Okay. I'm surprised. The battery is pretty good, actually. When they interact and overcome their perils together. Okay, so as for Velvet not standing, or not having, excuse me, the stand-up comedy to answer, that is simple. The stand-up comedy? It's not that she doesn't... Yeah, I don't get what you're saying. You're talking about with Magilu. She doesn't have to do that with Magilu. Ask Magilu for help. Magilu is the strongest person by far on that team. And the most knowledgeable person by far on that team. She's so mystically knowledgeable that I was getting annoyed with her. Like, first of all, when are you going to join the fucking party, bitch? Second of all, can you tell us a little bit about what you know? You obviously got all this info stashed in your brain that you're just lording over us mysteriously. But does the bitch who wants to kill Artorius and can use any means to get there because she fucking sucks by herself, ask her partner who could easily just ditch her ass for help? No, she doesn't. Why? Why? Especially when you know that Magilu's already interested in you. It doesn't got to be the menagerie. If you're so suave and, and such a manipulatress like you purport yourself to be, then sure, get on that menagerie shit and try at least to get close to Magilu to learn some shit from Magilu to use her for your own gains. But no, you don't even think that far. Okay, then why not just ask her directly? What do you know? Eleanor's got more experience than you? 
Rokuro's got more experience than you. Aizen's got more experience than you. Magilu's got decades and 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 pitching and moaning and pitching 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 and decades 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 and decades. But you don't ask any of them. Why not? Yeah, instead, you order them around like they got to take any of your shit. Any of them motherfuckers. Can, yeah, I know that only really Eleanor and Maggie Lou can stop her. But she can't get out of... I don't think Eleanor can stop okay, her. Sir. Sure. Okay, sir. Sure. Okay, sir. But she can't get into because a fight... There is a one-on-one -on -one fight between Eleanor and Velvet. Okay, yes, there is. But she can't get into a fight with any of these motherfuckers without getting bruised up. But she's acting like she's just fucking Sailor Galaxia talking to the inanimates and shit. Her fucking pawns on the board. Like, what the fuck are you, bitch? What? First of all, you got the worst weapon. <laughs> the little boy is stronger than your ass. But more importantly, you don't got no bonding time with them. By any means. So what the fuck, yo? Fuck, yo. Yeah, I would have no idea why she didn't toss them. And you know that's a huge lack of development because they're in the party for the entire game, though. Isn't that bad? You know Chrono from Chrono Trigger has more development like in terms of interacting with the party? And that... Oh, okay, well, he doesn't speak. He's literally an avatar. I don't mean an airbender. He's just a player avatar. You put your own personality on him. And even then, it's hard because you don't do. he doesn't do nothing. It, but he interacts with his party of... of <laughs> you can only have two other people in the party at the same time. And he does this shit more than her. <laughs> that 20-hour game. SNES RPG. No voice acting. That, that's embarrassing. SNES RPG, 95, early 95, no voice acting. 16-bit arcade graphics. 16-bit sporks action. Genesis does what Nintendo don't. But then how does Sega produce such a shitty main character in Chrono who doesn't have no fucking voicing at all or barely any personality got more interaction with his party mates than her? <laughs> I'm lighting this bitch up. Did you expect me to come in this hard? I told you to defend yourself, man. Defend, defend the, the virgin demon. I'm not saying that's how you view her, but that's what she is. Defend her. I mean, I'm openly terrible character analysis, but... Which is why I don't fully understand stuff, so yeah. Okay. Make things hard. Well, I thank you for admitting that. And even terrible is subjective. So you're probably way better than mm, shit. 90% of these dudes on Reddit who can't even type in what you typed. But even still, I'm just talking about what you're saying. Like she. I know. Okay, so yeah, she stage fright? Sure, she have stage fright. So did Lafayette set, but he interacted with her. She was like, oh, this is ridiculous. I'm walking off the stage. Now, I've not played this game since the, a, a couple days after that Velvet thing came out, which was months ago, that video. But I remember this because there is nothing to talk about with her. She doesn't do anything. I could just fucking throw darts at a board. Chances are I get bullseye every time because the whole board is a bullseye. You know what the bullseye says? She doesn't do shit. She doesn't talk to people. She doesn't interact with them. She's a sourpuss. She's a grump. She has a fetish for her brother. Score! 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 I sound like Android 17's childish ass going on a rampage in the future. Oh, 10 points! That human's 10 points! 20 points! Should I move on? Or... I'm just trolling at this point. Trying to remember uh, if the Okay, you can, if 
you want. Just go ahead and, and think of anything you want to say. Anything that shows her developing with her party, I would love to hear that. Because you can have interaction, but that doesn't necessarily cause development. Exactly. You're exactly right. Excuse me, I'm going to roll my window up. Yes, you're right. And I'm glad, I'm glad that you can state this. So you're looking for an interaction that caused change. That caused another layer of development, yes. More specifically, something else besides the office set. The, the original human lobby set. And layers of death can be big or small. Just trying to figure out stuff like this. Remember that. The layers of death can be big or small, as long as they are different. Oh, I do have the phone. Because for some reason it comes in my head uh, that she doesn't like cats because she has allergies to them. And then one of the skits is my, it's basically do you like cats or dogs? Okay. And Velvet then obviously mentions dogs, but she doesn't actually say why. She says it's because dogs would then betray you, but it's because she's allergic to cats. Not sure if that sent anything big at all. Because it has nothing to do with what we said or getting revenge. Well, I would hope that it doesn't, but either way, it's a factoid. It doesn't change her. And at some point, I don't think you got to that, um, as it's optional content. But you have a place called Cat's Corner. Is so that have... familiar or not? Cat's Corner. What happens in Cat's Corner? It's an optional area. You need to open like 36 cat boxes and you get an invitation. And it, in the essence, you can then go there. Everyone that lives there is a cat and, well, well it's allergic to all of them, but still goes. She goes in gameplay or in story? Like you take her there, or does like something actually happen? Like there's a cutscene or something? You mean a cutscene uh, as to them getting there? Some... They get teleported in there. Okay, I'm saying something where it's like, okay, I hate these cats because of how allergic I am, but I still want to come here because of X reason, and we see her conveying this in the narrative. The act of story, to remember, uh... not gameplay. Because this wasn't gameplay. I think the rest of the party talks her into going in, anyway. The rest of the party talks her into going to Cat's Corner. I don't really remember how it was. Okay, let's use that as a hypothetical. Let's say that the rest of the party talked Velvet into going into Cat's Corner. The rest of the party talks Velvet into fishing. The rest of the party talks Velvet into... Oh yeah, that does happen more often. Yeah, so, okay, but how does that change? I couldn't remember specific instances of that. But how does it, yeah, I mean, I wonder how it changes her. She's agreeing to do shit with them, but how does it change her? Even even if she did the, the menagerie or whatever, she still did that. She just left in the middle of it because she wasn't having it. She needs to change from who she is in some way. I'm not saying she has to become like a cat lover. But it has to make her personality more round than the flat shit it already is. Like her fucking chest. Which wouldn't be hard, honestly. Because her chest is very flat. I mean, seriously, look at it. You said mine is flatter? Wait, what did you, what did you say? Concept art of Magilu with big breasts. Oh, Magilu's, Magilu's chest is flatter? Yeah, sure, Magilu's chest is, is flatter, but, you know, Magilu has personality, and I value that over chest anyway. But all Velvet has is her looks, and she is a creepy-ass demon bitch. And I'm not into fucking demons. As much as I like Jerry, I'm not into fucking demons. I might crack I jokes. Who Jerry is. A black demon, but I'm not into fucking them. All I'm saying is that Velvet... First of all, I'm saying that the majority of these fans, they want to fuck her. That's it. I won't even front. They want to fuck her. They can't, so they get the porn. But they would ideally, you know they would want to fuck her until they spend an actual day with her and then they realize how dumb they are. But I was gonna say something stupid. I was gonna say something like PC. I had to say dumb instead and I sound like a little kid. Oh, they're so dumb. They wanna fuck the demon. Oh, they're so, look how dumb they are. But no, come on, that's all there is to them. And even besides, I don't care what you think about her looks, one way or another. 
The point is, you can't vouch for her character. You know, the general you, you can't vouch for her character. Otherwise, you would have been doing it, like you are. Instead, you just don't like people talking bad about her because she's a waifu, which means not your waifu, because you can't actually get to her. She's just your virtual crush. <laughs> Magilu, sir, you could like the same thing, but you know what Magilu has that Velvet doesn't? A fucking character. That's the distinguish. Is there any other way to distinguish? Yeah, I could say she has the pointy ears and shit, but if you don't like that, then fine, whatever. She's got the, the weird books around her waist. If you don't like that, fine, whatever. She's got the crooked smile. You don't like that, fine, whatever. Whatever your kink is or is not, it doesn't matter. She's got a better character than Velvet. And if you got to stay with her longer, even if you don't like the way that Magilu acts, you'll see more of, of Magilu. <laughs> you'll see the same shit. You be with Velvet, she tell you to get serious. We got to find Lappy set. Or she talked about how cool Lafayette set was the entire time. Tell me you're not breaking up with that bitch. Magilu would at least talk about how much humanity sucks and has let her down. Fuck, I'm sure many people watching this video can attest to that. Having the same feelings. Hey, we got a conversation going on. Care about that dude? Why you fucking her talking about that? That motherfucker? What do I want to hear about Lafayette set and Artorias for? Ew. Are you serious? Should I move on? You could add a bit there. Just a lost sentence though. Are you serious? That's what I stop was intentional. I'm sorry? The stop you made there in the sentence was intentional because then it didn't cut out. It just sounded like it did. I said, ew! Are you serious? Would you like me to go on? Or something to that effect. Okay, the part was intentional, so it, it sounded like it cut out, but it didn't. Oh okay, yeah. Yeah, on. yeah. Okay, then cool. If you're naturally afraid, uncomfortable with, it's naturally hard to do. Okay, you know another un afraid and uncomfortable character who develops? Uh, the bitch from Watamote. What's her name? Tomoko or something like that? Who that is? She, the show is about a nervous wreck geek nerd weeb. <laughs> Would be a neat if she weren't still in high school. Who can't interact with anybody, but guess what? She develops. Even inside her own head, at the very least, she develops shit as of right now she's or at least from where I stopped she had a circle of friends and her uncomfortable awkwardness is still getting her into some fixes but fuck she's somehow she's interacting with people she's stumbling into that I shit think this vaguely sounds familiar uh. If you search up Watamote, W-A-T-A-M-O-T-E, you look at the title of the, like the title cover of the show, and you'll get my point immediately. And that person has more development than Velvet, because guess what? She tries. She sucks, but she tries. She tries to change herself. She tries to go to restaurants and, and order food. She tries to hand a classmate back with something that they drop something. She, she tries to go out with her brother places. Who doesn't want to have nothing to do with her because she's so weird and uncool and perverted with her porn games. But she tries. If Elva could try, she could be charismatic. But she doesn't try. May I be of any further service to you? Hmm? May I be of any further service to you? You mean I'm continuing... Uh, the current point or move on? It's a, it's a Coda reference, Nice of the Old Republic reference. Guess what? There's development for the main character. <laughs> I really watched what happened on the Sith side of things, but... <laughs> oh yeah, the Sith? Yeah, they develop. Trust me. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even Malik's punk ass develops. I mean, let me not talk too much about the game. You should play it for yourself. Okay, yeah, I will eventually. Yeah, you Once I get through my current, uh... The ones that are currently I'm playing. Okay, no problem. Hope it's hope it's not this on New Game Plus. No, I'm just I'm just fucking around. I played this on New Game Plus because I cheated. If Nico did become a Malik, I doubt she would seek revenge on Velvet for what happened during the advent. I was just giving a scenario for what happened during the advent. But let me read on. The reason is Nico has likely no idea of who killed her, and if she does remember, how do you know that? But let me say, if she does remember who killed her. She also remembers that she was the one who attacked Velvet with lethal intent first. 
As in the end game cutscene, you see Velvet kill all the demons that attacked her, which was all of those present. Neat. You know what? Fine, sure. Sure. I could say something about that, but it doesn't matter. But is your point just to say that she wouldn't attack Velvet? She wouldn't have a uh Oak wanted to kill Velvet for that reason. For the was she did afterwards, I can see that happening, but not for that one. Okay, since we're just talking about made-up scenarios here, what if I postulate a scenario where the illusion Nico per se is actually Nico's spirit revived and placed through Melchior slash Artorius, because Artorius can do that, into a demon vessel. And if Nico and the other villagers who got the same conditions don't fulfill those conditions, which are to appease Velvet to the point where she never leaves a the ball, then they're going to forcibly revert them back into their demon forms in a last ditch effort to keep Velvet there and they don't get any say about that and that's the end of their lives. What would you say about that? And then Nico is like right before Velvet says fuck you, screw you, you can die. Velvet, why are you doing this to us? As she loses control over her body and is plunged into darkness, malevolence, and just the end of her. What would you say to that? That would be an absolute hell if you were to be in Nico's shoes then. Okay, but then you would also see why she is not going to... And, and even then, you could have not told Nico about what Velvet actually is. Those guys don't have to tell Nico and the others that Velvet is a Therian for them to force those guys to appease Velvet like that. They didn't. Okay, but you, we're still on the guessing game here. But you see, you see, my point is that they didn't have to. And here, and then it would make sense. And here, you're saying you doubt she would seek revenge on Velvet for what happened. And I could just flip it around and say Nico says screw that. And then when Velvet is there, she tries to slip Velvet some poison. Because now she's at risk because of Velvet. And she knows that if you say she remembers that she attacked Velvet with lethal intent first and all that stuff. Velvet doesn't care about her, only cares about Lafayette. And this is her role in life now. This is Nico's role in life. I don't even remember what I said in the actual video. I'm pretty sure I gave a much better reason in the video. The second one I did, but... I think what you said was that uh, Nico would... Uh revive as a Moloch mm -hmm. immediately afterwards mm -hmm. after the um, events of the end and this is your uh, situation of Tales of Nico and after she's then revived she would seek revenge on the Velvet for killing her and for what she's currently doing but for what she's currently doing I can see for what happens not that much she could try and be killing Velvet because of what Artur how Artorius let a ball do whatever and Velvet didn't like is, is trying to make this a solo thing where only I can get revenge on Artorius. Uh, I'll let everybody else wreck, flame up as I do this fucking subterfuge. Waste away, turn to demons, go broke, starve as I do this fucking subterfuge. Orphans. As I do this fucking subterfuge to get this guy who I'm too weak to man up against. We don't know Nico's principles fully. She could just on like GP on general principle have something against Velvet just because of how Velvet is handling this. Or hell, she could say, well you did what I said actually a few minutes ago. You knew we were all turned and you just slaughtered us without even trying to see if there was any way to, to stop anything. That's what happened in the game, is she slaughtered them all, knowing that they were turned into demons, without caring who she was killing, because she didn't give a fuck about them. Because... Yeah, no, you're talking about... Yeah, okay. Velvet, mm -hmm. doesn't she try to find a way to get, change that later on? You're talking about the silver flame and stuff like that with Lafayette, so that they can come back and be humans again and all that stuff? 
Well, we don't know if it's possible or not. We, you gotta, you never know until you try. But she didn't try here. It was pretty much established that demon flight was irreversible. Luffy said awakening was just a pure coincidence that I don't think anyone could have seen coming. But sure. Okay. Do you agree with me or, or disagree? Because the but sure is like a passive way of disagreeing. But I want to know for sure whether you agree or disagree. Who did they could have found a way? We don't. Did God tell Velvet that there was no way? Did, did the seraphs tell Velvet that there was no way? It was pretty much common knowledge in the world that there was no way at that point in did time. Somebody with the authority to say that, say there is. Yeah. It's not specific. There is actually in the lore, it has a book in the Logos Mansion, which has three incurable diseases. Demon blood is one of those. And you don't think that somewhere in history, people thought might have orally or... What's the word for that? Fuck it, who cares? In print, stated, that I don't know the fucking word. Leg legibly? Le leg whatever. That there are no curable diseases of a certain kind, some kind of disease is incurable. And now because someone actually gave a fuck, or people actually gave a fuck to try and find out anyway. People did try. Yes, and Velvet could have tried. She didn't. And second of all, I don't. if you view that as Nico acting irrational for putting that much onus on Velvet, sure, but who's to say that Nico would be acting rationally? Didn't the reincarnation of Celica fucking imprison Velvet? And knock Velvet's ass out before doing so for like three Do you fucking years. Who cares why? Because when she was revived as a Moloch, she had no memory of who, or, uh, who she was before. She was just an empty shell, like Luffy's or Fee was at the start. Okay, then. That's what happens to every reincar person who reincarnates as a Moloch. Okay, sir, then let me. There's no chance for them to snap back to who they were before. Okay. I mean, yes, unless they're told, but let me go on my goalpost tip for a bit and move it. What if Nico doesn't, because it still addresses the point. What if Nico doesn't know then and then wants to kill Velvet? With that, my point originally in that video is that that would have been a better main protagonist. All the shit I said that Velvet's doing, whether Nico remembers Velvet or not, she still sees Velvet doing that evil shit. So Nico would still be the better protagonist, in my opinion. She'd be trying to stop something wanting to stop Velvet from what she does, I can see that happening, yeah. Okay, yeah, so I, I admit you got a point, but... I'm sorry? Even without prior memory. Yes, okay, thank you. You do have a point as well, but my original point is that Nico would have been better because she already had more going for her. So, besides that, you could have Artorias tell her, or anybody else tell her. You know, any of those guys, like, really Artorias and Melky, or, but you get my point. You get what I'm saying. So, let so, me so move on. I mean, Melky pretty much made, did everything in the game. Or caused everything to happen. Who? The only thing we know he didn't cause is Celica's death. Who did what? At that point. Who, I, did, I didn't hear the first part. Who did, you said Melky caused everything? Oh yeah. Happen. Yeah, sure. Yeah, he's. A lot. Yeah, I, I I understand. He's a he's just an evil guy. That's all he is. There's nothing really. So. An ancient evil guy. An ancient evil guy. He's got all the time in the world to do it. And Maggie Lou's just a sour bitch. Who I thought there was so much more to her. I thought she was so much cooler. But I did like the way she put her heart back together. But no, she's just a. <laughs> I'm so. I don't I agree with you, Sensei. So, if, blah, 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 you said, uh, if Nico likely has no idea, you said, the first game cutscenes, you see you kill the demons, okay. Also, Taliesin, town close to a ball, was plagued by demons, but the reason they acted as if they weren't is because of the illusion Melchior placed. And specifically mentioned that the whole of Eastgan, and not just Taliesin, wasn't plagued by demons. Okay, I thought, in any case, what's his name? Artorius could have saved a ball, he didn't. Because he needed a vector point for the, the uh, what's that motherfucker? You know me not. It's a vector point because I know of one. I, I'm, I'm I sorry. I think that's what you mean. I'm sorry. Vector point as in a 
source, a culminating source where everything comes together for all that malevolence. He lets it come there. If he stops that shit at the source, kills all the demons or whatever the fuck he got, kill all the humans, who the fuck cares? If he stopped it, then we wouldn't have Nominat. He does not care one way or another, good or bad. He's gonna let that shit happen. He's not gonna kill anybody there. He's not gonna let the demons run free. He doesn't give a fuck about morals anyway. He just views it as a, just a fucking sacrifice so we can get his bigger goal on. And of course, uh, Loppy said too. Doesn't give a fuck. I know it was Loppy said's plan, but you go, hey, what are you doing, man? You, you don't gotta kill yourself. You got so much time left to spin with Velvet. Maybe one, two years left. Yeah, but you know, he's the loving older brother. He's going to make up some shit. He doesn't care, though, because he's not the loving older brother who's going to make up some shit. And yes, I know he has his reasons and all. It's such a tragic... Who the fuck cares, bro? Who cares? Who cares about him? Who cares about Celica? Who cares about any of them? None of them get any personality. Do you see how disinterested this guy was when Celica effectively turned on him? When Sarah's turned on him? He did not... He didn't give a fuck. Yeah. So why should I? Sarah's herself suicided. Let Velvet's weak ass eat her. She still fucking sucked ass. Struggling to beat Julius and shit, whatever his name is. Yeah, she beat him and all that, but she's still weaker than Eleanor at that point. Till she beats a whole bunch of other dudes. That's why she has to keep devouring shit. You would assume Ceres is so good, she can immediately, like, Velvet can immediately tangle with Artorias. Waste of her life. She didn't care about her own life. So, like, what the fuck, like... <laughs> and she didn't really have a good reason for killing herself, either. Oh, I betrayed you. Yeah, you betrayed her. I dumped you in the pit. You dumped her in the pit. You got her out the pit now. What the fuck? If you're gonna kill Artorias, kill him. Bye. You're his lover. Kill him in bed. Kill him in the shower. Kill what the fuck are you doing? Why are you what are you what are you doing, Celica? What is anybody doing? Why do I care? This is so dumb. It's so fucking dumb. I'm dude, I don't get how you can like these assholes. None of they don't have anything going for them. Sailor Lethe has like nine pages, if that. She has more personality than these guys. What was Celica before she died? She's the loving sister. Oh, she fucked Artorius. They wasn't supposed to fuck, though. He was supposed to leave. He'd go back to his duties. Oh, he's gonna settle in now. That's it? You know how many black dudes get caught up in that trap? <laughs> that is nothing. Why'd you mention that? Do you know how many Negroes get caught up with the woman that they didn't originally want to be with? And then they just got to sit at home. And she does nothing of importance or interest. And they stagnate. And they stagnate. And they stagnate. If I wanted that shit, I'd watch World Star. At least I'd get some fuckery with it. Now, I talked a lot of shit, but hopefully there's a lot of points you can counter in what I said. I'm trying to remember most of it. It's, uh... Okay, Celica has no character. Ceres has no character. Artorius has no character. Artorius and Ceres uh, leaving her... Uh -huh. in days of death or... Yes. Development or what? Both, yes. So you mean they have one layer and no more? Yes, at that point, yes. The dude was just a uh, just a soldier, basically. Came there for Celica, fucked Celica, stayed for Celica. Sad that Celica died. All about Celica. Celica's revived. Woo, Celica's revived. Celica cheats on her for Velvet. Ah, oh, you cheating on me for Velvet? Oh well. I'm still doing this for you, baby. We want a world uh, where there's no see, where there's no uh, demons could kill you, even though you're dead. Did you see the, did you see the good scene um, of Artorias' the opening? 
I'm not sure when it, when it happened. What what cutscene? When you see after the opening, you see how Ceres and Fee were created, basically. I'm not sure if it happened in a side quest or in a main quest. Like, like I said, killed by demons, he loved her before, and when she's revived you as the ma- out. You cut out there completely, the entire sentence you just said, I didn't hear it. He loves the whore, demons maul her whore ass. And after, let me stop before YouTube. Nah, no, fuck a YouTube. You keep restricting my videos anyway, even the private ones. And when the demons maul her whore ass, she tries to, comes back at his side as the Malik, doesn't even remember shit. Again. She comes back as the Malik, as Sarah, Celes or Ceres, whatever. Do, he, she doesn't remember. He remembers, whatever the fuck. He gets, goes on his quest to purify the world, no more demons because of her. She cheats on him for Velvet. He doesn't care. He's still doing the quest. It's all because of her. He was on that quest before he met Serenda. Yes, but he wasn't a fucking psychopath. He was just a, a nobody. He didn't have any character at that point. He was just a wandering... I'll kill, I'll kill demons as I find them for the Abbey or whatever. For the... Not the Abbey. For the... Whoever the organization, the exorcists. That's all, he, that's all he was. He wasn't doing shit. He didn't change from one thing to another. Just like the bitch. You know what? Sure, sure. I'll, I'll go ahead and say. I'll be objective. He didn't like her before, and then he liked her. Now he's got an extra layer. He's doing all this shit for her. Whereas before, he was just some wandering... Basically a eunuch, except he had his dick. So, okay, sure. He was just a wandering-ass nomad pseudo celibate and then he's he's obsessed with a woman okay so he's got his two layers you proved me wrong is that better than nico no is it better than eleanor no is it interesting no it's not three layers yet i know interesting is subjective but sure subjectively no are you really want to say that's interesting when everything he does with the entire game is for that bitch and he doesn't change at all after the after she dies and in game, this is months and months and months, years. He doesn't change at all. He purges his emotions. And that doesn't change? No, I'm saying after he purges his emotions, he doesn't change at all. Hey, if you like the fact that he's got two layers and that he doesn't change at all after the second one, sure, you can have that. But I prefer a little bit more of my characters. I've got higher It's hard to change you if no emotions left. The only change would be regaining them. I'm not, not sure if, if you would consider that's the a third layer if you'd actually beat in the game, but sure. Oh this shit, I did have a meeting. I'll do that meeting later. I had a, I'm sorry. So he gets stabbed. He gets stabbed and then what? Did he cry? There's a <laughs> oh, after he is stabbed. Oh Velvet. Why? No. No. No, you're right. It was it was Maggie Lou. She was the one who did it. She's the only one who could touch it. Maggie Lou! You're like my step no, student. He, he didn't bleed at all. So he doesn't have the blood of Christ in him. What happened? What? What? what can you give me the context? How does he change? What? What happens? I believe he retained some of his emotions at that point, but then again, he's already dead, or he's about to bleed out. So right before he dies, see, at the... Gonna properly describe that. Are you That's talking about when that motherfucker it. turns into Sephiroth and grows the rings in like the final fight of the game? After that. After the final fight of the game. So, okay, sure. I'll just go ahead and say, yeah, sure. Sure, he has three layers of death. We won't even verify it. So, it's like a 70-hour game. No, I'm already 70 hours in. Even though, what's his name, said I should have already been... But okay. 70 hours, just to give it up, lowballing it, 70 hours. You, At, still have, you just still have cleared it faster than me, but then again, I'm an A trophy hunter, so. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm trying to give you some credit here, because if you want to go longer, it's worse. But let's just do 70 hours, 70 hours before this dude gets a third layer, and he's been on that second layer the entire game. The first layer was just gone. 
they not operating at the same time like good characters. <laughs> he just goes on one thing the whole time, like AKA five minutes in a cutscene, if that, like really a minute and a half. When he's wandering and Selica wants to fuck him so bad. Oh, but I can't. Oh, but, oh, let me rub you now. Oh, okay, sure, baby, I'll fuck you. That's all it took. Like, she's that fucking hot. I mean, she's not ugly, but come on. And then the entire rest of the game, into like the last 10 minutes. <laughs> 69 hours and 59 minutes. 58 and a half minutes. He's on layer two of just no emotions, just shit, just with Selica. Oh, you believe me? That's okay, Sully, because it's still for you. I mean, humanity, because I got no emotions. Tch. Come on, bruh. Selica is humanity. Don't try that shit on me. You're shallow. And then the last fucking minute, me, he gets something as he's dying. I don't give a fuck. And you can say that's subjective, sure, I, that I don't give a fuck. But really? Are you going to pitch that to anybody? And they're going to eat that up unless they've already inclined to play the rest of the game? Just t tell them that dude's character. Got me chewing my tongue. T tell them that dude's character. Tell, go to Shark Tank or whatever the fuck. Tell them that you got a great idea for a character. Talk to Harry Potter. Talk to, talk to any of them guys. Go to, go to Reddit books or something, literature. Tell them that guy's character. Don't bring up anybody else except for Celica, the person who actually instigated his change, and maybe, I guess, maybe Velvet at the very last minute. Bring up just those three in those three limited contexts, and then see what they say. This is why people shit on anime for having weak-ass plots and games. Anime have weak-ass games, and they got weak, <laughs> games got weak-ass plots. And anime's got weak ass plots. Because they got weak ass plots. Let's see where I think that Wait, what's the definition of plot? Uh, the, the plot are the events of the, the the events of the story. He is he has a weak ass character. And his character drives the plot. So the story is, okay, the story's plot is convoluted and stupid, but from his perspective, because sure, that's subjective, but from his perspective, it's a weak-ass plot. He's just trying to do this shit all for Celica. So his plot is weak, and he is the main antagonist. I'm trying to remember. I heard something somewhere, but I don't know if it was plot or if it was something else. Um... His role in the story is weak. His his role in the plot is weak, and he drives the plot. Unless you get into them greater scope scope motherfuckers, the the ancient gods and the and Demions. What's the fucking name of them guys? The uh, Imperians. Imperians. <laughs> Thinking of Sailor Moon again. The Imperians and the Seraphs and the the Therian. Even the Therians don't really count. Like it doesn't. It doesn't matter. They're just background lore for the most part. They're so far above that shit, it, it does not matter. It's like when you're talking about Star Wars, you're talking about the family, like the mother, the father, the son, and shit. Like, okay, yeah, they're the strongest. Yeah, they, they created the universe and shit or whatever. Who the fuck cares? It's so far beyond this shit, it doesn't matter. I have heard of that one and of the family you're referring to, and mainly about the mother. But the mother figure who became a monster but yeah now we're going a bit off topic okay but you know what i'm saying you know what I'm saying? It, it, him when you go down to the small scale there's nothing going on it's like imagine your villain is uh episode two Django fett that's your main villain oh he's just the bounty hunter everybody's trying to stop him oh where's his next bounty gonna be He's trying to drive the world and everybody doing good now. You don't want him collecting your bounty. He's doing that for the love of his son. He doesn't want nothing to happen to his son. He's doing it for the memory of his son or whatever. Lame. <laughs> it's, it's fucking lame. Now, luckily, that's not how Star Wars is. That's just a side dude. 
Unfortunately, that's how Berseria is, because that's not a side dude. He's the main dude. Even beyond and in, in Demi Inominat. <laughs> I wish Demion was in this motherfucker. He would right velvet not ass. Face. Punch that fucking smirk off her face. Oh, I would love to see him give her. I would love to see the blood, but I'm just talking shit. Let me move on, unless you have something else to say. Said that, uh, interacting with the party. She is interacting with the party and does form a reb, as you put it. It does take her longer to open up, but that doesn't mean she's staying disconnected from everyone and does not interact with them. You can also learn things about other people by simply observing them and the way they behave, act, and react to situations. Okay, yeah, she learns things, but... How is she interacting and growing from those interactions? I didn't say she doesn't interact with the party at all. I said that her interactions, she limits them on purpose because the whole point of them is for her to get, which I think you already said, what she wants, which is loppy set one way or another, or something to do with loppy set. And so they are her tools to get to that end. Whereas if she were more general, she could have actually gone with them. You go to your, you go to your job, right? I don't have a job. It's just college. Okay, no problem. It's just an analogy. But let's do college then. You go to college. They give you like you got a group project. You got to get this shit done. You got to get all yeah, group projects, but still. Okay, sure. You got to get. You got to bear with me. You got to get the fucking project done. You got to get Artorius's ass off out of there. Okay, yeah. If you just work on a group project and talk about that and nothing else, and then you just go home and whatever. Nothing, nothing develops from that, most likely. Unless the other guys are trying to force themselves on you. But if you like Velvet, it's still probably gonna amount to nothing. But if y'all try and communicate, talk, chat, get to know each other, hang out, identify, empathize, or anything deeper than that, outside of the scope of the project, or even within the scope of the project, and not just the project itself, then you got some revs, you got some interactions going on. Um, <clears throat> You can play games with people and, and not be making a connection. If you want to say, like, by comparison, she's playing games with her party. The game is to kill Loppy Set, do whatever the fuck it takes to kill Loppy Set, including all the stupid ass side quests on Array because she's too much of a bitch ass to do it herself. Just go there and fight that dude and get fucked up and take her she ass. Right Ray later on after fucking everybody's lives up. And even then, she tried to sneak around and do it the bitch way. But they stopped her. The fuck? They put the force fields up so she had to come in. Pussy ass bitch. Trick ass hoe. You got me bent caping for this bitch. I will. F I refuse to do it, sir. I remember enough of that bullshit game to remember why I dropped it in the first place. This ain't like Ruby where this shit was just so blah, 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 blah that I can't even come up with no criticism for it. This is a game where I was forced to suffer through this bitch as the MC for like 70 hours plus. Actually, 70 hours was when I was doing the first video, the, the driving in the car shit. By the time I did that Velvet Sucks video, I was over 100 hours in the game. I was in the triple digits. And it took you way longer to get through the game than me. Yeah, and I'm still not at the part where Artorias had that whatever you said at the end. Uh, I talked to every NPC when New Dark was available and killed every enemy I could. Okay, let me, let, me, let me stop exaggerating a little bit. I did go to sleep while it was playing a couple of times. <laughs> so you can cut about 10, 20 hours from that. Yeah, sure. So you... <laughs> okay, sure. So we're back, to, we're back to 70 hours then. Okay. My point still stands. She sucks. She's not, she's not opening up to anybody. Who is she opening up to? You said it takes her longer to open up, but who does she open up to? Within my 70 hours, please. I assume that that's a decent amount of time to see this bitch change at all. Mainly Fee, obviously. Because of Loppy Set. Fee ends up becoming different from Loppy Set. Um, you at the fishing part. So it pretty much has to acknowledge that he is, well, himself and not Loppy Set. Yeah, she acknowledges that he's himself and not Loppy Set, but she doesn't develop with him after that. You know who is interacting with Fee? Eleanor. Oh, fuck. This thing is, I can barely see my face in this bitch. 
Eleanor. Eleanor is talking to Fee on her on her own accord. Despite her inclination against Molex, while she still has that inclination against Molex as inferior. She's talking to Lafayette and caring for Lafayette. As as Velvet is acknowledging that Fee is not the same as Lafayette, she's still treating him like a tool. That's a plot point that's brought up in the the fucking story multiple times, including by Fee himself. Ah, and then yeah, you're gonna be a shield for me. Keep healing me. <laughs> Come on. Oh fuck. It's fucking phone. And yes, I'll give you that she does eventually acknowledge his own agency, but that doesn't have anything to do with her developing. What's that have to do with her? Acknowledging it. That's not her character. Do you see what I'm saying? Not entirely. Okay. Because you she know, as the Luffy said, she remembers. But her personality doesn't change. She. To be honest, completely honest with you, dude, she knew she was, that he was a Malik the entire time. She was just having delusions of Lafayette the entire time. Now she's no longer having delusions of Lafayette. The shit is still about Lafayette. That could be a springboard from which she can develop more with Fee. But if all you got to say about Fee is that she doesn't view him as Lafayette, that's still the same layer. It still deals with Lafayette. Woo-wee. See, I'm undefeated, man. And it's because when I made this system, I made it while writing a damn near 300-page thesis on Sayaka Maizano, who has nine layers of development. Is that woo? Sayaka Maizano from Danganronpa. She has nine layers of development. This bitch here isn't shit compared to Sayaka. She is paltry. She is minuscule. She's nothing. I'm not talking about whether I like her or not. Of course she would body Sayaka's ass. She whoops Sayaka's ass all day and night. And then when they go to heaven, guess what happens? Velvet doesn't because she's in hell. So why the fuck would I care? I care about... Which is heaven or hell? Which is heaven or hell? Never. She's eternally stuck. It... Okay, so, sir, so she's already in hell. And she killed Sayaka and now Sayaka's in heaven. She's still stuck in hell. So she's a, a hellacious bitch. But Sayaka still has more depth than her, and that's something that whether I say it's, I like her more or not, or I think she's gonna go to heaven or not, it's true. Same with Velvet. I can't tell. I don't know the character at all. Well, let me tell you this. I can't write 300 pages on Sy on Velvet, even if I tried. I can't do it. Like, I know my hands are messed up. Even if I straight up dictated it, I could not do it. There's not enough to her. And if you don't believe me, that's fine, but I thought that would be enough ethos to state, first of all, I didn't like Saika like that because I saw the anime version of Danganronpa, which her character was basically nothing. And the second time when I played the game, okay, okay, there's some depth there, but these characters, are and then I had to play the game another time for me to actually see there's something with her. And I didn't say, oh, okay, let me explain all this depth for her. I analyzed every scene in the fucking game Literally every scene back in 2016, 2015, multiple times. I raced it over like a year and a half of that shit. Just writing that one fucking essay. And I found out more as I wrote it. I didn't have a word count. I would, no professor told me to write at least 300 pages and then it'll be peer reviewed and judged against our, our no. It's not an actual thesis, and even that, you can submit like a, a fucking sentence for a thesis. You just gotta get it proven. I wasn't trying to prove shit to nobody. I was trying to work out how to create an objective system for de developing and raying characters. Why? Not to argue with guys like you, who do know shit, or to argue with dumbass Reebs who don't know shit. Because guess what? I was also arguing with Sayaka fans. But to also argue with those Sayaka fans because they fucking stupid and they know about her character. And so that I, as a writer, can make better characters. The entire basis of my system is to be objective. 
Because if I got biases one way or another, I'm going to accidentally limit my own characters. Thinking they're already such and so, and so they don't got to be such and so extra more. Or less. Now, nobody who's got shit against me on Reddit is, is going to hear this. Because they've already tuned out. Because they're idiots. Doesn't mean I'm going to stop saying it. I could bullshit some shit. All this shit I said about Velvet... And how eloquent you hear me be like to toot my own horn for a second. You don't think I could just spin this shit around and write a crappy ass 10 minute essay for YouTube and on a new account and just rake in the views? Like, come on, Joe. You know I could do that shit. It's, it's ABCs. It's easy. But why would I give up my integrity for that bullshit? What would there be the game? I got a job. And I don't want an audience that I have to like be beholden to their fickle shit and try to please them every video with a certain number of videos or else I go broke. I'm good, so I'm gonna just keep talking my shit until I get my own website, then I don't gotta worry about these motherfuckers still reporting my videos. But as you see from now, as I'm so objective here, I haven't said anything false. Everything I've been telling you, all the shit I've been talking, I've been backing up with shit from the game. I've been backing up with comparisons from other characters from the same game, and I haven't been standing any of them Except for when I'm saying stuff that has actually been done. And then saying why it's a slant. Yeah, she's slant it towards two layers or whatever, one layer, because that's how she is in the game. And so she's worse for me because she's on the lower end of my scale. If you like two layers, sure. You could love two layers. But I bring somebody with four layers in, you could still like that, yeah, but objectively they got fewer. She is shallow compared to them. She is shallow compared to Eleanor. She is shallow compared to Nico, as we verified at the start of this. So is Artoria, so is all the mother motherfuckers. You're not going to say I'm lying, right? I am indeed not, go not going to. Okay, because that's a trick question. You can, if you got any evidence to the contrary, to say that there's other characters who got more. I'm sorry, to say there's other characters who got... First of all, I don't think anybody has fewer than Velvet. But what I meant to say is to say that Velvet has more than what I'm purporting. Yeah, I'm just not all that familiar with character and analyzing characters. And uh, maybe I could do something for that if I played the game again, which I am planning to do. I hope you enjoy I it. I just like the comment of the game. The skits are fun. It's got a couple good songs. The battle's interesting, though I really played it on auto battle because my hands are messed up. And I really like Eleanor. I like Nico while she was there. All in all, it's not good enough for me to finish. But it's not a shit game. It just has a shit main character. And if you happen to like that main character for any reason, it's all the better for you. Especially because my phone just shut off. Okay, let me turn this other phone back on. You still have other uh, recording devices going, right? Yes, the entire time I got my computer recording anyway. Let me finish this thing up. Actually, that probably won't be finished up. But uh, I do like I do want to say before I keep reading that I really do appreciate you, man. I do appreciate that you're here and that you're listening. Like, I've had guys, like I said, I've had uh, Yui Hirasawa, which I looked it up. That's a character from k -On. I'm not going to act like I don't know that name anymore. I've looked it up. Just straight up leave because I wasn't having a stupid. I've had characters who were like, Okay, I, yeah, it's a good call, man. I'll talk, talk to you uh, next call. Yeah, yeah, good call, man. But I still don't get why I'm not allowed to have opinions, but you can have opinions. And then I don't hear from them later on. Your uh, CERNs. I've had women talking to me about FF7 and shit. Oh, Tifa likes Cloud. Oh, Eris was a bitch to, to Tifa and Cloud. Oh, I like Tifa so much. And then when I shut her ass down, she's all giddy and, oh, yeah, I get what you're saying, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're so funny. And then later on in the forum, she's talking shit to me and trying to ignore me. Caddy shit. I've had interactions like that before with these lives. Hopefully you don't end up like that, but I don't get that impression because you're actually listening to me rant. You're not trying to cut me off. Not saying, like, I want you to not cut me off, but I'm like, and feel free to interrupt anytime you want to. But it just shows that you're taking in what I'm saying. Are you hearing me? I hear you now. 
Okay. I think it, my headset cut out for a bit. At least the microphone, I could still hear what you said, but it didn't have my voice come through. Okay, what were you saying? I w wanted to say something for what you mentioned at the end of that. Okay. Uh, I forgot. <laughs> That's so a continue. theme here, huh? <laughs> No, it's all good. Let's keep reading. You said that, okay, so do you contest, though, that she does, of, of course she forms a reb, but that's a very loose reb. How tightly woven is that reb? Do you believe that it's tightly woven to the point to where she's developing with these people because of these people? Maybe, but we don't see that, but from what we've seen, I would have to concede now. Okay, so let's move to the next paragraph. For starters, fee, uh, by the way, don't take that clip and put it on Reddit. They're going to thumb you down. For starters, fee, <laughs> la fee. <laughs> if I say that I agree. With me, then yes. Then you agree with me that Velvet doesn't have deep connections in any context. It doesn't matter what context. If you just say she doesn't have deep connections at all, they're going to thumb you down. So <laughs> Yeah, don't even say that, man. Not your layers of depth, uh, system. Okay, you can maybe because bring I that up. A one or an alternative, so I'm just gonna have to go with what you have. Cool. Bring bring that up if you're gonna post that, because then they say, "Oh, his system sucks." At least you I can mean, say I that. I would only post the uh, text version, although I haven't been scraping my throat and coughing much. It's it's because I had I, I'm trying to stop it, but yeah, it's uh, not as easy, sadly. As we speak right now, I'm eating these cinnamon candies, cinnamon dish. You can get a whole bag uh, here. I tried to find, I looked on the internet, uh -huh. and they are just not available in my country. Hmm. I would have to import them. If you can't find cinnamon dish, get butterscotch or at least peppermint. What I tried is, uh, I'm not sure what the English word for it is, but it's uh, a drop with honey in it to kind of... Uh, what's it called? Um, I know the Dutch word, but I don't know the English word. The for cough it. drops. Cough drops, like uh, I only know the the French word. The little cough. It has only it's to try and ease the irritation of throat. Yeah, yeah, like an actual the drop of honey. Oh, yeah, you, yeah, I know what you're saying. You're saying cough drops, like that you suck on. Yeah, you suck on and then it's meant to slowly ease the irritated area. Yes, but the butterscotch candy and because they these have sugar, which is actually better. Trust me, it's it, it's, it coats your throat as a protective layer. The cinnamon reduces swelling, but even butterscotch works and peppermint too reduces swelling. The, butter, the cinnamon is actually the best. Have swelling though, I don't really feel Oh, okay. It feels like something is there, but it doesn't feel like it's swollen. You know what I mean? If it's itching, then th these will also work. Like, if it feels like you got to keep scratching your throat with your tongue, these also work. And I know exactly what you mean, because I had to see ear, nose, and throat specialists many times, and I did have redness, and the allergies made it worse. But that's just a suggestion. Let me keep reading what you said. For starters, fee lafi lafi set. B slash Laffy slash Laffy set. It's not his true name, which is Mao Tellus. Sounds too cool for him. That is the name Eleanor, uh, the true name Eleanor gave uh, Laffy set. I don't oh. just remember the skits, but at some point you have Velvet asks what Fee's uh, true name is, and after they discovered that Bien Fu has one. Mm hmm. Yeah, it was and Brave Eleanor or something. It's, it's, yeah. It's very personal to Malaki. Yeah, I remember I that skit. To reveal that, but that is the true name which you hear at the very end of the post credit, no pre credit cutscene. Who the fuck cares about that motherfucker's name? It becomes relevant in Hysteria, but I don't think you're gonna play that one. And and what? In Vesteria? That. Hills of Zesteria. Oh, Zesteria? No, I don't give a fuck about this. And the Fee moment is a ray of Velvet acknowledging that Fee to her is now his it's, own. Hmm. We've already been over uh, this one. It's, I mentioned it earlier, but 
you already made a kind of point to this one. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to be rude. The, the reason, like, he, his name... Yeah, I knew that wasn't his name. I mean, that's not his true name because that's the shit that the shallow bitch gave to him because that's the brother's name. <laughs> so, yeah. It's dumb because my name's not Lafayette. said. Okay, fine, I'll call you Fee. Oh, yes, Fee, you little bitch. The final line is because I had no idea how your system worked. You might want to put an explanation of that somewhere on your channel so, you know, people can more easily see where you're coming from. You're talking about, I don't Let's see... What final line? What fin oh, you mean, I don't see how yeah. that... I'm sorry. system of for measuring character depth, or how you define that. Fuck those assholes. Yeah. If they don't get me by now, they did, like I said, I think maybe before we started the video, my average view time is 6 to 10 minutes. These are jerk who see the title and they get upset. And they tell me they're not going to watch the video, so fuck them. Why would I want... For those interested, that they could see... Uh, then they're going to watch for... Your system. I want intelligent people who are going to watch... We started this, like, I started the video off, like, within the first five minutes talking about the layers of death. I said it like a segue from the very intro where we were introducing ourselves. Because I haven't watched all of them. And the this from it which you... Uh, Linked, I mentioned at the top of this post from which points I've watched, mm -hmm. and the timestamp for the video you had was well past that. Okay, two things to that. One, if they're watching this video, like I said, I said that shit in the first five minutes, so if they're too stupid to do that, then that's their bad. Or if they want to time skip ahead to do that, then that's their bad. Don't watch a little clip of the video and then tell me, oh, I didn't see this explained. You want me to keep reiterating it over and over again every minute in the video? That's not how that works. Second of all, that's not to come at you, but that's just not how that works. Because second of all, I say that they don't have development, which means they're not changing. I don't got to get into the layers. I said that they don't change in this front. Of course, if Elvit changes a bit, yeah, sure, she changes, but she doesn't have another layer to her. Everything is because of Lafayette. set. I said that shit. Is that not true? You admitted it was true. I had to explain it a few times, but you admitted it was true. If they got the rationale to come to that conclusion, then they'll come to that conclusion. I said that Nico was affecting Velvet, and Velvet was on a receptive end for Nico. That is also true. But here's the thing, though. Okay, yeah, but if they want to give me head cannons and shit, they can. I'm not going to argue them, but sure, I'll use the comments. Boost me up in the algorithm. But those guys didn't even get that far. They didn't get to where you got. <laughs> they didn't see the shit. I'm at the point where if I post and tell... The dude, the dude saw the title and said, is this, the, is this like another one where you say that Velvet is worst character and Nico was best in the series? No click, not nah, thanks. The, the brains are like dribbling mucus out their fucking nostrils. I think I have to scroll. Yeah, okay, I think I found that one. That comment. What was the other one? I'm not sure. Yes, and guess how many people no, thumbed that shit up? No, guess how many people thumbed it up? A lot. What? Uh, okay, I think I'm looking at the wrong one. Okay, well, a lot of people thumbed it up. So that's how a majority of them think, at least in that thread. The shit has zero karma, uh, karma, the post. So why would I raise my hands trying to cop pleas for them? Trying to explain my case for them. When they want to rub her furry titties and have that demon arm jerk their micro dick off. <laughs> it's not going to make any difference. The only way they would listen to me is if I show them a picture of a real life velvet who's talking to me and I say, you can have this if you look at my videos. Depends. Would cosplay count as real life enough? No, they want a real life. Cosplay, of course. They want, they want to see the, the energy arm. They want to see the rocky veins, the crevice of the Therian arm. That's what they want to see. They probably want her to suck my life. <laughs> And then she starts posting herself. I don't think I could do it.
Have you have you taken sides of Rebel Velvet? You betrayed us, my Fusama. You betrayed us. Nah, Chief, I can't do that. It's it's too much work for them. <laughs> I'll do some timestamps, perhaps. The main reason I do these videos is so I have some shit to watch at work because there are no good analyses on YouTube, basically. The only guy I watch is Lore Runner. He's the only guy I watch, and I can't find enough of his shit to entertain me for an entire year, so it's me. The, the name of the channel cut out for a bit. The channel is... It's Lore Runner. L O R E. Runner? Yes. I've heard of a lore hunter, but it doesn't go. Uh, it, it's not about uh, character analysis that's break or um, figuring out what happened in certain games. He, like does, he does that. Which have lore hunter. Very hidden lore. Let's just keep it like that. I'll go and check it. The dude plays games all the way through, giving analyses of them. Rating them on the story axis and gameplay axis, positively or negatively, and then compiles all that into one ending figure called a golden number that he places on a list that is archived on his website, among other games. Then I think I have seen his analysis of Brasilia. And that shit wasn't shit compared to mine, and I can say that because I just gave him a, a selfless plug. <laughs> Because I mentioned in the video that you saw with me sitting in the car. I want to show you if you can get far. Step on the gas. Vroom, vroom. Step on the brakes. That's parappa to rapper. I said it in that video that he had a take on Velvet, which was shallow and didn't go in depth of her. And his shit is like 30 minutes talking about Brazoria. But he admits that he's not the deepest critic. And he admits that he does subjective reviews. So if you admit that, I don't got no dog against you. The thing is just, if you postulate as though you are objective, and it, like you do give the deep shits, then you don't. But he's good. He He's better than most of these other YouTubers. I'm not going to say all of them. I haven't seen all of them. But I am better than all of them. If you haven't seen all of them, you can't know that for sure. But from those you've seen, that way you can say it. Does that make sense? Okay, yes. I'm being hyperbolic, but for all intents and purposes, I'm the best. Unless you want to show me somebody else who does what I do. Have you seen anybody who does what I do? I'm not talking about quality, because that's whatever. I'm talking about going in-depth, objectively analyzing them for this many hours, and not just bullshitting the entire time, but stating facts the entire time. While not reading off a script. A poorly made script. I don't see anybody else on YouTube doing that. Because YouTube doesn't want that. I've lately just been using YouTube for music, so... Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I would not be able to give you someone that would be... Um, better. There may be somebody yes, out there... I've seen too much of YouTube. I understand. There, uh, yeah, you're making a logical point. And yes, there might be somebody out there that chances are very, very small. But there might be somebody out there. Let's look at the next thing. Oh my goodness, I saw... I saw Fee again, and I read that shit as Fi. Like the... Tch, Sailor Moon. Oh, man. Sailor Fi. You're such an asshole. Why did you do that to them? Ah. Fee. Because these motherfuckers don't know how to pronounce Greek. Fee. Okay, sure. Yeah, Fee. That's how you pronounce that. And the Fee moment is a ray of Velvet. Okay, yeah, and then uh, the next argument. Your arguments of Eleanor being stronger than Velvet are pointless because after the Yvogue ruins, I don't, I guess that's it. The ruins after the first time you enter the Earth post point from the, I, and that's another reason I'm not replaying. That's the main reason, if I'm being honest, why I'm not replaying the game. To be completely square with you, buddy, is because those dungeons are shitty and I hate having to watch walkthroughs on YouTube to get to them. It's not worth the amount of story I get after I beat them. It's just not. Yeah, base character movement is rather slow. Yeah, it's slow. The uh, puzzles are hard. Faster, but yeah, you need cheat and for that. Yeah, it's just I'm not sure. worth. Do you play on PC? I played that on PC. Yes, I yeah, I cheated in a a new game plus mode, and I played the entire game on new game plus with everything unlocked. Okay, that makes this thing 
so it'll be easier. It's, it's a bit easier. You still don't get the geo boards, and if you don't know the puzzles, it's just uh, running in circles over and over again and trying to click. Puzzles. Okay, well, I'll just say I suck at that. That's all They're I'll say. Barely qualifiable as puzzles. Okay, you're better than me, but I suck at it. So I, I sucked at Skyrim, so I can't do that. Even if I could, I'm not trying to click all of these things to match up whatever, find out the sequence, and my hands are messed up. Because if I can give a bit of an example, uh, it's from another Tales of Game, and then if you've heard of it, Tales of Symphonia. Because yeah, okay. you have a temple, and you have multiple um, boards with text, and then at the end you just get a room. And with all the information on those texts, you can unlock three exits. Two for treasure, one for the... that's you're meant to use to progress. So you need to remember everything that was uh, written on those tablets and then from there figure out how it's meant to go. That would be an actual puzzle. What are you saying? That makes sense. I see what you're, I see what you're saying, but what's your point? That in Brazil you don't really have puzzles. It's Okay, whatever you got, I lesser extent, but yeah. Okay, I can't beat the lesser extent without cheating, without looking at a walkthrough. Don't think there are, but sure, we can move on. Okay, yeah, I'm just not, I'm not good at that stuff. So if you are going to argue that Fee is holding her back, well, then I shall quote Eleanor. He, Lafayette, is resting inside of me. I know this game because I booted up the game to verify that she uses Malik arts in that fight. What fight? Oh, beats Eleanor in a one-on-one -on -one fight. She uses Malik arts in that fight. Fee did not interfere with her, but she did use some of his power because she was using Malik arts spells and flame beasts to be precise. I'm not yeah, sure. I'm not sure why they called the flame beast either, but yeah, what do you gonna say? No, I mean, you would have a point if not for gameplay story segregation. You know what? Fine. I don't know. What is... What is gameplay story segregation? Game, game play, yeah, gameplay story segregation is when you say something happens in gameplay but not in the cutscene. Really, a cutscene. In a cutscene as well. She doesn't say Malik arts in a cutscene in a fight. Oh, no, 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 Malik. Yeah, and then so you, you say... Malik arts in a cutscene now. Okay, but I get what you're saying. Um, I mean, because I used gameplay story integration too before when I was talking about them fighting inside the, the priest temple. If if she uses Malak arts in the fight, but you're assuming she's using Mlafi set for that. How else would they do that? Maybe it's they resi can't use spells on their own. Maybe it's without a Malak. Maybe Just look at um Magli, Magli knows a lot of spells. But she couldn't use any of them before she could cut the entry back. Why wouldn't she use those? She could have gotten herself out of titania that way, why wouldn't she do that? You don't think that Magilu is busting out of Titania without the the B Infu's help, really? You think she's stuck in that low ass dungeon, that low level ass noob dungeon? <laughs> She was Why bored. She, she didn't give a fuck. She was broken. Velvet, Velvet got out on her own power. Basically, I mean, she, all she had to do was just jump out the Therian thing with Severus' help, but that's like an extra thing that they put in just for her. But once she was in the, the cell block, she got out with her own power and tried to take off Magilu's head. Magilu noped the shit out of her. She didn't care. Maggie Lou would smack Velvet without any spells. She got the drop on Velvet t twice. But Eleanor, I mean, it could be residual. It could be like that. It could be anything, really. It could be anything from residual to Melchior's doing it to like any anything. Just because we don't, what you're doing. Oh, fuck. I don't feel like saying it again. But you don't have any proof. That's what I was saying. Forget saying the reasoning. Because you don't have any proof. You don't have any proof one way or another. All we know is what Velvet says, which is that she's not using Fee. And then Eleanor doesn't say, well, I didn't let Fee take me over, which wouldn't matter because when Fee took her over, guess what? He had to let go as soon as Rokoro was about to attack her because Fee sucks at fighting like that.
He can't fight close quarters like that. But she didn't say that. He, he didn't take me over or anything. She was like, yeah, so what? A deal is a deal. I'll join you. And then tried to kill herself until I die. And then feet took her over. So he did interfere in the fight, right? The fight was over. She tried to kill herself after Velvet beat her. But what I'm saying is that he was not to... If... If he is using... If he is giving Eleanor power to fight with Velvet, why would Velvet say that she's not using Fee? The way I, uh, which I explain, uh, explain it later, from the way I understand it, using a Moloch means they appear next to you on the field of battle, so that you're now fighting side by side. That's how I see them, are they referred to as using the Malachim to fight by your side and you giving mm. them orders. That's how I understood it from the game. Okay, I can get what you're saying. I mean, I, at the end of the day, it's it's just, specu first of all, I would need to see the scene, but it seems like speculation. Because, it, because I mean, I don't really get your point because you're saying that she's using Malik Arts so wouldn't that be the same thing to Velvet anyway? As he's stepping outside of her? It doesn't add up. The way I've understood it is when the Moloch is resting inside of you, you have access to their... Well, mana, because I don't know what else they call what's called. Them. Yes, mana. You have access to that mana and can now use it to cast spells yourself. Yes, and that's because using P. I'm not sure if it's, if it's a valid thing with the term you just mentioned which I kind of forgot uh, because if I looked at the attack list from Eleanor let me search this up uh -huh. in the two battles prior to this and in this battle and if she could use mala cards why is there no attack for her in the attack list during those prior fights that means she for some reason didn't have access to the mana even though she had mala game Wait, I didn't hear if she used if she did what? If she could use the mana to cast spells in the two prior encounters when she had the mana game by her side, why is there no attack for her that is a mana card in those battles? Because you can check an opponent's attack list, and I compared it with her um, artist, and there is no. Uh, there's a single Moloch art in there, but if she could use Moloch arts in those fights, why didn't she? What is the list? Like Where did you... not to. Where's the... What list are you looking at? Uh, I can send you the image. Just give me a sec while I try and find it again. Okay. It's an image I made myself to more easily be able to compare which arts were where in the list. Uh, this one. Because... She has a arts list. Every card has a arts list for attacks they can use. Uh, and can you see the image? Let's see. Oh, I'm so fucking tired. What the fuck? It's a bit of a mess with seeing which attacks are where. Which of her, if are her attacks that she uses? Um, hidden arts. Malak arts, and there's only one Malak arts in those three lists. It's fucking light on. Oh, it's shit. a mess. But yeah. Hmm? Oh gosh, what am I? I'm so tired. Elogers Villa, Port Zexon. Okay, that's when they're bombing the boats. Elogers. That's when um. That's the priest. That priest assassination. Port Zexon was burning down the warehouse. The supply. Okay, so then which one was the? Oh, that's Port. Okay, wait, wait, wait. wait. Uh, the ravine is the one I'm referring to now. Okay, the ravine is when they fight in Lafayette. Sets not there supposedly. The Logos Villa is uh, the priest, and then Port Jackson is the boats. Okay, uh, so the relevant ones are the priests. She has um, in the fight what with is the this? priest. She had two uh, Malakim as backup, and I think after Cutscene and Magilu joined, there was two. I have some exorcists and two Malakim as backup. 
Okay, I have some questions, but first, what I still can't tell what I'm is the first is this from the game? Yes. Okay, so I don't remember a menu like this. It show oh oh you must have taken a picture of her enemy of her enemy uh yes, menu. Yes, the enemy uh, in the enemy list. I'm both in battle. Uh, I'm, since you played in auto mode, you probably forgot about it. But you can hold a button, which will show for the current enemy its status, its um, weaknesses and strengths for element. And what type it is, and how much HP it has at most, and how much saying. HP it has at current. From that, you can press another button and have that more in a in a list of every enemy currently in battle, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then you see the character stat, the enemy stats, just the numbers, raw numbers themselves. And there is a second page you can go to. And if you go to the second page, it has a list of all the attacks the enemy can do and what effects those has. So you're saying because she has a flame spell in the ravine. She has and... a Moloch art in the ravine. Means she now started using Moloch arts. But why wouldn't she do those prior if she had the mana to do them already? Are you saying she's starting to use them or can use them? She now can use them. Okay. That's my interpretation at least. I... Here's the thing. I can see what you're saying, but they're... Are raised to counter this. The first is, does this menu indicate that these are what she can use or what she is using? Those are all the possible moves in if she can use in that battle. That's a loaded question because, oh, fuck, she was tethered to those Malakim regardless. So, for one, maybe those Malakim didn't have Malakarks. Maybe they did, maybe she didn't want to use any Malakarks. We me? don't know. Yes, I hear you. Uh, no, I mean with her. Oh, 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 I said, okay, maybe they didn't have Moloch arts for her. Maybe she didn't want to use Moloch arts for her. No, what I'm, I'm saying is, yes, I'm saying with her. Maybe the tethering isn't strong enough. Maybe because these are the replacement Malakim that, that, uh, wait, port is actually. for crying out loud. Nah, you don't fire BN food, but I, I was, but you don't fight with. We used to be able to release all her. But you don't. Full power at but you don't fight with the info. The only thing we can say is the last. Uh huh. The uh, info is in combat with Magalu. The info is always resting inside Magalu. So that's why I see but, that she can. You, when a Malakim that isn't strong enough is resting inside of you, then you have access to their mana. So are you? Are, the way I see it. Okay, so by what your logic, you're telling me that Bienfu doesn't have enough mana? Magilu's no, mana? You said he was resting inside of her. You're saying she do, that he doesn't give her enough mana to use Malak arts because in the port I don't see any Malak arts, but you're saying that Lafi set, who's just knocked the fuck out and just made a tethering with her and she can barely hold it and she passes out as soon as the fight is over, is able to give her the flame Malak arts? The way I see it, and that's probably because he is a part of Inominat, and Inominat is an Empyrean with way too much mana. Wait, because because they're, he's a part of Inominat? And, but how does that mean that she can't have any... You made it sound like she's useless, like if it's not for the strongest Malak there. <laughs> I'm not saying she's useless. But so, I'm saying she can't use mana without a Malak resting inside her. Okay, but she's a Praetor. She's like the second strongest class of exorcists. You're saying she can't use, and, and her weak-ass lackey exorcist can use mana, but she can't, and she's not Shigure, even though even he chooses not to. He can, but you're saying that she... Is that the name of the dude? Yes, yeah, the name of the dude who's beating up on Rokuro. You're saying she can't use that shit unless the strongest Ma Malik, basically in the story, is in the nexus the very center focal point for all the energy that he can get by being connected to the the villain who gets even more energy from being connected to the the center of all the you're saying that's the only way she can use that flame spell no that's what you just said you I not. i'm saying that during those previous battles that she can't use and the reason she can use it is because uh 
Luffy said is resting inside her, so she has access to the mana. Okay, so why can't she? Battles, if one of the mana came she had kept resting inside her, the way I see it, she could have used spells. But Bienfu was resting aren't. inside her. Bienfu was resting inside of her. Those other Malakin, when she summons them, she's still tethered to them. If she wasn't still tethered to them, then they wouldn't be following her orders and attacking you guys. I forgot that part. Thank you for reminding me. Oh, no problem. But all I'm saying is that we... Huh? I completely forgot that she had been inside the entire time. Oh yeah, you said that. So, That's true, what you said. Theory at the window. I, yeah, I forgot a detail. Sorry. Okay, sure. So yeah, Bienfu is strong as shit. You're not as strong as Lafayette said, of course, but you could give her a fucking flame spell. So what you're saying is good because it goes against what I said, which is that she, in that fight that she brought up in the villa, Protecting the priests. I'm seeing like double vision. Fuck. She had the uh the she had the I'm just gonna think of my word. I gotta see the words in my head as I say them out loud. She had the Malik, so the two Maliks. And she was tethered to them, of course. And she was fighting against Velvet with them. And then she lost them and then she held off against Velvet still without any Maliks. That's what I said, and that's using gameplay story integration, sure. The difference is, is that when she loses the Maliks, the guys who come in, they got their own two Maliks. There's two guys who come in, so it's not just straight up gameplay I'm using. I'm using gameplay story integration. They're both servicing to complement each other. There's two, after you beat her two Malikin, there's two more Malikin who run in there. Or they're, they're already there, but there's two exorcists who come there. You can't get more Malakine, is what I said in the subtitles in that video, which is why I'm glad I put subtitles in that shit. You can't get more Malakine unless you're giving them. In this uh -oh. case, Bar Artori. It's, in its, entirety? it's not true in its entirety. It's but, so. You're okay, sure, but you. She. Was her tethering with Lafayette set even complete? Yes. Okay, sure, it was complete. Uh, so you... from Luffy's head was now fading, and... Okay, sure. I, that, I... It's never really confirmed, because you don't know when the tethering is complete. From, what I, from my understanding, it's complete the moment the spell is completed. Okay, no problem. What I'm saying is that the b b bitch... The question, nobody can really tell that. The bitch passed out. But sure, you can say, well, Lafayette says it's just that strong. Okay, fine. Any other time she wants Somali, she asks for Artorius. Are you to, saying uh, she went... Specific to Eleanor. Huh? Uh, because she's not going to play it, but in Tidal's Hysteria, you play as a shepherd in that area. As it takes place a thousand years after Brasilia. And the main protagonist is a shepherd there. And he also does pass out. But before he passes out... He has a window of time at which he can fight at full power, or at least that's what it looks like. Okay, sure. I mean, that, passes out. is that canonically related to Berseria? Yes. Okay. There is lore connections between the two. Lore um, connections doesn't mean canonically example, related. Okay, fine. There, no, I believe you. Guy says, I want to make a town with a giant battle center. Go to Zestiria, one of the towns is that town with a giant bell in the center. Giant bell tower in the center. Okay, it could be an alternate universe. I don't, I'll believe you, that's fine, I'll believe you. Maybe it's not the mirror world. I'll, be, I'll believe you, that wasn't my point. Let me tell before I forget what it was. My point is that the other time she, is that the game where he starts off like being broken shit and then he's screwing around in the prison rescuing the, the one girl? I don't care. Is that the game? I don't care. Why do I ask? The, the, no. Okay, good. I don't care. The um, <laughs> I think that was Zestria or whatever, or is that the one you? I don't fucking don't care about them games. I'm done with Tails. I'm done with Tails and Sonic. She got them two, Malakin. She loses those two Malakin. You're saying she's got two more tethered. She said you're saying that she didn't have those two from the start to use four against the party. Okay, sir. She's just just holding back on us for that reason. Okay. She had the two. She wasn't shown. She wasn't. You fight against her. You, you, she she summons two Malakin. Then you beat the Malakin. 
and they're shown dying in gameplay because Velvet doesn't care. And then after that, Aizen 2, I guess, uh, yeah, whatever. It's the character development for you, the lack of it. That dude's a Malik, but it doesn't care. Oh, can you tell there are people like this? Let me keep on before I lose my original point. And then you go and see the next cutscene, which is two Maliks are just standing beside her as exorcists, two exorcists running. Lady Eleanor, we'll help you. And then Maki Lu's in the back somewhere fucking around. Two other exorcists, Lady Eleanor, we'll help you. And they summon two Maliks, one each. It fits, but it fits most of all because one, why would she not use all four at the start? Two, why don't we see the tether going on like she does at the start of the fight with those other two that come afterwards? Why do we only see that with the first two? Three, she is not the type to just kidnap Molix and force a tether on him. And four, even if she were, we only see her going to Artorias and begging her for extra Molix. Like she failed in the port or whatever, the, uh, back in the warehouse. And then, can I get two more Molex? They, it was Velvet, Lord. Artorius. I can just give that, just call that dude Lord. And so you see that it contradicts itself to say that she, now you're saying the, the. do you want to argue that before I talk about the, the flame stuff? No, I just, uh, it's arguing that she had four Molekim in that fight or two, or in total, or. If she had or, four, but, but, uh, if she had four, then the game breaks its own continuity by somehow having the Malakine just appear there and her not summoning them. It also makes her stupid by not summoning all four in the first place. And it also means that two random exorcists just ran ran in there unarmed, basically. With no Malakine. I mean, it wouldn't make sense to not use all four at the start. It would. Yeah, it's been too long since I played that part of the game. There are only two. Uh, what did you say? There are only two. That's what the subtitle said. There are only two when you fight her. Okay. <clears throat> the presumption is that she does not have the capacity for four. Or Artorius is not going to give her four because she doesn't deserve four. Or one way or another, he doesn't think she has the capacity or she doesn't deserve it. I mean, she, Loppy set, not even realized Loppy set. And Rika shit at that moment used all his power and everything to, to save everybody and whatever. And used all that power on Velvet. Heal me! Heal me more! 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 Velvet! Velvet! Stop, please, Velvet! And then she's knocked out from that. <laughs> like within minutes. And she's just a fresh ass Eleanor, too. She just ran up in there. Got sucked into the portal, tethered with Loppy set, and then a couple minutes later, fart velvet, and then she's just sleeping like a baby. So I presume she's just weak like that. Not weak to the point to where she can't use any mana, though. But I can explain that. I'm just presuming that she can't, She has, like, an upper limit. Like, she can't just take on Loppy set and take on four Malakim at the same time and shit like that. She can't just all that in her. But then again... Who really can on her level? Does Julius do that? I don't. I don't know. Does Julie or whatever his name is? Does Teresa do that? Teresa has two, but I don't think she ever gets more. Yeah, she only has those two. One is a, a very limited bloppy set, who is like weak as fuck, and the other is somebody of no consequence. That one of no consequence was something they had to set up for Sisteria, but that's beside the point. Okay, yeah, yeah, you get the point. The point is that it's just two of them, and they're both weak. It's not like two elite, mo like, it's not like she's tethering eyes and, and then in-game Loppy set. <laughs> she's tethering two fucking mooks, basically. And she's at the top, and they trying to make it sound like she's stronger than Eleanor, even though that's a fucking lie. And they make it sound uh, like, I don't remember, they make it sound like that because of Frank or something else. Eleanor says it. Oh. She's like, they always beat me in practice. I could never match his sword skill. I could never match her in casting and, and all that shit. Like, come on, Varad, you, you lying. And if you're not lying, it doesn't matter at this point. You're better than him. <laughs> With or without fee. But you see, like, that's what I'm saying about the Malik stuff, about the tethering. So that leads, because we don't have any basis for knowing 
how she did or did not have any spells, that leaves everything else open-ended. She could have decided not to use spells. The meta rise, the developers could have overlooked that or, or said she didn't deserve that, or they could have been wanting to set up a certain ray. Maybe you want to... You want to, uh... If I had her up close oh, early on. I already conceded the point because I forgot to be for when someone was fight, so. Oh. Okay, I'll. the point of uh, the Malaki part. That was something I thought I had properly remembered, but I forgot to be in for both of those, meaning she could have used spells. Okay, no but problem. She just chose not to. Thank you, then. Yeah, so, she, yeah, she has fire. I bet you, you said, why didn't she put she, out the fire? Uh, she has fire, so she can't really put out the fire. Fight. Didn't she have three Malaki? In what fight? Do she summon MBN Fu? Or did he get taken away almost immediately? I don't know who she has or doesn't have, but all I know is that <laughs> she... I mean, yeah, she has BN Fu inside her, but we don't really know the technic, the specifics of how that works. Like... What's an analogy to make? Hmm? You're. I'm trying to think of an analogy to make. You're holding two water bottles, right? In your hands versus... You drank some water. It's going to be easier to carry the water, you know, figuratively speaking, not talking about pissing or anything. It's going to be easier to carry the water that you drank, that you drunk, sorry, than the water that you're holding. So she can just hold Bienfu. Or maybe it doesn't work that way. We don't know. All, all I know is that we don't see all that other stuff I was talking about with those other two. The, the two exorcists, that would be unexplained why they just ran in there without any support. Why Eleanor just let the let those two just stay there? If you're saying that it, those two Malik that I said are staying there, if you're saying those two Malikim that are just staying there were her original summons, where the fuck did they come from? They weren't summoned there. If you're saying those are the same ones as before, then oh, shit! What the fuck happened to my camera? I'm sorry. You said the two were there. You mean the two that she summons at the this... Beginning of the battle or, or part way through the battle? Uh. Am I misremembering something here? Fuck, this computer just literally froze up. I think it had a heat stroke. I was saying the ones who were at the start of the battle, the ones she was shown summoning. If those are. Sorry, do a pause real quick. Pausing that so I can save the phone footage in case that overheats. So I have still some footage. If those are the original Malekin. If those two that she summons, er, er, oh, here I am with my circular logic. If those two Malakin that we see afterwards in the cutscene are the same ones that we saw her summon in the first cutscene into the fight that you fight against and that are shown dying, one, why were they shown dying? And two, why were. It's been a simple oversight because they have made a pretty big oversight with three. Because just, right just, after you just, acquire just, him, if you look at. The name of his outfit, it says Lofi Set. You don't, he hasn't even been given the name yet, but it's still shown as that. The name of his outfit? Uh, you know that you can change the character's outfit, right? Yeah. And if you look at, every outfit has a specific name. Okay. For who the character and for what the outfit is. If, when you just acquire, uh, when Vela just takes free and he becomes a part of your party, if you look at what this outfit says, it says Luffy set. Okay. But it should have been Mollet number two, so they have made a few oversights. That's not a, I mean, you can say it's an, you can say it's an oversight, then sure, that's fine, I mean. There's no proof of that either way, but what matters is that that's just the name of his, I thought you meant that that's literally, like the words Luffy set are on the outfit. <laughs> I was like, wait, wait a second, that's, that's too coincidental. That's, that's but for, as for me, I didn't know that was going to happen, so uh, I looked at them and was like, what the fuck is going on here? Oh. I see something, I spoiled myself by accident by looking at it. Okay, so, why isn't this shit turning on? It's, um, I guess it's up to interpretation, but at the end of the day, it's different than seeing it in a cutscene, right? Because when you see it in a cutscene that it's some way, then, first of all, that's the direct story, right? That's not what the developers are literally typing. Unless the developers are typing lore, like, this outfit came from Lafayette Set, or something like that. Like, this outfit is Lafayette Set's original outfit, Velvet uh, Jungle Brother. Then you can say, okay, well, there's the lore connection to the story. Otherwise, it's just matter how the outfits are being described, right? But, I like, how they're being titled. 
But besides that, the stuff that shows up in the cutscenes for Eleanor is... I think my computer literally just died. You said next. So you want to you wanna drop the uh, Flame Beast Malak Arc's point? You want to move on from that? Yeah. Okay. There is a part which is not substantially evidence, but you say it felt that Eleanor has more Dumbass, years of fighting under her belt. Well, or training. How and many years? That may or may not be true. Because uh, Velvet could have had between the advent and the opening, at some point she was trained personally by Artorias. That stayed in the game, we don't know how long. Eleanor has trained with the Abbey, which has existed for three years, so take this for you will. Okay, sure. So you're right about that. Velvet has had more training than Eleanor. But I also said, though you're right. I also said that even if she didn't, there's something she could stand to learn from Eleanor. My main... I'm not going to agree with that. You're not going to agree or disagree? I didn't hear you. I disagree with that. She okay. could have uh, learned things from Eleanor, even if it was just how the fire spirit use her. Okay. Yes. I, I believe that Eleanor would beat Velvet because when Velvet was going all out, well, besides the fact that she has Fee now, or... Well, as far as I'm at, she had Fee. Assuming Fee would fight with her. But even when she had nobody, no Malik's at all, she still had our Velvet with her full power. So that's why I think Eleanor would beat Velvet. If they fought one-on-one. -on -one. The fact, usually when you show a boss fight, usually, unless it's a joke boss, but odds are when you have a boss fight and you're fighting them as a team, the implication is that one-on-one, -on -one, that person would beat you individually. There might be... Yeah, that's the implication. I mean, there's nothing to contradict this. All we see instead is Eleanor being better than them one-on-one. -on -one. She's better than Rokuro. She's better than, uh, or, yeah, I'd say better than Velvet, because Velvet is all roided up, all max power, and she's still just, nah, you ain't killing me today. She's max power in that one-on-one -on -one fight, though. I mean, she has power that El Eleanor doesn't have. Eleanor just used skill. And Velvet is bringing out the arm. I'm going to end this in one strike. Uh, no. And obviously, she's stronger than Eisenhower. That doesn't really need any explaining. Eisen's probably the weakest one there. He is at least the oldest one. With knowledge, which always helps. Yeah, he's got knowledge. But El even when Eleanor is, like, clowning him, he's trying to sound smart, and she's just, nah. Actually, it's this. I mean, the dude is a thousand years old for crying out loud. So I gotta do some research. Never mind. Forget what I said. I mean, yeah, he he definitely knows stuff that she doesn't know, but like... <laughs> he Sometimes wasn't... modern technology or books and newer knowledge is better. Most of the time it is, but yeah. Yeah, like the dude wasn't really doing anything until he joined the pirate gang. He was just there. Uh, As... Before he joined the pirate gang, I think he was trying to find a way to stop his curse. Couldn't find on the mainland and tried to go out. Okay, sure. Maybe that involved some some doing things. I'm just like, I'm just saying, like, I don't hear anything specific that he's doing. But, you know, maybe that could involve him going going ahead and trying to do anything to find the curse. Like, research stuff, experiment around, talk to different people, gain connections, sure. But let's... It's a good story which you didn't play. Okay, then fine. All I know is that in the game, when they communicate directly, Eleanor is bitching him. You said Malik Arts. Malik Arts is going to be useless if you have a Malik. Magi Lu being useless in combat until she got people. I still contest that Magi Lu would beat everybody's ass even before Bienfu. And you can only tell if they are resting. And so you saw how easily Magi Lu got behind Velvet. When Velvet twice in the prison. And in the same breath, Velvet is sparring, like, just a straight-up boss fight. Even fight. Clash and locking swords against Rokuro. We already know Velvet's stronger than Rokuro. Mangilu would bitch both of them. I mean, she does pop it in out whenever she pleases. Not sure how. But, yeah. Yeah, she does it more than once. Now, here's a question for you. Does those guardians, those guardians that she uses, does he need be info for that? No. Okay, so I yeah. Don't I, don't, I don't think so it's either. It's never explained how they work, to be honest. She might need them, she might not need them. I have no idea. She's a sorcerer. 
And I infer that means she can do magic to some extent without Bienfu. I believe that was stated somewhere, but I don't remember. And in all honesty, we see Melchior doing it without any Malik's tether. Now maybe he does have a Malik tether somewhere. Who knows? But I don't I don't see him doing it with any Malik's there. No, you know what? Fuck that. They were practicing magic before the tether and Malik's became a thing. So fuck that. Yeah, she beat their asses. So the next sentence... They forgot... Yeah, they were doing that shit for centuries. The reason I think this is because of two fights with Eleanor where she uses her Malik. They appear side by side with her. Yeah, it's just, I already explained this. You can move on a bit. Okay, whether Eleanor has more training than Velvet is debatable as Velvet could have at most seven years of training with Artorias himself. Okay, yeah, so you got that. Yeah, Eleanor, well. yeah, Eleanor would have his at most three. Though, then again, like you said, it's debatable because we don't know how much. You know, that Velvet was the type to... Time she has trained... With Artorias, could have been more, could have been less. We could have been know. more, could have been less. But Velvet fucks around and Eleanor doesn't. It's there. It's not a fact that uh, Eleanor would have had more. We just don't know. Let me be, let me be that guy, and say this: Do we see <laughs> the computer just won't shut on? Okay, it probably is just too hot. It's too hot, too hot, too hot today, too hot. Gotta close this laptop. Put it in my case. Too hot today. Too hot. Oh. Don't sing after puberty. It just won't work out. Why is that guy, uh, I, Eleanor Eisen, what's his fucking name? Rokuro inquiring about Eleanor's talents, but doesn't really about Velvet. You knew I was going to say something actually interesting. You knew I was going to say some real shit. Why doesn't he ask about Velvet like he asked about Eleanor? I would presume because he cannot uh, use the demonic, he, d he doesn't have a demonic like ability, so he can't use that. Well, not just demonic hands, I don't remember. But she Why uses that? a sword though, you don't want to know about the sword skill? It's not like he uses the exact same type of sword as her. Where did you get so good with that wrist blade? I wouldn't know why he doesn't. Yeah, I'm just telling you, this is my train of, of logic. I saw people being impressed with Eleanor, and it was stated more that Eleanor was a technical master than Velvet, who was more brute forcing with her demon powers. Especially because she had three years to just forget all that shit. She had three years to only use the demon claw because, well, yes, this was effective at that point. Yeah. And fighting the demons. Yeah, she, she has no sword. Right? She doesn't even have... Don't you have to get her sword? You have to get her. That's what Sarah says. Sarah's like, let's find your weapons. Let's find your whatever. Let's find you some clothes. She doesn't have shit. But that creepy ass arms that the the, uh, the nerds love. They love those arms. Oh yeah, arm, arm. Let me stop. And then after that... <laughs> she's using the sword. Yes, but we don't like it's gameplay, so we don't know how good like she yeah, she's still using the moves she was using before, but come on now. She wasn't training for 3 years. And uh, I think it's stated in the game somewhere that Artorias just trained under Artorias, but she didn't really stick with his style at all. As she used as as you can see in gameplay, she uses much more uh kicks and stuff like that than actual swordplay. Okay, I get what you're saying. Eleanor fights more like Artorias, more composed and all that stuff, and that's why she's better than Velvet without any help. And more with her actual weapon. Yes, and with her actual weapon. Velvet is more fighting with her body, more brawler than all, sword fighter. Yes, crazy. So, here's a question for you. Are you telling me that El, uh, Velvet... The point is that she still didn't train for three years. But are you telling me that Velvet... And again, like you said, it's debatable. We don't know how much was gained or lost for either of them. Well, for Velvet and and, law, and gained for Eleanor. But are you telling me that Eleanor... Uh, just honest opinion. It's not a loaded question. Are you telling me that Eleanor, when we first meet her, without any Moloks, would lose to Velvet at the start of the game? I would say she would not lose because, well, Velvet needs to acquire more power with the Varan Demons. So what you're saying is that just skill on skill. At the start, uh, there, the first encounter, yes, she would have been developed. 
Okay, so you're just playing devil's advocate then. I expected you to say that she would lose to Velvet. Or that we don't know, but you said that she would beat we Velvet. Know, obviously. But it would make sense because Velvet acquires power throughout the journey by defeating uh, Devouring Demons. Yeah, but you're saying she can't be stronger than Eleanor with, what, even five, four years of experience or whatever you want to say? I don't know how many years, seven, I guess it was, who knows, more than Eleanor, right? She couldn't beat Eleanor? I honestly don't know anymore. Okay. Brain hurts. <laughs> I'm just... I'm just asking. It's quite early in the morning. Oh well. <laughs> Let me go on before it gets too long. I mean, I did say until five. I could. Yeah, I'll be. I'm used to playing games that long. I'm not used to talking for our land. <laughs> I don't keep talking for that, that much, but still. <laughs> you should have seen my videos. I could. I did a fucking nine hour long video. After she gets out. No, no, no. Let me not skip. Seven years uh, of training. Why do you include the one example that proves you wrong? That's the, I mean, uh... That's how I see it. They death what you will. The one example that proves me wrong? That one, that one, like, why did in your video, I didn't hear you mention that one-on-one -on -one fight. Why? I did mention it. You're talking about when she fought against Velvet without using Laffy set. I don't remember that. That's... Well, I guess I didn't probably hear it then. Okay. My apologies. Oh, no problem. At least in one of them. But we already talked about that. I mean, if nothing else, the, the shit showing them as equal is so she could learn something. As for Velvet not having character development or death tells me you didn't play the game or different one than I played. What do you want to say about this? I don't, didn't know your system of death, uh, how you would quantify that. So... Take everything here with a grain of salt. Okay, it's not, all I would say is the same thing I've been saying the whole time that I would say to those other guys. I'll say it in the video what I'm saying. She doesn't change compared to her peers, and she doesn't use those opportunities to change. I think I said verbatim that she changes, but on multiple fronts, she doesn't. Because she blockades herself, barricades herself. She doesn't try. If if you got a character like uh, I'm trying to think of someone who's not a spoiler or someone who does. Let me go. Uh, okay. Um, back to Sailor Moon. I'm talking about Lethe. Uh, what's her name? Nemazine, Lethe's sister. She develops. She gets killed in like two seconds. But could she have developed more? Sure. She got got more development, but she got fucking murdered. That's different than Velvet. There's somebody in my uh. Okay, Valkyria Chronicles. There's. Girls who got their emotions suppressed and whatever. They're being mind controlled. Okay, so they don't got as much development. They don't got as many layers as development. Well, okay. There, there's a reason for it. They're being mind controlled. What's Velvet's excuse? Like, what's what's Velvet's case? What's in her wallet? But like you said, that's belaboring the point. I had and, to guess isolation and depression. Oh, yeah. So some edgy shit that she goes through. Like I said, she's an edgy bitch. And she chooses it for herself. as her own doing. In the beginning, she is. <laughs> and the nerds eat that shit up. They love it, man. Oh, this reminds me of the... Okay, I'm not going to say that's too offensive. In the beginning, she is her happy-go-lucky self until the advent after which she gets imprisoned. <laughs> so I want to say that. <laughs> and forced to fight and feed on demons for three years straight. But she's still an evil bitch. She's still slaughtering for fun. Yeah, it's for the brother and all that, but she doesn't care about who she's hurting. The way I saw change as is now she was happy go lucky before and now she is fuck everything. I mean yeah, but that's about Lafayette. set. Yeah, but I didn't understand that Okay, sir. That at that point. No problem. I needed the explanation in this life before I even knew what it was or understood it. Because here's the... But, let me tell you exactly why I'm saying this, though. Do I know you'll be like, you already have, but let me just just hammer this point in. Nico's the same way. She was happy. Now she's going through some sadness. Even though it's for two fronts instead of one. But she was happy, and now she's going through some sadness. She's probably going to be find some happier days when she marries the husband, though. Still, maybe more sadness with the parents.
Or maybe they'll make up again some like down the line. But people go through mood changes. The moods themselves aren't your... Not a mood change, but yeah. It's a... Okay. Yes. It's not just an emotion. But it is her perpetual mood. How about that? That itself doesn't lend to a personality shift. Why? Because case in point, it's about Lafayette the whole time. I didn't have to tell you that for you to know it. If you if you really thought about it, you would understand that. What, what's this one dude say? Uh, Suzaku from Yu Show. You humans are so simple. You like a woman, you're happy, and then you take it away. You get mad. It's all she is. You, you like something? Happy, take it away, you're mad. Everybody goes through this. But what comes out of this? You're mad and then what? You might not be mad. Somebody close to you might die and you might not grieve at all. But then what? What do you do because of that? What do you think because of that? Not what emotions do you feel. But how do they change your operating in the world? Or interpersonally, uh, intrapersonally, excuse me, within yourself. With her, it doesn't. She's doing the same shit. Doesn't give a fuck about anyone and will use anyone and anything to achieve her goal. For being honest, that's how she felt towards Lafayette said at the start. She didn't give a fuck about him. Her goal was to do what she wanted to do with him. Just to keep him in bed until she deems fit. She didn't care what the motherfucker wanted. Then she escaped Titania and meets Rokuro, Magilu, B, not Phi, and Aizen. They travel together, but you see you're summarizing at this point. Where's my towel? Yeah, I am summarizing okay. for part of this. You know I can summarize of Nico too, though. And also, I do mention something in here which you probably haven't seen. Okay, let me get to that then. That is, um, when she kills Artorias. Do you know what she does? Uh, let me... She finally achieves her goal. Uh, hopefully she kills herself. Let me see what the fuck happened. They travel together and Velvet slowly starts opening the... Wrong then. Huh? She does not kill herself. Isn't that a shame? She doesn't even have joy at that point. I, I know. She, I, I know. She is a shallow bitch. Who the fuck cares if you're sad? You've always been sad. But the way I saw the change is that at the start of the game, had she been able to kill Artorias then, she would not have reacted that way. So what do you think was the... Let me pause this one second. What do you think was the moment in which she started to change? Or why do you think she started to change in general? To have that different opinion of Artorias, whatever it is. Or is it just emotion? Or is it just, just an emotional outburst with no reason behind it? Which also happens in real life. Mainly at the... Um, after you know, the point where you know, she then learns all the backstory. After that, she now knows what happened. And she has to accept that fact now. Well, at first, she was fighting against it until Fee. She was rejecting everything that dude was telling her, which was fucking obvious. Like, anybody could have seen that shit, except for the reincarnation of Celica and the baby as Fee. But when uh, Lafayette said the Enominat was telling her that... For those who don't know, Nomi Not is Lafi said, the brother. I still know it's the same being or just using memories. Whatever, that's how it appears to her. That's something completely different. But in any case, she is like, fuck what you're saying. I'm not even going to try and make fun of her at this point. She just, fuck what you're saying. I'm not going to buy any of it. And then Fee is, please, Velvet, you're smarter than this, even though she's not. And then she rejects Nomi Not. Somehow, I have no idea how fucking Omi not didn't stomp her ass into a fucking pit right there. 
And then she resolves to kill Nominat and Artorias still. So where is the point in change specifically? Because it's not there. It's not when she saw the flashback of Celica and all that stuff. From what I remember, is that she at that point gained that knowledge and she could think about it, but that mainly happened after that. Um, did you see the boat ride at the end? Where Fella talks to Eleanor? Oh, I thought you meant Rafalithi. With who talks to Eleanor? Uh, Velvet and Eleanor were on the way oh. to the final uh, dungeon. Oh my goodness, Eleanor yeah, listened to her? No, what did they say? Um, uh, let's see, I'll, I'm going to have to remember this. Um, okay, I brought up Lethe because she's like analogous to Hades and they're trying to go to the, the, the fairy ride to the boss evil layer that's that's it. She, she's the fairy pilot that's why i brought that up yeah i didn't even know it was <laughs> yeah I, I want to explain the reference so it's just not a weird ass reference but as you think of that i will keep reading because i actually am starting to get a headache now with this damn humidity she's hotter at admit, night than it is. you can also use admit if it's my uh lab of text no it's not it's straight up i'm sweating too much <laughs> it's hotter now than it was earlier in the day. Ouch. Yeah, I guess air is heavier at night. Humid ass air. And it stays low. They escape Titania. Oh, she escaped Titania and meets the, the squad. They travel together. What the fuck does Maggie Lou see in this bitch? They try. She's so interested in this whore. She's so fucking boring. Who the fuck cares what she, she thinks? What she cares? Gosh, man. Come on, Magi Lou. That's why I lost interest in her, too. You could do so much better than this. This bitch is not interesting. There are so much more in the world, more, more people in the world who have more going on in their lives who think deeper thoughts than this bitch. They travel together, and Velvet very slowly starts opening up to them, but there are not a lot of changes yet. You must be talking about 70 hours in. Then they get beaten by Artorias and Inomina, and Eleanor joins the party. Oh, you mean 50 hours in. From this point, yeah, that to that point. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm exaggerating a bit, but this shit is it took a while. More than exaggerating. <laughs> at least cut that time in half. But that's like almost that is like halfway through the game, at least. You're saying nothing has happened until that point. How about you oh, see my... Eleanor's ass slaughtering demons in her first appearance and crying and then she's reflecting on that and then thinking okay maybe i haven't been taking this seriously enough oh what's going on let me look into this abbey a little bit more see what they're about why why are they doing this to people why are they killing people who have nothing to do with anything demons in this case and in the former case exorcists like eleanor huh even if you want to make it a side quest that doesn't amount to anything you can do that but it would show a change of mind. But no, he's like, I don't care. Why do you think I care? <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, you don't gotta wait to this late to be... From this point, until they meet Artorias and Velvet slowly. Oh, until they meet Artorias again. Gosh, from this point, until they meet Artorias again, Velvet slowly, the slow opening up makes sense as that is normal. You just don't trust someone you just met with all your secrets and instead of slowly open up to them. Opens up to the party slowly gets back to who she was before the advent who but was she mentioned that is not a depth change or personality change but it's personality a character development yeah it's i mean it is but it's not another layer it that is yeah, what we call a a jump so as they change from scene to scene that's not something you can quantify as easily but in this case, though, what is she before the advent? She's just some kid who's who calls the dude her master. And we don't know, like, like I guess she's under, like, sword training with him even then. But, like, how much and why? And the, what has to do with her character? It's like, I don't know what she was before. I don't know who she was before the advent. Oh, unless you mean, like, just the evil bitch in the intro. I don't know if you meant the, the intro itself or if you meant, like, the intro intro, like the cinematic intro. That confusing mess. The next most uh, the intro, basically she becomes a lot less um, edgy if that's a 
a great discrepancy. I, I get I would I don't know if I said she's more or less like she's basically like what's the difference she's slaughtering animals doesn't care realizes they grieving their family members slaughters those guys and you could say oh they're just pigs and all that stuff okay well then she's edgy over the pigs subjective subjective she's trying to empathize with them which is even worse that's worse than a psychopath who, who just isn't trying to empathize. This is someone who is trying to empathize, and it doesn't matter to her. Kill you anyway. At least Velvet later on ain't doing that until, again, it's over Lafayette set and the illusion. But, but, like, it, it, as long as it's about Lafayette set, she's evil. She's straight up evil. Did you want to say something before I moved on? Or am I boring you with my ranting? No, I forgot. Oh, okay. The next most obvious point of character development is Rennie Nominat tries to devour her in a party at Titania. During this, Velvet reaches the depths of her despair to the point to where she wants to die. After Fee talks some sense into her, she is almost back to who she because of Loppy Set. Because, oh, Loppy Set Notorious betrayed me. I didn't even know. After Fee, dumbass, after Fee talks some sense into her, she is almost back to who she was, which is nothing, and has acknowledged that everything she did, she did for herself. Her expression changes in the game after this point to be softer, if you know what I mean. I mean, I don't, but here's my thing. After this point, she, let me see, let me see what you said for her. After, after this point, she more clearly regrets what she has done, but she also cannot change the past and so she minimizes the damage while still fulfilling her goal, which is to take revenge on Lafayette. Set. You can acknowledge you're an asshole while still trying to take revenge. At the end of the day, no matter what she feels, she's still doing the same shit. It hasn't changed her perspective to the extent that she's not changing her actual operative. She's operating in the same function. She still wants revenge over that dude. Now, if it was like just totally okay, you know, whether or not this is Lafayette set, this guy, Anominat, is messing up the world, and I owe it to the world to try and stop them from what Anominat is doing. Okay, now we got a conversation going on. But that's not what's going on here. Anominat is just like an asterisk. He's just like some sprinkles on the cake. Okay, yeah, I kill Anominat means I kill Lafayette set. Yeah, bonus. That's what that is. Oh, I bugged my mom so much for this cake. I threw a tantrum in the mall. I feel so sad now. Oh, man. Still gonna eat the cake, though. I might, I might even apologize afterwards, but I still want that cake. I'm not gonna try and share it with mom. I'm not gonna put it off. I'm not gonna you know, think about that a little bit more. She just, she wants to eat the cake. She's going down the steps to eat the cake as we speak. Do you have a counter in certain terms? Is there anything I'm saying that's false? You mean about the still getting revenge for love, is it? Yeah, about Velvet's mindset. Yeah, is, is that her mindset at that point in time? She is not getting revenge for love, but for herself, for feeling betrayed. Because of lot Yes, it's about the same shit. She wants personal revenge because those two betrayed her. She wanted personal revenge because Artorias killed Lafayette. Now she wants personal revenge on both of them because they. Did... Yeah, sure. You want to kill them both now? Technology was personal, at least. W what did you say? At first, she didn't acknowledge it was personal. At least. Are you telling me that wasn't personal? You can see she's taking, uh, because of personal reasons she's taking revenge at the bed and think she herself saw it as such. Because she keeps saying revenge for what he said. Okay, okay, so if I can go ahead and say that's true. She's admitting that she's selfish now. But has she changed? Yeah, 
in terms of character depth, um, not really. No, no. Just like me, when those fucking Reaboos kept talking shit to me and saying I was being too mean to them, I was hurting their feelings. I didn't have, I had good points, but I didn't have to talk like that. And you know, I, I was thinking, well, you know, maybe I should. <laughs> but now look at where I am. I acknowledge that I do have a foul mouth. I acknowledge that I am mean. I'm still talking the same shit I was talking back then. Actually, I was, I'm was. i talking less shit than I was talking back then, but that's only because I don't want to get, <laughs> get removed. But you see... Oh, I'm not straight up removed the video from YouTube or not that. removed from YouTube. I, I got a job. I don't need to make no corny ass ad money. Even though YouTube would do that anyway, they still probably put ads on my video anyway because they that's who they are. But it's not because of me. I had an ad on your video, so okay, good. Take that what you will. Thank you. They do put ads on your videos, even if they even if you don't check that box. But it's good to hear that they haven't done that to me yet. At least not for you. But yeah, that's how I am. I'm, I don't give a fuck what anybody says, even if I admit it myself. It doesn't mean I'm changing. Yeah, so what? I'm an asshole. Yeah, I'm an asshole. The way I wasn't an asshole, but I'm still doing that shit regardless in both cases. Same with Velvet. Still trying to kill those two. They're still trying to kill Artorias because of the other guy. It's, it's all about that. The egregious. I I what I, huh? what you say? No, please go on. I think I remember what um, she said at the boat ride to uh, Eleanor. Besides taking uh, care of Fee if she does not survive, um, mm -hmm. it was along the lines of that she does want to do good in the world. She does actually want to do that, and that she is going to do that at the final fight and what she basically does is she seals herself any no other way forever okay at the end okay yes but that's the very end that's of the still at the end yeah i i know it's at the end and it, <laughs> things could have happened earlier i will acknowledge that yes let me ask you this do you think no, no, I'm going to read the rest of this and then I'm going to I'm going to ask you a question. Now, a comparison to how much she changed would be what would you think she would have done after killing Artorias if she could do so right after getting out of Titania? I would assume she would have some former joy. Well, wait, let me read this shit. The fucking humidity. What do you. Oh, gosh. What? Oh, fuck. I don't have anything else to drink. A comparison to how much she changed would be what do you think she would have done after killing. Artorias, R. Mars ass keeps telling me to stay hydrated and he's gonna be looking at this shit like, come on, dude, you know better than this. What do you what do you think she would have done after killing Artorias if she could do so right after getting out of Titania? I would assume she would have some form of jewelry right after killing him or even tear him to pieces slash devour him in her rage. If you think of that and what she actually does after killing him, it will be a lot different, meaning she has changed and accepted certain realities she wishes weren't real. No, actually, it sums up my point when I made that video, the car ride video. These demons, these shallow ass demons got one thing to live for and then after that, they their lives are over. <laughs> That's literally what I said in the video. I thought that shit before I was like 20 hours into the game. It was easy, like, come on. Fuck, I think it's even stated. That's literally what happens. <laughs> are single-minded are more single-minded at that point yeah they're just single-minded their regret is what they live for still even though they should be dead and that's the only thing sustaining their life through that malevolence now, just because they got more control over it doesn't mean that that's not their instinct regardless and this bitch is all instinct but if to answer your question i believe that she would have killed herself or just became a zombie and just gone about living a boring ass life doing the same shit not trying to interact with anybody just subsisting because there's nothing for her to live for especially when he does all she has is maybe magilu and rokuro 
So no way would she be doing anything else. I didn't think of anything off that either, so yeah. Even if Nico just descended down from the clouds and offered her hand to just pull her up, she would slap the hand away. So if this isn't character development, I don't yeah, know. So, uh, I didn't have a proper understanding. Still don't have a proper understanding of character development, so yeah. No, I can ex That's what I can explain to you, but let me ask you this question first. Everything after everything I've said, why do you still like Velvet? That's a hard one. Um... There's only, as far as I know, there's only two ways to answer this. The first is because something to do with her development, which involves her personality, anything she believes stands for all that stuff, is going to be. If it's not changing, straight up factoids. What are her views? Just static views. How does she talk like? How does she look? How is her appearance? Her appearance, her fighting style. It's got to be one of those two things involving the change and how she grows and rounds out to be a more complete human like person. Or the shallow stuff, which can still be fine. But I want to know for you what it is. You want to know why I call it the shallow stuff while you're thinking? Shallow stuff being the appearance part. The appearance, what she, her views, all that stuff. Because you could literally take all that shit. Her views, her speech mannerisms, her, her thoughts towards other people in general. I'm not talking about like, change, like she really likes, she hates Maggie Lou a little bit less or whatever. But just her general thoughts towards people all around her, which is dismissive. Her fighting style, her backstory, all that stuff, wherein she doesn't change. Character traits such as liking a guy, liking Lafayette, set, loving her sister, etc., etc. You could literally take that shit and just put, the, and I tell this to another guy, Spidey Jackson, who likes Karama so much from Yaka Show. Talking about the plants. He, oh, he's got such good plants. He's such a great leader. He's good with the ladies. He's a strategizer. You could take that shit, all those factoids, and make that as a template for your next RPG hero. And you could name them anything else. Name this, this motherfucker for all the velvet stats and bios and shit like that. Name this bitch uh, Kusogane. Now, Kusogane is just like velvet. And guess what? You can't copyright Kusogane. Because it's not the exact same as Velvet. It's just general fucking tropes that you took from Velvet. General appearances and, and static info that you took from Velvet. None of Velvet's actual personality and how she changes across her narrative is in there. That's why it's shallow. Because she could put this shit on any other person. These crickets are just circumstance, by the way. I didn't set this up. Yeah, this... I don't hear any, so... Oh, okay. The audience might. The silence, though, I'm assuming you agree with me. But I also yeah. wanted to ask you why you like her so much. I'm trying to give that a proper think at the moment. If you don't know why you like the character, but you're named after her... But one of them is at least a single... Her will to keep going is one of them. Basically, every human in existence has a will to keep going. Some, uh, I put that, uh, and you know what else? Certain obstacles on the, what? Some people will just give up. And I can also okay. partially identify with her. Okay. If that makes sense. No, I, I so, have yeah. someone that is very much quiet and takes things in. That it doesn't talk much with other people. So doing this is already very much outside of my usual. I understand what you're saying. The uh the the second when you explain that a little bit more, saying that she as she faces obstacles, she still keeps going, sure, that's more specific. I would 
sort of add that these obstacles are <laughs> of her own doing. She's making these her own problems, but sure, people do that too. And when they do that and it's too much, a lot of times they'll give up. So, sure. But Nico doesn't have that. And what about the second part? I said Nico doesn't have that. No, but uh, she probably does. But what about my second part that I mentioned? What was the second part? I can identify with her. I am someone that mainly doesn't talk as much in general. And just takes things in, if you get what I mean. Okay, sure. So, so why isn't your favorite... Okay, then why don't you like Kumo Gary the most, or whatever his name is? It the, is. Isn't he like the swordsman or whatever, the guy who made the... Fuck, I can't think of anything right now. The, the sword that the uh, yeah, Rokuro wants to... Things, but sure. Yeah, so he's quiet, he just takes things in. Dial is the guy who keeps talking, or Dine, whatever his name is. I think it's Dial, whatever. He's the guy who keeps talking. So why not? I'm not. I'm not saying that your opinion of which really isn't even opinion. It's a fact. You like her, and I assume the most. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong about that. But what I'm asking is, why do you prefer her solidly over the others who have those same traits about which you like her so much? I think I fucked that phrase up, but you get my point. Yeah, I do. That That's all. When I ask people, I ask them that. And they get mad at me for asking them that. But I will also have to mention I'm not someone that usually thinks deeply about things. No, that's fine. That's More often than not. That's okay. That's so, uh, the response I, I... Yeah, that's the response I get, though. But then after this, when you look back at what we're talking about here, you realize that everything that you typed about with Velvet just led to what you just said, which is, I like her because I can relate to her. She's quiet and she tries to get the job done no matter how hard it is. And I don't think deep about it. Never minding that I could put all that on so many other characters. From Eleanor to Kamawana to beyond. You said that you're not thinking too deeply about it. But yet you typed in so much here trying to defend Velvet. Do you get my point? Yeah, I get your point. Okay. But I'm not going to skip it. Let me keep reading. Even if you hate a character, that doesn't mean they are badly written or have no development that you and your hatred of a character ignore. It is the writer's fault. Even if you hate a character, they can be objectively written, and they can if you have an objective metric. I didn't have one. So then why bring it up? Wait, what? In, in more precise terms, what is objectively well-written to you? If you don't have an objective metric then how can you say whether or not they can be objectively well written? Are you referencing somebody else's objective metric? I know heaven exists. Well, how do you know? Well, I, I just... I'm not saying that you're wrong, but it would convince me more, is it because I read the Bible? Is it because I had a vision? Is it because I had a dream? Is it because I hear something? Is it because I believe I can see it? I spoke to somebody else who that. But if you're just saying that there's a, an objective metric for measuring this, and all this shit I just said now could be non-biased. If you think about heaven and those references. But if you're saying that and you don't have any objective metric at all, then I don't get why you're saying that, period. I think I heard that in a video somewhere, but I have completely forgot. It's a bit vague in my memory. So you like her because of a video you saw, which I guess isn't mine. Um, it's the objective. Uh, well, I don't care the part. I think I heard something from that in a video, but it's foggy in my memory. When you think of objectively looking at a character, what comes to your mind? 
stars, you look at uh, character flaws. Okay, when you think of flaws, what comes to your mind? Because some guys, like the Joker, you can say those are flawed all over and somebody else will love them. Um, basically, from what I understand, a flaw is, is something in a character that will create conflict. Okay, and Velvet has a lot of that, but you still love her. So what's this objective talk? She's, she's thirsty for conflict. She can't even taste it. <laughs> Depends. Does blood count? Okay, yeah, you got a point. Yes. <laughs> you beat me. You beat me. But you see what I... You see what I'm saying? This is... You're speaking on her subjectively. Out of uh, ignorance. What about ignorance? I wrote that part out of ignorance that you can have uh, objective. Yeah, that. Yeah, you can... Even if you hate a character, they can be objectively well written. That is true. But it's stupid to say that without having any idea of what... Like It's like saying... You know... You, effect, right? I don't know what those I don't know those terms and all that stuff. I'll just give you an analogy. It's like saying I guess I sent you an image of it. It's it's a, a pretty interesting and oh man, it's very I, strangely effective true concept. I'm not gonna be able to decipher it, I swear to you. Hmm? I can't I not to just put you off, but I swear if you send me the Kruger effect, I will not be able to decipher it. With the Dunning Kruger effect, it's a graph. Okay. That shows the confidence and competence against each other. Is that the Kruger thing you're talking about? I don't know, but when you guys talk about effects, you talk about things that are generally true, assumed to be true, from the point of view of one person or some group of scientists or whatever. I was going to give you a specific example of what you were doing in this moment. An image. An image. Basically, it shows how confident you are about a subject and how confident you actually are about the subject. Peak of Mount Stupid. Basically, you talk with complete confidence as if you are the expert of the field, but you are actually shit at it. Oh, okay, sure. We can go with that. I guess. Sure, if you've seen this effect before. I have. I know I have. I, I, yeah. I've been to Reddit many times. <laughs> and I've seen that effect. Sure, we'll go with that. We'll go with that then. Yeah. The Kruger effect. Yeah, not I'm to say you're stupid, but peak of mind stupid. Yeah, I'll be yeah, I'm not, I mean Okay, I guess I did use the word stupid. I don't mean to say stupid. Stupid is I'm telling you this shit right now and you're still denying me just because you don't want to lose the argument. Even though you know what I'm saying is right. Stupid is, like, right now with you, that was, at that post, that was ignorance. With Velvet and shit, when she's denying the, the dumbass, uh, not dumbass, denying it. When she doesn't know anything about Lafayette set and his voluntarily choosing to be sacrificed, and she's being a dumbass because of that, that's ignorance. But she's a verifiable dumbass, stupid, when the dude is showing it in her face in the earth post point or whatever, in the earthen point, and she's still denying it. That's when you get into stupid territory. You're being willfully ignorant, willfully stupid. I will agree with that. Okay. I'm not sure if you heard of the meme, stage one denial. Stage one denial? Uh, no, what's the meme about that? Basically, um, you have certain stages of grief, I think it was the word of despair, and the first okay. stage of that is denial, and the final stage is acceptance. Yeah, you, you know, got... You stages and then you finally accept it uh, I can't remember them all yeah denial uh, acceptance uh, anger uh, begging all that stuff yeah I know what you're talking about uh, okay the stage of grief not sure yeah even if you hate a character okay so um yeah that's also ignorance yeah sure I mean but yeah but you said it was right it's just, what do you have to back just up that she is... Back that up. Okay, so yeah, yeah. Just for anybody who's still watching, though, at this point. Is... So you only sing one layer of death, do you? And if you're still watching, you're a trooper. 
You're only seeing one layer of death due to your hatred of a character is also not the writer's fault. The theme of trying to understand your layers of death and, and the concept here. On top of that, I think I said she has two. Did I? Or did I take that back? Whatever. I don't remember. It's not I'm much anymore. Sure. Really at least I've taken it back. Okay. So it's also not the writer's fault. Well, I mean it would be if it was them, but the theme of finding a reason to live is very much there in one that has affected Velvet. After she is freed from Titania, she would have done anything to kill Artorius. And more importantly, in this example of Nominat, even if it meant sacrificing everyone and everything she knew, including herself, just looking at her attacking Artorius and being upheld again and again. How is that? Okay, sure. This is the part one of the, uh, the example isn't over yet. It goes to the end of the thing, and it. I cut it off too early. God damn it. No, that's fine. Uh, the uh. I cut off was the final uh. Same color. Not sure, but the final ending of the bracket uh, at the end of the uh part. Then I'll read to the end and tell me if there's anything else. So later on, she gets a reason to live besides killing Artorius, which is B. Yep. This makes it so that when they have to deal with Hedominat, Velvet decides to sacrifice herself so that Fi and all the other Therions can live. Besides, if Hedominat died, all the Therions and Fi would die along with him. Is the predicted result, but they wouldn't know until they tried, which should be a big gamble. Do you have anything else to add before I respond to that? Uh, no. Okay, when they rescue the dogs, Nico's dogs, who are also Therian, they're trying to kill her, and she's like, I'll let you guys kill me as soon as I kill Artorius, because by then I'll have nothing left to live for. She does the exact same thing with Fee. If you're like, to Fee, okay, I, I understand how much you want to fight Fee, but this is too dangerous. I just, I won't let you. I don't care how much you want to. I, you're your own person. You don't have to follow me for this. You don't, seriously, you don't have a reason to be following me. I know you like me and everything that I stand for, for whatever reason, but I haven't imparted unto you a personal reason to want to defeat Artorius. And if he counters with something about Enominat and all of that stuff, then sure, he has solidified his reasoning. But I don't think he did. He's just following along. And she never broaches the subject. She, she's been said that she wants to make sure he survives. She says that shit like since like before Eleanor. You could say it's because of Lafayette. said. You could say it's because of whatever reason. I don't know if this is the thing I said that was that she changed on or whatever. But at the end of the day... Does it really matter? She doesn't want Fee to die. Does she sacrifice herself to protect Fee? I I don't know. That's, okay, so Fee is about to be killed, and she sacrifices herself to protect Fee without the knowledge that Artori. It's a different way. Huh? Uh, I'm uh, as I mentioned here because uh, all those connected to Inominot. What would happen if you kill Inominot? What would happen to all those connected to him? That is something they don't have an answer to. What they predict will happen is that all those connected to Inominat, meaning every single Therian, including Velvet, and Fee, because he's a part of Inominat, will, will die, die yes. as a result of killing Inominat. There is no way to confirm this before trying, so instead Velvet decides... I will sacrifice myself forever feeding off of Enominat and while he devours me to seal Enominat away so that he does not have an influence anymore um, or the ability to reinitiate the cycle of destruction of, the, of being the reset button of the world. So um, she's really trying to be Galaxia. Terrence and Fee can live on without just dying. Or was it for the best? Okay, so I get what That's you're. A whole different question. Is this is this? When did Artorius leave the picture in this scenario? Right before, because this happens after Artorius gets in bill. So Artorius dies, and now it's just a nominat, and then she sacrifices. She seals herself away with a nominat. A nominat 
is about to go berserk as well. As the one that kept him in control, Artorius is now dead and gone. So he is about to just go nuts. I mean, sh I could give you that, I guess, but uh, as we already established, she has nothing to live for anyway after Artorius dies. Fair enough. So she was going to kill herself regard. Let me think, because this requires being objective. We already know the bitch is shallow, but is that a new layer that she's going to sacrifice herself because of how much she cares for Fee? Listening to you, I could say yes, because she didn't have to do that. But then again, unless she planned on not killing Anominat, she was going to die anyway. Right? This is what she came up with on the boat ride back. Oh, on the boat ride back. On the boat ride to, um, as a theory, because well, it can't really be proven, um, when going to the final dungeon, or Port Saxon and then to the final dungeon. Or did that not answer your question? It, it, the, my answer will depend on me seeing that boat ride and any of her other dialogue that's relevant to this. But I can go ahead and say that she has another layer, sure. I don't know how much that has to do with Lafayette in particular and her interactions with him. But taking you at face value, it sounds like it has so much to do with him. So even though it's meaningless and she would have died anyway, that's... But you know what will really solidify it? If she decides to sacrifice herself because she sees no ray of, um... I don't know. She sees no ray of beating Artorius without killing Fee. Because Fee is connected to Artorias or whatever, because he tethers all the Moloks, and so, yeah, or the Enominat has put a, a, a string between Artorias and Lafayette to put Velvet in the Gambit, and bet, Gam uh, bet Velvet's like, oh, if she kills, what the fuck is his name? If she kills Lafayette, then Artorias will die. It'll be so easy. But does she have the real to kill, <sighs> fuck, Lafayette? <laughs> Gosh. Damn. That's a bit easier. Because I I don't know is Enominat actually Lofi set in control or is it just Enominat using all his memories? Anybody who's him. watching this far I don't know. It's hard to tell. When I say Enominat, I mean unless when I say Lofi set and I say brother after that, that's what I mean Lofi set. Otherwise I just say Lofi set. And I mean fee. Enominat as far as I care is basically the same personality as the brother. So, <laughs> I, to me, that's the same other, just like with Nico, and how she appears later on. It's basically the same bitch. You could say it's like a clone of the same bitch, it's an AI of the same bitch, it's magical wisps of the same bitch, it's the same bitch. Characterize it's the same bitch, so in a discussion, it's the same bitch. If she decides that she can't kill Lafayette and she, she lets Artorius run free thusly because of that, then that would be solidifying it. You're going and saying that she's going to sacrifice herself in a meaningless sacrifice where she was going to die anyway because Lafayette and the others get to survive. Okay, that's very much pushing it. Very much. Especially because she was already planning to die anyway regardless of whether or not she were going to actually die anyway, which is the case. You could have also had her saying, after I kill Artorius, I don't give a fuck, period. I'll let the Nominat do whatever all I want is to kill Artorius. And then suddenly, she's going ahead and pressing a Nominat because of reason, whatever reason you want to give her. Now she's doing the sacrifice for that. Okay, so she wasn't planning on getting into this fix at first anyway. So she's developed to the point to where she's willing to sacrifice herself for Lafayette. But she doesn't get that writing because she's not real written. So I just got to take what you're saying at face value. And even then, that is a bit, like a nothing jump. <laughs> a nothing jump. And I'm not sure whether or not it's an actual layer. But sure, I can say it's two layers. Barely. Still worse than Nico. Now me suffocating right now. Though I'm not in Europe, so let me not make light of this came up with those two things off the dome with no effort at all but they couldn't do that with her out of my way i'll devour you 
Well, I hope you're satisfied with that because that's what she amounts to until the very, and again, last two minutes of the game. So for anybody like me, who wasn't already inclined towards her development or lack thereof, let's be honest. They didn't stick it out to see that minuscule change at the end. I mean, for goodness sake, the bitch was going to let the dogs maul on her, just eat her bones and shit. Like, who cares? She was already, go she was already going to do that. She was already planning to die. Because she had nothing to live for except for Lavi said. And now she's going to die because she wants to protect the... Or she wants to save the... Whatever. She was already going to die. Fuck it. Well, but, 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 but I... No, I... Okay, yes. Yeah, but, okay, like, come on. She's in internal damnation like hell. But my point is I understand. It's, it's not what the result is. It's the source. And it's a different source. Lavi said compared to Lavi said the brother. So sure, it's another layer. If I take you at face value, it's another layer. She's got two layers. We did we did all this to get her to two layers, though. That's so sad, man. You understand why I'm disappointed, though, right? Like, this is the very end yeah, of I, the game. I will have to acknowledge that the depth, um, there aren't many layers. Still, I don't know. Okay. And I still have no idea why. No, you tell me why. Let me not. Let me not try and invalidate that. I'm just. I'm just. Uh, whatever. I'm just talking. This makes it so they develop sacrifice themselves. All the Therians die. A big gamble. Okay. And then. Yeah. So that was the second thing you said. You said. Roll down a bit and see that part two is a lot shorter. Okay. It's in a different thread. Gotta go to your other thread. It is. Okay. Let me view full discussion anyway. I'll see it. Alec Arts, the Advent, Kill Artorius. She, she has terrible voice acting too. Shepard Artorius, Shepard Artorius. You remember that scene? Japanese voice or English? Oh, I played the English voice, sorry. But the others had good English voice acting. Shepard Artorius! That's how she yelled his name out while she was seething. Let us call him our Shepard! Oh man, I'm feeling faint now, so let me do this shit before I literally fucking pass out. You do realize that Velvet at first went in a straight on fight with Artorias, but that failed because of a Nominat, so she had to come up with something else, right? Uh, she fought that dude before Artorias came and she got her ass whooped. That was the second time she fought Artorias. I'm talking about the first time when uh, they get summoned into the, the vor their point, the er vortex, whatever. And then Eleanor jumps in after them. That's when she first, and Fee keeps healing her sorry ass. <laughs> she just keeps getting knocked back down again. It's like some straight up noob trying to fight Kirito in SAO. Like, what are you doing, man? You're not gonna touch him. Who cares how many healers you got on your party? You're not gonna touch him. Magilu's not trying. Guess you should have tried to get closer to her, huh? Get her more invested in this, huh? Her first word is like, Oh, we're doomed, aren't we? You know she doesn't give a fuck. Watch her ass teleport out of there as soon as she... Or fuck, die. She doesn't give a fuck either way. <laughs> whole party's gimp because y'all weren't training the whole time. Some leader you are. How you have Eleanor training more of Artorias than with you? When you're so gung-ho about killing Artorias. Huh? Now, how do you have Eleanor training more with Artorias than with you? How do you have Rokuro training by himself, and then you, you go and ignore that? You're not even there. It's like Eleanor who asks about that shit. Maybe it's Velvet. Who knows? She's not training with him. I can't remember whether she wasn't there and it was Eleanor or Magilu or somebody. Or if she was there and she was just mocking him. Or just like, oh, huh, so that's what you're doing. I believe she was there and 
not mocking him. Okay, why wasn't she training with him? I don't know why she wasn't training. Like, doesn't she understand that that can improve them both? But no. So, she loses, as is very natural. And you said, because of Inominat. Well, no shit, she's gonna lose to Inominat. <laughs> Nominat is Inominat. But you know what? If she had gotten her whole team souped up, she might have stood a chance against Inominat, right? I mean, how did they beat Inominat later on? The re only reason I, the reason I think is because they released the four variants. And it's stated that Inominat is constantly pushing back, so the majority of his power is redirected elsewhere. Does that make sense? No, did he eat too much, or like, what happened? After Mount Killer House, uh, the four Imperials are awakened, pushing Inominat out of their pulses. And what Inominat is then trying to do while fighting the party is push the four Imperials back to regain of the earth pulses but because he's doing both at the same time he will have less energy to fight the main party does that make sense right because the four imperians are trying to do whatever the the inominat and the nominat oh, is trying to eat them and then yeah and then okay. he goes to sleep and then i go to sleep but it, my thing is okay sure so the dude's a non-factor he was gonna whip her ass anyway but artorius like you have two therians you got you got medissa you got kamarana you got, you don't want to come out of, he's a kid, come on. You got all your team, like the four on your team. You got Dial, for goodness sake. The, what's up with that? With them not participating. With her not getting them to participate. Doesn't Medissa want the world to not, she basically aligns with Velvet in the end. That's why she joined Velvet. You could say they're manipulating Kamarana, sure, but come on, you could use her. You can still use her. You know how easy it would be to manipulate that child into fighting for you? Willingly? Probably very easy. Yeah, especially considering what she's been through. But not only does Velvet not, she ignores Kamarana. You take care of it, Eleanor. You talk to her. After, like, just one time, Kamarana cries. But, hey, I don't mean to boast or anything. You said that she keeps trying to persist when the going gets tough. A kid cries one time and that's it? A strong-ass kid, too. You could use her help. Y'all was all trying to fight her. I'm not sure how easy it would be for Kamwana to return to the form she was in. Uh, she didn't, but they didn't try. Bilba didn't try. I don't know. You know, that shit, you could just, malevolence, make her mad. But give her like a focal point for that energy, a, a way to direct that energy against a specific target, in this case, Artorius. If Artorias can take the entire team on... I can't think of a non-gameplay reason as to why they added that. That is not relevant here. A non-story reason, my bad. I'm getting tired as hell here. Okay, well, I'm just... I'm, I'm just saying that she didn't try because... In the story, she didn't try. Your point of taking away the Therians, making Artorias weaker, and Velvet expecting it to work out means you remember fuck all about the story. <laughs> Okay, what did I not remember? Your point of taking away... Read that after that. Okay, we read after that. The point of taking away the Therians, making Artorias weaker, and Velvet expecting it to work out means you remember... Fuck all about the, the story. The reason they are doing that is because Inominat is too strong in helping Artorias. If Inominat becomes even stronger, the chances of success... The chance of success will be lower if they... Dude, my point in the video is that she didn't know this. She didn't know shit about... In she hadn't seen Inominat at that point. But she's still going on a Therion fetch crest, killing all these villages, and huh? They first got um, after that, and they got out of the dungeon and uh, not joined. They went to the 
beach area to meet Grimoire, Magu's friend, to help them translate the book of Inominat, which contained that information. Okay, so the book says that Inominat is strong, but what you said is that Inominat is too strong. How do you? How do they know what too strong is? To where they can't compare against Inominat. And then why not just kill Artorias before he fully summons Inominat? That's in the next sentence. Okay. The next sentence. After the first battle with Artorias, Inominat fully heals Artorias, and then they escape with an earth pole. No. That he can just snap and he instantly fully healed Artorias. No, I said... No, my entire point was, why didn't she... Why is she doing all this subterfuge for all these weeks and weeks and weeks and raiding until the narrative puts a, another dude behind Artorius that gives her a reason to try and fight somebody besides Artorius? She didn't know about any of this shit. She had a grudge against him the entire time. Wait, what did you say? She had all of her party before the Grimoire. She had Eleanor before Grimoire. She had Magilu before Grimoire. She had Aizen and, and Rokuro before Grimoire. She had Fee before Grimoire. She, by all means, if she cared, could have gone up to Artorias. They could have been training, gone up to Artorias. Oh shit, this whole time we were training and Ominat was summoned. We didn't know we Ominat was that strong. But no, they're dicking around trying to find subtle ways to remove Artorias' power. Because she's too scared, too shook to fight Artorias head on. And then when they come in, then Anominat is there. But she wasn't trying to fight him the whole time. She was jerking off. So you can't make the excuse of saying she was trying to fight him the whole time. It just didn't work out. Or she couldn't have seen that coming when she was training. No, some bullshit ass book. Has fuck all to do with Artorias himself. Trying to decipher the book. Days to do all that. Running around with these Therians, ending these villages. All these people dying, demons running rampant. What the fuck does that have to do with Artorias himself? Did there is a part of his plan to um, resurrect an omen of the and enslave the world? Then kill him before that. Kill him before oh, you. I hope he tried. No, they didn't. They did. The only time they ran into they our didn't, they, didn't, they didn't strengthen up before doing the fight. You're getting tired, but what I'm saying is the truth, so it won't matter anyway. What happened is that they saw him at like a festival or whatever. Shepard Artorias, Shepard Artorias. Velvet, yeah, Rokuro told her not told her not to fight, but she just punked out. Get the fuck off me, dude! I'm charging this bastard. I'm charging the son of a gun. I son of a gun. That's more Yu Hakusho. The first time they actually fought Artorias is when Inominat is there because they were dicking around. Do you have an excuse for why she didn't fight Artorias at that first moment or at any other time? That first moment, no, any other time. Uh, which ones were that? Any other time. You got Eleanor with you. Okay, take me to the center of the abbey. Matter of fact, Eleanor is trying to go there. And you're trying to get Eleanor not to go there. Because you got Eleanor on that mission or whatever. The entire IBC is Eleanor is a traitor now, right? Because it's a secret mission. Yes, but Eleanor still wants to take feed to the whatever. Plus, she saw that. Vel Velvet saw that. She heard the entire conversation, and so did Rokuro. Or was it uh, Aizen? So did Aizen. Aizen. Yeah, so uh, why not let Eleanor, even if, sure, you could say Eleanor is going to betray us. Okay, Rofi's going to say, fuck you, bitch. You're fighting for us anyway. If you don't want to die, fight for us. And if she kills herself, then so what? If Eleanor kills herself, then feed the dragon. She's, okay, so is that really going to, what does Velvet care Velvet wants to kill Artorias. Tell... How about this? Sure. I get what you're saying. Tell Fee to just immobilize Eleanor. You might think I'm just postulating random scenarios here, 
But my point is that the only reason that they fight this unstoppable threat and get stomped by it in Nominat is because Velvet wasn't trying to fight Artorius in the first place. Which is, sure, you gotta go, I can't fight him head on, let me do all this other stuff. But then why don't you try and work with your party at the same time? It's kind of odd. It's like, I don't, I don't want to go to the grocery store in my car because that's bad for, you know, emissions and stuff. That's bad for the environment. Let me bike instead. Okay, I'm going to bike, but I'm going to go to the next state and then bike all around and then just go like city by city closer and closer to the grocery store. How about you just take your ass to the grocery store on the fucking bike? Just get to the fucking end. I can see what you mean. Yeah, develop your goal. Next sentence. After the first battle with Artorias, Enominat fully heals Artor. Okay. They don't know anything about Enominat, and only Grimoire and Fiab deciphered the book of Enominat. Okay, so we good. But you notice the same thing. So what they are trying I mean, to do. I already said that parts to you, so. Yeah, so what they are trying to do by taking away the Therions is prevent Enominat's resurrection by preventing him from getting the malevolence the Therions sent to him via the. Earth pulses. I hate this plot. I hate this shit so much. It's so stupid. I hate when you have fucking weak ass gods on the very top who just, just make it a game. Stupid shit. The goal of this is to stop Anominat from getting more powerful and fully resurrecting. What they don't know is that Anominat doesn't need a certain amount of malevolence. I was gonna make a joke, but I decided not to. For for this but types. You know, Minot doesn't need a certain amount of malevolence for this, but types. Okay, you sound... Uh huh? It's what? It's stated in the game that the know Minot uh, doesn't need a certain amount of malevolence to resurre uh, revive or resurrect Harry of God. But he needs certain types of malevolence. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. That's what... Yeah, that's true. Velvet also never expected this to go smoothly at, at some point. They get suspicious. There is a spy in the group sending intel to the Abbey. It was Bienfu. But all you're saying, nothing you're saying shows that she's developing. I played the game. I mean, it's been a while, but I... The prime suspect obviously being Eleanor, and she lets that Bienfu shit go, like, immediately. Like, come on, man. Have some negative development. Something. The prime suspect obviously being Eleanor, but that is beside the point. Magilu was running Velvet to get mad, running Velvet to, to try and fight her or something. Like, make it interesting, bitch. Make it interesting for me. Ah, uh, nah, as long as you say you're not gonna, you're just gonna stay on a mission. Like, come on, man. Magilu's like, what, you're gonna send us out the group now? And she knew she didn't even have anything to do with Bienfu. She didn't know about Bienfu at all. She didn't even have Bienfu. Still looking for some shit. And Velvet wasn't given or nothing. At that point in the story, she had Bienfu. No, the entire time when Bienfu was being a traitor, or at least that we, that she knew she didn't have Bienfu. So when Bienfu was there, they could have made guesses at, as to whether Bienfu was with Magilu or not. But they can't say that the entire time before Bienfu was betraying him, then that Magilu was not there, whatever. At some point, <laughs> sure, okay, okay, she doesn't have any development. At some point, Velvet says that the Abbey knows their, where the Therions are, and I've obviously set traps for them, as they know they are coming for them. Okay, Bienfu. So they're playing in the enemy's hand, and they know it, just not the extent. Velvet also says that their hideout at Titania will be found by the Abbey sooner rather than later and raid it, but they don't have a better alternative. I'm trying to read all this line by nine. I know you're tired, and I also know that you're just summarizing and not stating anything, but I don't want to just skip ahead, because that'll be rude. So, the reason for there not being another place is it is because it needs to be the, the place the Abbey will not think of. Like, what does Titania Prison have to do with Velvet's development, or lack thereof, at all? What does Titania Prison have to do with this but you, you know the answer is nothing so let me move on i think this was all it, part of the explanation for or what i thought was a good explanation for uh the Tarians making artorius uh or they want to help artorius weaker but uh oh that's this is the Therians, the Malevolence. Every block is 
almost all related to the same points, if that makes sense. Yes, it makes sense. So let me see, because uh, we already addressed that. So with Velvet surviving off of it for three years straight, Velvet also never tried striking Arturis when his guard was down, and when Eleanor joins, they... He never, she never tried striking Artorias when his guard was down. I don't still remember that point. It's not that happening. If she doesn't want to strike Artorias when her, when his, if, assuming that is true, that makes her the biggest conscious. So you want to do all this subterfuge and sneak in and kill him, but you don't want to strike him when his guard is down. And when Eleanor joins, the, I'm sorry. I think Roku has someone also mentioned that card is never down, so take that for what you will. Oh, okay, so that's not her then. That's just circumstance. And when Eleanor joins, they just tried and failed a frontal assault on Artorius. Yeah, that when they rushed up, because the, the force fields are put up. As for the Abbey on being on alert, they were from the moment Oscar, that's his name, not Julius. They got a re-zero, that's Julius. Shit, Oscar, the trash can dude. I'm, I'm joking. So right after the escape, they, they were on alert from the moment Oscar reported back. So right after the escape of Titania, aka the beginning of the game, and have used, and have from that point used them to achieve their own goals. The, the Abbey, I guess. Yeah, the Abbey. No, the Abbey, yeah, the Abbey used them, used the party. But they mostly manipulated the group and getting the Therians for them, but it also doesn't really make sense. It doesn't, because the Therians are already captured, and they said it was about the, oh, it was about the types, it's not about the, the, whatever, the time and shit, so yeah, they already had the shit. They're just dicking around with her. The, the game never makes, and this dude is trying to be the guy who removes all emotion and creates a pure humanity, and he's just toying around with these kids. The game never makes Velvet out to be a tactical genius, so I don't know where you pulled that from. I, she isn't, but I pulled that from when uh, I, I said there's try, she's trying to be like a uh, smart from when she guessed all the stuff with the the black. Is that what it's called? Black wings? Who's that underground group? Blood wings. Blood blood wings. Blood blood wine. <laughs> blood riser. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. So she's talking to blood riser and is guessing everything about the priest because of those irrelevant tasks, seemingly irrelevant tasks, and she puts them all together. It leads back to him. Priest Gideon, or whatever his name is. I don't know if that's his name. That's yeah, like- it was Gideon, you got that one right. Okay, thank you. So that's nothing, but the, the, the narrative is trying to make her seem smart. And there's other instances and stuff, but yeah, she's not a tactical genius, you're right. Could they have trained? Yes, would that screw them over big? Yes, why? The reason is something that Ceres mentioned at the beginning of the game. Which is that Artorias can still be killed. What? They're not training. It would screw them over because Artorias can still be killed? The, the next sentence I say, uh, that means that at some point he cannot be. So there's a very much a time limit. An unknown time limit. This means there will be a point when you cannot kill him anymore, but nobody knows when this will happen. I mean, if you if you kill him, then you you're saying that he's going to turn into a god or whatever, and then he'll be unkillable, and so they can't waste time to train. I could use that excuse, uh, yeah. yeah, but she never brings that up. I think that when it's armatized, you know, I think Velvet doesn't know anything specific about what Sarah's is saying, and she never brings up what Sarah said. She also doesn't fully trust Ceres, even when she... On the ship, but why they wouldn't do that, I don't know. But that would have been a way to not... To still keep on time and train at the same time. Okay. The traveling with the ship would have been a good opportunity to do so, in my opinion. No, you're right. You're entirely right. Especially because they also train in skits and shit. Just Velvet doesn't join in. Besides that... Only Eleanor and Roku train in game. Okay, fine. They got time to do Magilu's menagerie, but they're running out of time before he turns into a god. They got time to do all this shit with the blood rings, the buds, the risers. 
But they're running out of time before he turns to a guy. You can't have your cake and eat it too, man. You can't say yeah, that they're running out of time. Okay. I'll have to get that one. Cool. So besides that, if they trade too long, the Nomina would have almost fully revived and mind controlled the world. Which is true, but they don't know that. Until I know the... that they don't know that. Okay, yeah. So that's looking at it from a meta... If we're talking about how much they know yet and the rest of them, but I want him to put not apply. So do you admit that it's a bad point? Yes, I will admit that. Okay, thank you. With this, the strongest exorcist would not have to move out as much as... Fuck. With this, the strongest exorcist would not have to move out as much and have all their forces centralized instead of spread out. Along with that, well, everyone... Uh -huh. All the disturbances will happen if you brainwash the entire world population. Or almost the entire world population. Even the exorcists were brainwashed. I know, but I don't think the top exorcists were brainwashed. Because Shigure and Melchior were still very much themselves at the Mount Kilaraz. The oh, field was oh, I mean... there, and they presumably came from the origin point of that, and were still fine, so the top tier exorcists seem to have some kind of immunity for it. Those are, there are only, there are only two legates, that's what Eleanor says. Technically four. Four Oscar who are... Oscar and Teresa were officially legates. Who? Oscar and Teresa. The ones that end up dying. Fuck no, those, are you talking about when they get the transformation? Them bastards ain't legates. I believe it was mentioned that there were four legates, those two being the other ones. But that would make Eleanor the only Praetor. That doesn't make any sense. But, uh... Okay, sure, sure, maybe they're Leggets. Sure, uh, maybe... Okay, no, fine. Uh, they can be Leggets. That, that's fine. Oscar I won't... gave up the... Oscar also wanted the Praetor position, but let Eleanor have it, so... That means that there are now more Praetor roles? Right, huh? Or something else. Yeah, back when he was stronger than Eleanor, but like, how does he jump from that to being a legate? And all he's done since then is fail. And he's being used as an experiment, and they know that if he, like, he's gonna be corrupted just in that experimental phase. But he's a legate? Maybe he's a legate. I don't. I don't I don't I this shit it's up. been too long, honestly. Let me search this shit up real fast. Let me try looking it up. Okay, because I'm looking it up. Yeah. But you can continue. No, fuck. I'll look it up right now. Because all the only other thing I was going to say is that at least those other two, Melchior and maybe Melchior, you can make a case for him, maybe. He was, he was indeed a Praetor or Rank Axis, so I just misremembered that. My bad. Oh, okay. Then Teresa was too. Was that the same? Yeah. Okay, so, so it's just. I'm gonna see, can I look it up as well? I have it in front of me anyway. Okay, good. You go yeah, ahead. Rank. Yeah, so, like, they're not that Maybe it was strong. the investigation part. Uh, because Eleanor was moving around with a specific role. And I think I might have confused that with Praetor. Yeah, they're manipulating Eleanor, too. They're not telling Eleanor why she needs to do anything. They're also not helping her. They're also telling everybody else to still attend. They're, like, they're not going to tell anybody to lay off of Eleanor. Would it really hurt them to say... Hey guys, Eleanor is on a mission. Just let her travel with those freaks. They don't care. What they didn't do, I would have no idea why they wouldn't do that. But they don't give a fuck about her, is all I can assume. Because they brought it up. They're like, don't tell even the other exorcists what you're doing. So they know that they could have told the other exorcists what she's doing. <laughs> they don't care about her. Yeah, but why you... That's the only thing... Yes, all else I was going to say is that Melchior, maybe you can say he has forces. Shigure certainly does not. That dude is by himself. I'm not even sure what this point is, but they don't have centralized forces like that. They have Abbey HQ. Abbey HQ? That belongs to the dude. To, uh, Artorius. Yeah, Artorius. You know what? Fine, sure, sure. It's just it's just semantics. It's just, not even semantics. It's just, it's just pluralization. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. 
Along with that, everyone in the Abbey would have armatization. That's what that do. That's what Octor, Oscar's transformation was. Making things even harder than... I'm just looking below this. It says block to count. That's funny. Make even... <laughs> Where? Somebody else. Some of Eisen as their flair or whatever. I should probably refresh it then. Yeah, that was me blocking them. Uh, Along with that, everyone in the Abbey would have armatization, making things even harder than they were before, as this would be the stable tested version. I don't get your point there. What are you what are you actually saying? Do you mind telling me or so I just move to the last paragraph? Uh that it would be um even though they were trained as well. Um, all the uh, enemies they would have to face when they would have then because I'm assuming in this scenario they would train in a separate secluded area that's a assumption I had, we had with this and that they would then launch an attack on and try and kill Artorius but now he is in a more centralized location with all the most powerful exorcists still being around so you'd have to face them after each other instead of going straight for Artoria so you'd have to fight a, a, a bunch of mob level enemies with armatization then Shigure and Melchior in his own I mean first of all those guys want to fight them anyway sorry to cut you off but uh, Rokuro wants to fight Shigure Aizen wants to fight Melchior it's not like that's going to deter them they still want to train to get to those guys, because right? They have to fight them all back to back at that point. What difference would it make? Exhaustion. I mean, maybe, or are they in a group and so they're easier to take out? It, like, it could be either or. Okay, how about this? You, you're in GTA and you kill a cop, so YouTube doesn't restrict me just for saying that. You're playing Grand Theft Auto and you kill a police. What happens? I haven't played EJ, but uh, I think your star rating goes up for how dangerous you are. Yes, your star rating goes up, and unless you do some shit to bring that back down, what happens when your star rating goes up? Who converges on you? The police then starts coming after you, right? Yeah, the police. So you kill Melchior by some god-given miracle, and then what would happen? A manhunt. They might have, like, no time to train now. Oh, they're giving off signals now. My initial point was just to say that I don't give a fuck how or when or rare or whatever. I care about the why. And the why is so she can get development. You want a character who's not flat. You don't want the party to be boring and flat. You ride around those characters. You give them reasons, and if you're really good at writing, you can write the scenarios, and then you can write how they fit and grow in those scenarios. But if you're not that good, which these guys weren't that good, then you say, okay, they need to grow. They need an excuse to grow. Okay, have them train for this. And then you can see if there's any plot holes or whatever to fill out. They're not perfect. They can make mistakes, the enemies. They can get beaten even if they're all in a group. They can be... They didn't make mistakes. Yeah, so it's not like just because they're training that suddenly they're like this unstoppable force of calculating AI. That, oh, your time is up now. We can't, we, no no moves, your checkmate it. You shouldn't have been training. No, you can make it so that now that they're training, the situation is worse. Oh, they're feeling all worse now because even though they've gotten closer together, everybody else has suffered from it because of what Inominat has done. Now it's just a chaos ruined race then, and they gotta sneak through that and use their subterfuge then. It's even harder. Okay, man, it's looking less likely now, but that's where the tension in the plot is, and that's why the game is more interesting now. It's just them against the world now. Oh, you can't sleep at this end, they'll report you. You gotta rely on each other. No, let me stop giving you fanfics, because that's better than what we get. Put the bonded bosses for the main body. I apologize. I don't know why in the game the Abbey didn't send some type of wanted poster out for the, the main party. Oh, you you making it easier for me. Mm. <laughs>
I don't know, and they running around, oh, you see a demon who looks just like this? Yeah, I did see a demon who looks just like this. No, but she had these exaggerated features too. But no one saw anything that looked anything like Velvet. Come on now. Running in that specific group. Come on now. Running around with a, a Praetor. Come on now. A fucking child. Come on now. You're failing. This, you're failing trying to put this past me. The game is failing. It's the last thing here. The last... This is the picture because in things like your tier list, I didn't see Fee in it. Or didn't hear Fee in it. So it's just found it strange. What I see, Fee is excluded in your list and examples a lot just like your tier... So, I had Fee the Malik there. I didn't have Loppy set the guy there. It was basically just a... And Fee was right above Velvet, I believe. He was number six, if I recall correctly. No, it's the, in the, not in that tier list. Uh, in the tier list you mentioned, the tier list section in your video, where you go do, or you do a power ranking of the top of your head. That one. Oh. I'm not even sure if I got to the point at that part where V was so strong. So I just thought he was just... List, you excluded him. That's something I just noticed. Okay, well then let me say... Yeah, yeah. you mention him at all in that... Well then, yeah, the real power ranking is Fee, Magilu, unlike, you know, where I am. I don't know how it is at the end. Fee, Magilu, Eleanor, Velvet, Rokuro, Aizen. If you really... Being the strongest at the end is undoubtable. He yeah. becomes an Empyrean, the fifth one, the new fifth one. Well, that's a cliche. It is, but it's a cliche, but sure. I mean that... That's because they had to fix plot holes from Zestiria. They didn't do it well enough. <laughs> I mean, you'd have to play Zestiria to see if they actually fix that. And I don't think you will. Uh-uh. And also, the reason for that is I played Zestiria and I personally didn't find any of the characters of the story all that interesting. So, I'm guessing it would be even less for you. Nah, I'm good. Let me get that Tales of Nico, then I'll play it. I straight up would. I would buy it. You could have done that by model swapping, but I'm not sure. No, but then she'll be an asshole. I don't want. I don't want her in the party sucking like Velvet. I want her to have her own story. And to be honest, if you met, uh huh. A what if scenario for that? Or just wait, writing that would be hard. Yeah, I got better things to write, like my own fiction. Here, here, here's my my lasting impression of you reading this, dude. First, I want to say thank you for staying here, because I know it's late for you. I know it's very late. It's fucking midnight for me. From late to early, it's six in the morning. <laughs> Hopefully you find your second one six in the morning, try and catch it. Go right, you yarning. That's Ice Cube. Hopefully you find your second one, though. And I don't take that for granted because it's hard to find discussion like this. And second, the fact that you admitted that so many of my points stood, even if you did say you still like Velvet, that's all that matters. I'm not trying to change anybody's subjective opinions, anybody's subjective facts. It's the fact that you like Velvet. All that matters to me is that we use logic as we work in the world. Is that we... Because this stuff does translate to real life. It really does. You said it yourself. You can relate to her from a real life perspective. And so if we can see how people operate in fiction, we have a, a sort of a safe zone from which we can bounce these ideas off as we empathize with people in real life. And to take that to interactions, take that to politics, Take that to teaching, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Take that to customer service relationships. People who don't try to understand people this way, whether it's good in them or bad, are doomed to fail with interactions in real life. And that's why most of these guys in real life, even though you said you're insular, they're even worse than that. Because they're insular and all they do is talk shit online all day or do nothing else with their lives. Regardless of what you think about Velvet or me, you formed a connection with me tonight and you hopefully learned something and I definitely admitted some points that you made too. 
you, you corrected me on quite a few. Something here. Yeah. And I, I if you wouldn't mind typing it out the, uh, the, how the layers of death work because th that does sound interesting. You really want me to go ahead and say that? Sure. I've got a file called development. I'm supposed to be making... Okay. Yeah, when my hands get better, I've got a, a video series called A Guide to Immersive Writing. And I'm going to go over the layers of development in detail. It gets into logic charts. Logic, like you could take it in college. But for now, I can just copy and paste the description, which I think is still too much for those nerds, but just because we're cool, we'll go ahead and do that. I guarantee you they won't give a fuck. I said I guarantee you they won't give a fuck. The only way I can see them caring is if you come in there before me and just start groveling. Please check this guy out. Please, he's, he's, what he's saying is true. Just ignore his, his cussing. Please, I promise he'll say some good stuff. They're still probably bitch. That would convince them, honestly. They'll still bitch. I promise you they'll still bitch. Because I, as a Sayaka fan, as someone who really likes Sayaka Maizano, I was arguing for weeks and weeks and weeks with Sayaka fans who claimed I wasn't a Sayaka fan. It's because you have Velvet as your avatar and picture profile doesn't, like, it's not going to change anything for them. The Velvet name doesn't change anything for them. They want to fap to her. You're being out of the picture is going to make it easier for them. They don't want to think about you while they fap to her. <laughs> they don't want to think about any guy. And they don't want to hear anything that's negative about Velvet. And that makes their impression of Velvet worse. The fap is lessened. Anyhow. That's a damn problem. Yeah. You can go ahead and you can go ahead and I, I welcome you to. Please go ahead. At the end of the day, I don't give a fuck because there's only like 20 dudes there. It's not like, like I just got shunned by the whole world. It's a few isolated weebs on a specific niche RPG in the, like the corner of like the cesspool of the internet, reddit.com. I don't give a fuck. I didn't go into, I didn't go into Congress and say this shit. And then everybody just descended on me. Which would actually make more sense, I guess. But I went into the fanboy forums where everybody's going to love the main character of that game because they like that game so damn much and I talk shit about her. Of course, they're not going to like what I got to say. I expect smart conversations like this. Well, I don't, but I, that's what I hope for. But no, I don't expect... A, a very nice quote for that. Hmm. Um, just think of how stupid the average person is and then realize that half of them are even more stupid than that. Well, don't say that because then they're gonna not they're gonna downvote you <laughs> yes it, it, if you think about it it's true if there's an average that means they are half below and half above to get the average yes it, it, it's just a fact whether you like it or not it is that's why for every nico you get the cast of brazoria including magilu by the way She's kind of stupid. Would you say this is a good stopping point? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I'm going to have to close my windows because it's goddamn bright outside. Sorry to mess up your clock, man. Your eternal clock, but hey, I appreciate it. It's been messed up since <laughs> about six years ago. Oh, okay. Well, then this ain't going to do much to you. Screw it up even more. This ain't gonna do much to you. I hope that when you play the game again, though, you can still enjoy it because I was enjoying it as I played it. And if you like Velvet, you'll enjoy it I'm, even more. When I play games, I'm pretty simple minded. I switch off my brain. Oh, then no issue. If you can admit that, then sure, there is no issue. I got nothing but to say. Some, uh, some of the games I mainly play now, now. one of my also most of my favorite games, um, Blossomus. I'm pretty sure you haven't heard of it. I'm gonna type it in Discord. Um, I can send the Steam link if that helps. It uh, takes heavy inspiration from Spanish Christianity, and then not <laughs> the good side, but the bad side. Oh, I'm not sure I want to see that, but okay, well, hmm? well, I'll I'll give it a look. <laughs> it has religious things in it. I, that's that's a more sensitive subject. People are not gonna like it that much. But I personally enjoy, enjoy just looking at the. Uh, the, the, the best art style. It looks beautiful and the gameplay is smooth, in my opinion. Just yeah. like Hollow Knight. 
that one. I've heard of Hollow Knight, as a matter of fact. Lore Runner, um... Lore Runner played... Sorry, Metroid Phanias. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of it. If you want to see a long playthrough of Hollow Knight, Lore Runner did a long playthrough of Hollow Knight discussing the pros and cons of the game. I'm sure you'd enjoy it. It's, mo it's like within the past couple weeks he's done that. Many parts, many hours long. Okay, how many hours? Because I might have beaten him on that. Shoot, could I search it up and see? Let me see. I should probably just stop the record already. 31 hours. He's played about 31 hours. Yeah, 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 we're good. You guys take it easy for watching this. Hey, and if you want to, um, you don't got anything to plug in, do you? Nah. Okay, well then, check it on, on the Reddit if you want to see what he's going to say about it in the Reddit. Whether you, you make up whatever you want, you can say that I just called her bitch, 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 bitch. They will respond the same way, so I don't really care. But it was fun uh, talking to you. As I already mentioned, I'm just going to put it all in a document. That's going to be a lot and of work. Put that one underneath, because this has been a five, and a half, five hour, twenty minute long conversation. A lot of work. It's not going to fit in a single Reddit post. As I learned the hard way, it has a 10,000 character limit. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So that will just be in a giant file and it'll be response to the top one. So the one, the, the giant block at the, uh, below that, I'll just put a link to a Google Drive file with all the elevated text from. Oh, I, I thought you were going to make a new thread. Um, I could. If you want people to, people to see it, you should make a new thread. To me, if you're going to do all that work, you probably want people to see it. That much more, uh, red work, so yeah. Yeah, you make a new thread and then people are going to see it. They're not going to see it at the bottom of that. You already see that I have zero upvotes and they're not going to click it. But yeah, man. I have enjoyed talking to you. So I will definitely hope to be talking to you some more in the future about whatever. Because this was entertaining. Appreciate what you showed me. I mean, I might... Um... It's not confirmed, but I might do a D&D group with uh, someone else, and then I, I I have to create a character for that. You're inviting me to D&D? &D? Um, not really, because it's a group. I don't even know who we get, but I don't even know what the DM of that. But I will have to make a character so that could cause interesting uh, conversations. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some good analogies to make. All right, I'm going to end the recording for you guys at the very least. Y'all take it easy. Hope you enjoyed this. And if you didn't, not sure why you're still watching me.